All right, how's it going? Uh, seeing as a lot of people are staying indoors, a bit fed up, don't know what to do. Got to keep yourself busy, got to keep your brain active or it turns to mush, doesn't it? So I thought I'd bring back Rockbusters. All right. Anyone who used to listen to the radio show about 20 odd years ago might remember it. Um, it's where I give a cryptic clue and, uh, and some initials to a band or an artist and you have to work out who that band or artist is from the cryptic clue. Um, so yeah, uh, something to do, isn't it? So the first one, um, the clue is... Um, there's a there's a woman wandering about in the busy part of Mallorca and she gets mugged. What has happened there? What did someone do? What did someone do to her? Right? The initials RP. She was on holiday having a lovely time in the busy part like uh not, not far from the airport and um, yeah she got mugged what did someone do to her RP right that's the first one second one um, do you know those steps that they have in fields to get over into the next field there were some of them but they were like covered in fur pubes and that. Pretty dangerous to use, quite slippy. Who's the band or artist? HS. HS, those, those steps you get in a field to get you into another field, covered in pubes and fur and that. Uh, what's going on there? HS. Easy one, that. And uh, the last one. Um, there's some lunatic in a reasonably priced supermarket who's wearing a toilet for a hat right bit of a loon walking about a supermarket very cheap supermarket um, wearing a toilet for a hat what's he doing there that's LC LC, right? Something to do. You might you might not be asked. You, you don't want to play. It doesn't matter. If you if you know any of the answers, pop them in the uh, in the comments below. See how you get on. Uh, there you go. Rockbusters back for 2020. All right. Good luck with that. There's no prizes or anything. Uh, just something to do. Right. See ya. Right, so I gave you some rockbusters. Here's the answers in case you've been, you know, struggling. So the first one was about a woman who was on holiday. She was having a lovely time in the busy part of Mallorca. She got mugged. The initials were RP. So you break it down. What's the busy part of Mallorca? It's a city, Palma. She got robbed. She was a woman. I said, what, what's happened there? They robbed her in Palmer. Robber in Palmer. Robber Palmer. Robert Palmer is the answer to that one. All right. Well done if you got it. And a few of you did. I'm just doing this so you understand how I got to the answer. Right. Second one. Uh, the steps that you use to get into a field. You know, when you go from field to field. You have those little like little steps and they were covered in fur and pubes and that. Uh, and I said, oh, what are them then? What's, what's gone on there? The initials were HS. They were covered in pubes and fur. What is that? That's hair, isn't it? It's hair. The step that you use to get into a field is a style. They were very, they're very hairy, hairy style, right? Hairy styles. Harry Styles, that's what we've got there. 
And then the last one, um, this was a tricky one, the old cheap supermarket. There's some nutter walking around using a toilet as a hat. So he used a loo as a cap, a loo cap, a, a loo, Lewis, a Lewis cap in Aldi, the supermarket. Lou, Lewis cap Aldi, Lewis cap Aldi, Lewis cap Aldi. Well done. If you got those three, it's a hard one that. Uh, but yeah, well done. Um, like I say, no prizes and that, but killed a bit of time, didn't it? Look after yourself, wash your hands. All right, see ya. I feel slightly responsible for this because have you heard of the quote, um, a little knowledge is a dangerous thing? Yeah. What I've done is, remember that programme on Channel 4, Faking It? Yeah. Where they got some, like, posh kid to be on a door and all that. What I've done, <laughs> I've, um... Imagine if that was the pitch <laughs> for the show. Dear Channel 4. <laughs> Just gonna get yeah, a posh kid on a door or something? Yeah, yeah, Yours come in, Carl. come in. Yeah. TV yeah. producer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, go on. So, what I've done, <laughs> this little book of quotes, uh, happiness quotes, I've, um, I've picked two that are real. Okay. And I've made one up. Right. <laughs> and we've got a guess. And you've got a guess. Okay then, go on. Well, I'll tell you what, Rick, why don't we, when we've heard them, we won't confer. No. We'll write down yours, yeah. A, B or C, and I'll yeah. write down mine and we'll sure. see how okay, it Okay, Carl, off you go. Right, and just because I'm, I'm looking at this book, it doesn't mean I'm actually reading. No, I know, Don't no, worry, we're, we're clever. No, no, no we, we know, we know, we can't see, yeah, yeah. like, yeah. call my bluff. Yeah, okay. go on then. Nothing is worth more than this day. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah. The way I see it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh God! My head's gonna burst. No, hang on. My head's gonna burst. No, hang, hang no, on. this might not be Carl. Oh, it might not be. How do you know I haven't tweaked them a little bit? Yeah, good okay, point. Fair good enough. point. No, good point. The way I see it, if you want the rainbow, you got to put with the rain. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. Yeah. Okay. Hang on. Come on. Cat food. <laughs> Cat food, go on. It stinks a bit. But if you don't put up with the smell, the little kitten will die. <laughs> Steve! Steve! I don't know what uh, my name is Bond James Bond, as uh, as though it was Sean my Connery. Bond. James Bond. Do that, go on. My name's Bond. No, do it as though you were in doing an impression. Sean. I'm what, so I'm trying to be Scottish? Well, yeah. Well, yeah, sort of. Perhaps a bit more specific than that. Sean Connery. <laughs> My name's Bond. <laughs> not Keep going. <laughs> My name's Bond. James Bond. <laughs> Thanks, Jimmy Stewart. It's not that. This is, this is the best fun. It's like yeah. having your very own Fisher Price toy yeah, for two exactly. hours a week. Exactly. It's great. Um, do um uh, uh Roger Moore do that? Uh, Roger Moore. <laughs> Phyllis Pierce, <laughs> Percy Sugden, I'm, I'm licensed to kill. Uh, that... Anyway, she just said. Well, no, this is a great no, game. No, no, that's yeah, no, we'll, we'll come back to this another time. Yeah. Uh, me and Steve, because we were nominated, we get a guest for the Bad uh, Awards, um, and it's uh, it doesn't say guest; it actually says um, you know uh, partner. So I'm taking um, my partner, and uh, Steve's taking Carl. Yeah. But what Carl doesn't realise is. You will have to pretend you're his partner, otherwise you yeah. won't be able we'll to get it. We'll have to hold hands when we've got the red carpet. Is this, your, is this really your partner? It's not just a guest. They have That's to... how it is. Neither we go in like that or we can't get in. You have to, you just have to be with him when you go up there. I mean, you have to, uh, d does yeah, he have to hold it? You should, we should hold hands, but I think what we should do is just to make sure that there's nothing at all that, like, it's gonna go wrong, we should just do a little kiss. Just like, and just I'll, I'll, I'll be seen sort of like cheek to cheek, just to show them that, yeah. you know, you're not, he's, he's like not Elton just getting, John and he's not just getting his mates in for a free meal, you are actually partners. No, I'm not, I'm not up for that. Why not? Well, because we know we're not actually gay. No, but, but, yeah, but so you, it's not a problem. you've come out of it looking quite good because you've got a good looking fella. <laughs> but I'm, I'm meant to look like, you know, I mean, I'm not gay, but if I was, I don't think I'd go for your thing. Oh, he's done you! Didn't he smack you for not liking a castle once? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, what's that? What's that? <laughs> Went to, uh, Carnarvon the yeah. other day. And I was bored. I was at that age when I just wanted to go in an arcade. And my dad was saying, come and see the castle, you know, there's history here. And I still don't like castles. It's one of them things that, again, just too far back to sort of even think about people living in them. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So I was just like, look, it's a wreck. You know, knock it down, flatten the thing. Sure. <laughs>
Oh, as you know, as this sort of sweet little buffoon, almost childlike mm. in his his ways. You know what I mean? Like Charlie Brown after some sort of head injury, and <laughs> and now he's. And now he's coming back like that, having a go at- not- not caring about voiceover work. It's like- cause he have written about him a couple of weeks, it's like he thinks he's better than you in no, some well, way. I do care though, you're out of order saying that, right? Cause Carl, I sorted you out with tickets for stuff. He Carl, doesn't turn up to. Carl, I received a phone call, you deleted the message offering me voiceover work, you're as bad as my agent. <laughs> I don't- I'm appalled by it. <laughs> and I thought we were friends. <laughs> ah, at least his agent, when he does it, is losing himself money as well. Yeah, he, you, he, you, he, exactly. You, you've got no comeback. You're still sweet, and to have a go at his, you, you've got a mank wine. Right. Her voice. Like a cartoon Gallagher brother on Coronation Street. I mean, and Steve's- I mean, yes, Steve does sound like a, a Wurzel, but that hey. doesn't- Do you know what I mean? No, no. A, what about Jethro? Jethro does well. Jethro gets on Des O'Connor any time he wants. Just has to phone Des up. And he's on there. Straight on And there. he's whining like a Wurzel as well. So, you know, to say that that all is right, a what, rubbish- Alright, apart from that then, what else have I done? That's wound you up. But that's- that's- that's a- that's a good starting point. Because you haven't even apologised. No, it's a shock because that's the first time I've let you down. And I didn't really let you down because I passed on the message. You didn't- well, we've been through it. You didn't okay. pass on the message. Saying I deleted a message for you is not passing on the message. Yeah. I mean, I just think what's happened is that you've got a little bit of celebrity now from the show. I, I mean, I've seen you being recognised in pubs and stuff, or people have come up and they said, are you Carl? Because they've seen Ricky. Now, it just seems to me that you are not keeping yourself grounded. You are just- no. you cannot deal with fame. You've not got the intelligence to cope no. with the celebrity, oh. and you're just becoming this kind getting. of ego-driven now monster. Getting. Now it's getting. No, it's getting. It scares me, Carl. Getting you're not the man I remember. Look, I, I put a lot of work into this yeah. on Saturday. This isn't even my proper job, right? Mm. Where were you in the week? Oh, he's got you there. What? Where were you in the week? I said, I said, let's meet up, let's, you know, come up with some new features and that. Where were you? Carl, you phoned me yeah. about an hour before you wanted to meet. That is not what I would call. I mean, that, that is arrogance right work. there. That's the way I work. That's arrogance right there. That's ego right there. He couldn't, he couldn't go, uh, it, I, uh, when I came in, he said, where's Steve? I said, Steve can't make it. I had to tell him why. Steve was staying in to tidy up because his landlady was coming. This, this he couldn't get over. He could not get over that you couldn't make it because you had to stay in with your landlady. Is is he talked about it for about the hour when we were working? What are you talking? I, I last week I had a bad throat. You yeah, wouldn't what, tolerate what did you that. Do you last week when you, had about, when you had a bad throat, where, where were you? <laughs> Why couldn't we do any work then? Because you're at home with your mum and your dad. <laughs> you, you were on holiday, weren't you? <laughs> Why didn't you get your mum and your dad to clean the flat? Oh, he's done it again! He's hey. done you again, mate! Play a record! How has he done me? What the hell? They live in Bristol! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, the joke's on you! He couldn't get him to clean the flat! Nah! <laughs> I don't know who's laughing at who, then. Alright, listen. Can right. we just go back to laughing at Carl? Okay! Because I know right. where we stand there. <laughs> okay, alright. Okay. Do you want to, uh, That's the natural order of things. <laughs> I know, yeah. The world's got to me. <laughs> he's, he's stepped out of the pecking yeah. order. Right, well someone who I don't let down, right, are the listeners of this show. <laughs> <laughs> do you want to, uh, read out the prizes for uh, Rockbusters? We'll get, okay. we'll get that one in. Oh, we're are we not doing, doing Rockbusters again, are we? Yeah. Well, it was a shambles last week. We- we cancelled it two weeks ago. What? Oh, it just- I mean, there, there you are right there, Rick. I mean, both you and I, and let's be honest, we're the guys with, the, with our names on the poster. I know, it's yeah. It's supposed to be your show. And, and yet, our faces. Exactly, and yet- <laughs> We have to have- we have to be on tube stations with people laughing at yeah. us. Yeah, well, they're not laughing at me, really. They're, they're well, good I don't know. Just... What do you think people think of the poster, Carl? Seriously? Uh, No, I don't want to know his opinion. It's just gonna be insulting. <laughs> My point just is this, he was Rick. Looking at you. My point is this, Rick. We used to be able to decide what the content of this show was. I know. Now it's him. It's just him. He wants to do rockbusters. He gets to do it. I know. And it's it's awful, but like, like, Tourette's Trent Derby. Not only is that offensive, it doesn't work as a clue. Saying that, have you come up with anything for this week? No, no. It's something. When I was looking on the web, yeah. found something out. Go on. Um, it's a story about mm. a woman. Who had a baby? Who had a baby? <laughs> <laughs> what are you talking about? <laughs> ah, what? A, a, a woman yeah. who had a baby who was having a baby. <laughs> <laughs> it was no, it was no clearer right. when you repeated it. No, go. I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do for the common good. Right? Pursue this line of inquiry. Right? 
because I don't know where it's going, or play a record. I- I'm actually torn. I don't know what to do. No, I remember seeing it and thinking I've got to tell Ricky about that. It's brilliant. What- uh, should we- what should we do? Should we- should we go with it? It's a, I mean, it's like- it's entering into the abyss. It's opening Pandora's box. It's- <laughs> it's peeking by- it's going down to the cellar. I've got a couple of questions, though. Go on, then. Well, come down there with me. <laughs> okay, come down right, in the cellar with me. Okay, right. Carl. What, 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 first of all, it was on the way, what, what, what do you mean? The, the baby was what? Had another, but was it, she didn't give birth, they didn't, the doctor didn't find one of those set of Chinese dolls up here. It's Rus Russian dolls, whatever that's, they're that's, called. That's what I pictured it like, those, those dolls where you take the head off and there's another one in there that all look the same, but no, the story was, <laughs> there's a woman who's- No, don't just say it again, that's a headline. That's not a story. There was a woman who had a baby, who had a baby. <laughs> that's <laughs> not a story. That, um, imagine handing that in as a, th as a thesis to loads of the BMA. Hey, are that? There you go, uh, and yeah. read that. That's a, said, that's a children's rhyme. Yeah. There was a woman who had a baby who had a baby. What do you mean? So the baby, she had a baby, yeah. right? Yeah. And, uh, that bit's fine. We're yeah, okay with that. That's normal. That's normal. A, a totally woman had a child. Yeah, totally normal. She gave birth. Fine. Yeah. Next. Well, I, I, I don't know that much more. Of course you do. from the fact that <laughs> the baby's like roaming about <laughs> and then uh, twelve, like twelve months later, she's like, oh. Interesting. So the gestation period of the, that baby was actually three months more than an adult. Yeah. Excellent. It's weird though, isn't it? So was the headline, my baby's twelve months pregnant? <laughs> what are you talking about? Twelve months later it had a, what are you talking about? Forget it. it no, you haven't, you haven't even finished the story. That we, you said, and twelve months later, you didn't even finish the sentence. So what do you mean? No, I didn't. I didn't read any more into it because I just saw you that didn't and I thought, read what? That's, that's weird. And then I just was thinking, oh, like imagine the kid at school at parents' evening. <laughs> <laughs> Go on. And it's like, well, your kid's <laughs> pretty good. Now, now let's have a look at your work, sort of thing. <laughs> Don't you think that'd be weird? <laughs> but what? Did the child have a baby? Yeah. Of course it didn't! Play record! We shouldn't have gone down in the cellar. <laughs> we should have I just can't. left the cellar door closed. Oh, I but you do believe online. a baby had a baby? Yeah. On you go, on you go. Are you still saying that didn't happen? Yes. Right, well I'll find the thing again, I'll print it off and well, then you'll Well, all read I'm it. saying is there's more information that we need. Yeah. yeah, but but it always annoys me that when I do get the information, you'll go, yeah, but it's named Sally. You didn't say that. I make out no, uh, as if no, 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 no don't, do, ma don't do. make it look like w w we're over inquisitive or over cynical. You come out with the the most abominable things man has ever uttered, <laughs> and you expect <laughs> us to accept them. Usually headlines, usually uh, illogical, not just probably wrong. So fleas are born pregnant. <laughs> Are they? Interesting. Yeah. Right. Okay. See? On we go. So See, that's true and you're not impressed because it doesn't involve a little werewolf child or half man, half shark. It's, you, you just not, it's not good enough for you. No, but what I, what, I, if I read the first line of something and it's not, not that interesting to go next, right, and I move <laughs> on. Now, when I saw a woman had a baby and it had a baby, but I you go, still Ooh. didn't read on. No, but I, all right, I didn't read on, but it got me thinking. Like I said, it's you, you wonder about the parents' evening. I was thinking about, <laughs> you know, is it a good thing? <laughs> because you're going to spend more time with the kid. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of mums who have to go out of work and that. She's going to be a great man. Grew up with her, literally. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? <laughs> so She's going to be wonder, a great mum. I, I just wonder if I know it sounds weird, but if was it's it was it was it the 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 you know the baby that woman had was that a girl or a boy? Well, it would have been a girl, wouldn't it? Of course it would. It'd be mental, wouldn't it, if it wasn't? Just before all this lockdown kicked off, um, yeah, sorry, I think it was like the tenth of March or eleventh of March or something, and then uh, here we are, five and a half weeks on. I haven't really left the house since, but it was good. Um, he's in his seventies now, and yet he still uh, he still sounds as good as he did back then. And as smart, he's always he's always been one of them blokes who's been able to um, <clears throat> wear a suit. You know what I mean? And he don't look awkward in it. Oh, which is something I've never been able to do. I just can't. I, I don't know what it is. I don't know what happens to me. But I, do you know, like when you balance something on a cat, and it doesn't like it. It no, you know, you just put like a little bit of a shoelace on its head or something. It holds itself odd and it do doesn't quite understand what's going on. I'm like that when I wear a suit. 
I just feel I just I just hold myself oddly. But uh, and it's funny actually because Suzanne's been talking to an old mate of hers who she went to um, uni with. That's what's that's what that's, that's what's been going on on it really during this lockdown. People coming out of the woodwork and getting in touch with you and that. I suppose it's a good thing, but I suppose people have more time on their hands to catch up with people when normally they're busy and all that. But the last time Suzanne saw her, I think, was at a wedding, like 17 years ago. And a memory of me at that wedding is um, I was the only bloke wearing combat pants to a wedding. So I've, I've, I've never been able to wear a suit. I'd rather look odd and stand out wearing something comfortable than trying to fit in and not being comfortable. It's pointless. Um, So I thought I'd just uh, play a couple of songs. Also give you a couple of rock busters. Because it's something to uh, kill a bit of time. I did did some a couple of weeks ago. You like them. So so here we go. If you remember rock busters, I'll give you some um, initials and a cryptic clue. You let me know who the artist is from the clue that I give you. You don't win anything. It's just it's just a bit of fun. So the first one, the initials are A G. That's A G. And the clue is how would you describe Kermit? Right? I mean you might describe Kermit in loads of different ways, but what but what's one of the ways you might describe Kermit to someone? You know, out of the Muppet Show. So the initials A G there, right? Uh, the second one, uh, the initial is M, and uh, of the artist of the band. And the clue is, I might phone you, I might not. All right, I might phone you, I might not. All right. And then the last one, initials D L, D L. And the cryptic clue is the the Australian asked the impressionist to do one of those people who's um you know who's got that disease whose arms and legs fall off. Right? Who is it? The band of the artist, the initials, DL, and the cryptic clue is uh the Australian asked the impressionist to do one of those people with the disease whose arms and legs fall off. Right, there's a bit of working out for you to do there. Kill a bit of time, and um, and I thought I'd play this. Um, it's been stuck in my head. I've been whistling it for a few days, driving uh, Suzanne up the wall. It's Judy Teen by Steve Harley. Good one. Um, don't know why they've got to be from Mars. I can't imagine spiders from Mars being any more weirder than um, spiders from Earth, to be honest. They're just odd, aren't they? How do you make them weirder? Um, I've been I've been going to YouTube a lot during the um, the lockdown, and there's two things I go to if I'm not actually looking for anything, you know, in particular. Um, there's big waves. Right, you know, you you, you get like uh, fishermen or those blokes who are shifting freight out in the North Sea, and they do videos of the waves that are outside during bad weather, and it's mental. It's like fifty foot waves, and they're just um, it just doesn't bother them at all. You can hear them chatting to each other, arguing over a game of cards. Meanwhile, outside, there's waves like you know, the end of that film, Deep Impact, and it just doesn't bother them. Yet, it, it sort of, it freaks me, it freaks me well out to know that waves are that big and are bashing about on the same planet that I'm sat on. So there's that um, I like looking at, and spiders, and they sort of terrify me, but at the same time, I like looking at them. And I, I think, the thing that freaks me out is the legs because sometimes a spider can be quite big, you know, the body. But I can I can pick things up like beetles and stuff like that that have the same size body. 
but it's them legs. Just big, it's the big legs that, for, which is weird because, you know, one of the things that can make a woman sort of attractive is long legs. And it doesn't, don't freak you out. Um, and you maybe it would if a woman had eight legs. I don't know. Maybe it, maybe it wouldn't be. I don't know. But anyway, yeah, just just Google um, the Goliath spider, will you? Look at the size of that. There's one on the internet. Just uh, I think it's the first image that comes up. It's sat in a frisbee, and its feet are hanging over the edge. It's got kneecaps. Uh, have a look at it. I mean, obviously, don't if you if you're one of them people who uh, doesn't like spiders and you can't even look at them, then don't. But it is mental. Um, right, the other day I did some rock busters. I thought I'd just um, give you the answers. The first one, the initials were A G. The clue was how would you? Uh, what did I say? I said I said uh, what's one of the ways you describe Kermit? Right? How does Kermit look? Is is green? Isn't he? He's all green. Kermit's all green, all green, all green, all green is the answer. Um, like I say, it's a little bit cryptic. You have to, you have to think about it. Um, so well done if you got that one. Second one, the initial was M. The clue was, I might phone you, I might not. So what's going on there? What's another word for for calling someone? Bell you, right? You might bell someone. I might bell you later. So, if you might phone them, you might not. You may. You may bell them. Mabel. Maybell. Mabel. That's Mabel. Um, who's out at the minute. It's Nina Cherry's kid, that, isn't it? That's when you know you're getting old, isn't it? When pop stars you listen to as a kid have had kids and they're, they're now pop stars. Madness. So, yeah, Mabel for the second one. And then the last one was DL. Uh, the clue was the Australian asked the impressionist to do one of those people whose um, arms and legs fall off. So what are they called? They're called uh, lepers, aren't they? Lepers. If you're Australian, you'd probably say lipper. So the impressionist has asked the person to do uh, do one of them people, so they're asking them to, to do a lipper. Do a leper, do a leper. A few of you got that, no problems. Uh, so well done. Something to do, on it? And um, might do some more, especially if this lockdown carries on. So uh, well done. Time for another tune. Thought I'd play this. It's quite apt for what's going on. Bit of John Lennon, a song called Isolation. My mobile phone. I was chatting away to someone and. Uh... What can only be described as a prostitute? Go on. I'm still on the street corner. Was she a woman that gives you sex for money? Yes. That is a prostitute. Yes, that's what I thought. Go on. And as I was walking by, she said, Do you want to buy sex? Do you want to buy sex? No. You sure my... it wasn't a market trader giving six plums away? No, it was definitely. Sex for a quid? No, it was definitely Go a on. prostitute. Yeah. And what annoyed me about it, what I wanted to pick her up on something, was the fact that I was on my mobile phone. <laughs> It's like, so can you imagine, who, who would I, I, what, am I gonna hang up? Sorry mum, can I call you back? I've you know, you know you say you want me to meet more women. And you know you sent me that 30 quid <laughs> exactly. for my birthday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Sorry Mr Johnson, I'm really excited about the job, can I call you back? I'm just gonna negotiate with a whore. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just, it was like it was just sort of, you could tell that she was clearly probably desperate for crack or a latest yeah. fix of smack. So she was literally she, the normal etiquette of prostitution. You know that they hang around, they show some thigh. <laughs> I've seen this in they films. Will, yeah, yeah, they exactly. Will, yeah, yeah, yeah. Take you out for a meal. Yeah, that I sort know. of thing. That had sort of gone it. out of the window, and yeah, she was just sure. there, desperate, running around. Did she the go out of the window? Like because that's <laughs> another thing they sometimes do, specialist exactly. ones. But I was yeah. shocked because I've never been uh, propositioned before like that. Really? In London, I was weird, isn't it? Carl, thoughts? I. I think you'd be sort of approached a lot because they tend to <laughs> sort of go for people who look like they haven't got much chance. Sure. And I'm not being mean. No, you know no, no, I mean, no, no, no. no, no. Mean, time sorry, to... I, I'll let you go back to it. In what way aren't you being mean? By saying that no, Steve, Steve, Steve on. knows is a little bit odd looking. <laughs> I don't think. Well, <laughs> no, he does. <laughs> Do you know? Do you know? Yeah, before... no, no, but it's not whether what he thinks of his looks. It's what he thinks of you. Talking about his looks 
on. No, but it's Go it's on. like how you were talking before about, you know, your eyes are bad. It's nature's little way of saying, look, nothing to see here, right? <laughs> I don't know what you mean. What but when you, you look mean? in the mirror and that, they've gone, look, he hasn't got the looks, let's make his eyes bad. Right? Yeah. Nothing to see here. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. See, we're balancing I... it out. Right? Yeah. And it's funny, right? Now we're on the topic. Sorry, sorry, right, Johnny on... Depp. Now hey, listen, <laughs> but- <laughs> I'm gonna- my- my chest is gonna burst at this but moment. All, whenever we go into this conversation, I always think to myself, Carl, do you know what you look like? <laughs> I- I'm gonna buy- <laughs> yes. you know, seriously, can I be honest with you? I you look like- it. you know if you've got like a balloon, a hot air balloon, <laughs> right, just a little balloon like a party balloon, right. if you drew a little face on it, right, <laughs> and inflated it about halfway, <laughs> that's what you look like. <laughs> right, I so, No, play a record, no, I don't listen, wanna get into this, listen, it's too now, intense. Now, now you've- you've got onto this, let's just nip it in the bud now. I'll tell you something that I wasn't gonna tell you because I think- I don't wanna it. hear it, I don't wanna well, hear it. Right, it was on the tube. Right. Well, I was. Someone told me they were on the tube, mm. right? And um, it uh, the, the tube pulled into a station, right? <laughs> and one of the women saw the poster that's yeah. out at the moment with you and Rick on it, right? Yeah. So this this woman apparently goes, uh, "Oh, look, there's uh, it's Ricky. Ricky's on the radio, right?" And uh, the other woman goes, "Oh yeah, d d don't you listen to it?" So she goes, "Oh, I didn't. I didn't know he was on the radio." And she goes, "Oh." <laughs> Look, I'm sorry, look I'm sorry, at because he didn't look found this bad one. She said, Oh, look at that look at that person he's with. So she goes, Yeah, 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 yeah. She said, That's Steve. She said, I'm kind of I was a sort of aware that he looked odd because Carl mentions it on the radio. Yeah. So so it wasn't as much of a blow to me, but I can see how it was a bit of a shock to you. Yeah. So uh, that's 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 weird, isn't it? Yeah. And that isn't me sort of telling this woman to say anything, that was all happened without anybody else sort of bringing it on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So... Was it... Sorry, you seem to be relishing this, was it because of the little balloon story that made you... I'll, I'll honestly say, I want to told you, but if you're gonna start, you know, having a pop... Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I'm, yeah. I can't just sit here and <laughs> take sure. it and that. No, no. I mean... Yeah. Oh, mates. Yeah, it's just, uh... uh yeah. I mean, I was mistaken for Johnny yeah. Vegas. Steve's got a story about that, if you wanna gather go at me. Well, you'd know, someone just thought you were a fat with a beard, which is true. Well, don't have a go at me, cause he said you'd look- Well, you started it. No, I didn't. Yeah, no, did. I didn't. You were milking it. You were I egging was, him I on. I was laughing. You were egging him on. <laughs> yeah, I sort of was. Yeah. But let's not, you know. Ooh, it's a good job you've got lots of good mates like Jonathan Ross, you can go and hang out with. <laughs> don't need other friends, people who've helped you in your career. Still arguing. This time about having help from me and my dad. What do you think, Carl? No, I'm not. We're, I don't want this to turn into some sort of wacky type of thing where we're pretending we're arguing. Yeah. Well, we're not pretending. We're not we pretending. Are you arguing. are arguing. Yeah, I know. I know what people will think we're messing about. No, right? we don't, wouldn't have thought so. We just need to. We can talk about it later. Sort it out. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's just that Carl's a little bit stressed. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not stressed, but and he doesn't really understand that you know. So, you know, me and Steve have got lots of different jobs in the week, he's just got one job. Yeah, but and we sort of rely on people getting messages to us, you know, as soon as they get them, you know, and not sort of deleting them from their phone selfishly. Yeah. Just things like that, you know, people being on the ball. Not just thinking about themselves all the time, not just thinking about number one. What do you think, Carl? Whatever. Do you mm. know what I mean? Whatever. Don't get all maudlin again. Just have a little discussion. Yeah, this is annoying. Yeah? Guess what? Think of this, you little- Slaphead twat. Um, apparently, <laughs> that's so in his ass. That's so in his ass. Right, apparently, women can get bald treatment on the National Health Service, but men can't. What do you think of that? Do you think that's fair? Is that a fact? It's a fact. We what? should point out that Carl is, uh, would you say balding? Yeah. Would that be fair? Well, either that or a wide parting. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I know what Steve's like. He is tight. Right? He's, well. he's, he, no, he is. And you know that, don't you, Steve? Financially, I mean, I'm not, you mean? Well, no, I mean, just the way you are, you're very sure. sort of, you know, you, you're not- I'm careful. You're not wasteful with your money. I'm careful. <laughs> no, I'm not wasteful. Absolutely right. No, no, but to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. Not at all to the extreme. <laughs> no, 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 no. Look come after on, the pennies, the pains will take care of themselves. Alright? Simple to remember, good advice. Yeah, all right? but- 
The thing is, right, um, I know that I take the mickey out of you for, like, you know, the way you look and stuff. Sure. Right? Well, I'm right back at you. But the thing is, you can't help that. Absolutely. But I'll tell you something that women don't like. Sure. And it's fellas who are tight with the money. Sure. I'm not- I'm not frugal with money with ladies. I'm frugal with money with you. <laughs> well, I've I- have got no reason to splash money out on you. I've never seen you splash money out. Well, you've never been out with me. Have you ever- have, Steve, have you ever splashed out on a lady? Um, no, but I hope to one day. <laughs> the right lady. <laughs> Play a record. There, Manxie, there. Carl's like really getting down. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, oh, come on. Got come any on. Vera's? Oh, come on, Mel. Ah. Did it take you back, did it? Yeah. How old are you? 29. 29. So you were, oh, you were just going into, uh, out of your teens. I'm a Virgo. No. What? No. Yeah. That, that, no. You don't understand. It's just, uh, I'm Rick, a Virgo. I thought we discussed about involving Carl. <laughs> yeah, in sorry, yeah. yeah. The management have told us we're just not allowed to do it. <laughs> We've had emails from yeah. people. Please don't it's speak to Carl. It's cruel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. On the cusp. Can I just make an appeal? I don't want to- On the cusp, the Virgo, he said. <laughs> Still going through with it. Doesn't know what's going on, does he? <laughs> just wave bright objects at him. Yeah. yeah. Do you know why people tinkle the- tink- the glasses before they have a drink? Why they tink? The verb to tink. I do know that, Carl. Is it about poison? It is. Here we are. What, would it make a different noise? Nope. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Go on, explain Why? it. Why? You explain it, Steve. No, 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 don't Steve, you explain it, Carl. <laughs> Go on, oh, I've started so I'll finish. Go on, Carl, explain why they tink the glasses. Ages ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, only people with money had drinking or something. <laughs> That's not one of my film reviews! <laughs> Years ago, welcome to History Now. Now, ages ago, only people with money had drinking or something. Keep going, Carl. Keep like, going. Like spirit and stuff, so yeah. they'd, um, it's, it's like businessmen, business, businessmen. It's <laughs> easy for you to say. <laughs> this is getting to be cruel, isn't it? This is amazing. Yeah, go on. <laughs> Why go did on. you open your mouth, Carl? <laughs> what were you hoping was the best that could happen? Because you were trying to make me look stupid before with the planet, so I'm- Where is you now? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, go on, no, come on. Biz, bib, bib, bibis men. <laughs> bibis men, no, business men with money. I've got to drink and ching. Okay, so then, with so all they, the drinks. So they'd, so they'd nip round to have a chat about the, whatever they're earning money with. <laughs> and they'd say, right, do you want a drink then? And yeah. they'd go, oh yeah, that'd be alright. Yeah. So, yeah. rather than like, um, just pouring it out of a bottle into a glass and saying, there you go, it, it could be going, hang on a minute. It could be poisoning me here and trying to like, nip me business idea. Yeah. yeah. So what they'd do, it it sort of pour a bit of his drink into the other person's glass and you get that tink noise and that's like like cheers you know no no, no. Hey. Here's, um, here's one for you go on like insect facts and stuff go on um if mm. a man was a flea he could jump over st paul's cathedral no what? wrong it's gone up now it's <laughs> <laughs> the big wheel the big wheel <laughs> it's the millennium gone up wheel now it's gone up now. Play a record. You're the best. <laughs> on, it was on. It was on Wednesday night. Yeah. I was watching. I, you see, the problem is I didn't get the full story, so you could pick holes out of it. Sure, 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 sure. And, and like your usual investigations into the supernatural, <laughs> which yeah. are. Thorough. It was called. Can I just say what the program was called? Mr. Exorcist. <laughs> oh, brilliant. <laughs> so sounds bit, like an academic work to me. The bit that I caught, I, I just flicked it over, uh, uh, sort of seeing what's on the telly, and I thought, oh, Exorcist, I've seen it, but there's nothing else, and I watch it, and then I realised it wasn't the same thing. Yeah. Thought, oh, I'll have a bit of this. And um, there was an old woman, and and a daughter, and as far as I, I was aware, the, the bit I picked up on, they were saying, oh, you know, it's it's dreadful, and, and unless you've been through it, you know, you've had ghosts in your house and that. You really don't know what it's like. Yeah, sure. And the main thing that seemed to be getting them down was the fact that the budgie was getting stressed. The budgie was getting stressed? Because animals can sense the, the other side, can't oh, okay. they? Can they? Yeah. Okay. So, um... And how was that manifesting itself? You don't know. What was the budgie doing? I think it, it, it just wasn't happy. Right. <laughs> <laughs> did it? Did it? Did it explain that to people, or no, how did know, it express I mean, that? Budgies are known for being chirpy, aren't they? I see. And it wasn't chirpy. It, it, well, it, you know, it normally swings on its little perch and that. And it's just depressed because it was right. possessed. It was just <laughs> sat around in its uh, in its pajamas. So, sorry. <laughs> no, no, yeah. no. Come on, so, Steve. Yeah, Come on, Steve. You're making this a mockery. So <laughs> the budgie was depressed because he could sense the ghost. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. then, so yeah. this yeah. Um, yeah. this guy, yeah. this Mister uh, Exorcist, came yeah. round. Was that his name? Yeah. Okay. Was he? A, was he a, a priest or something? Yeah, he might have been. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I did he, did he have a, did he have a, like a black coat with a little white collar? Yeah. That's that's usually the. He had his coat on, so you couldn't tell. I'm sure. Okay. But so he, he came round and he sort of did his thing, 
Yeah. And um, and then and was, the he try- shot- was he trying? Was he trying to exercise the budgie? Um, no, no, the, the ghost. House. Right, the so house, it wasn't yeah. that the budgie had a demon or anything. No, okay. no so, this wasn't a possession, was it? This was a straightforward, it wasn't a poltergeist or anything, it was a, just a, well, just a haunted house. Yeah, yeah but sure. that, that's the thing he was saying, he was saying you can have, like, your ghouls and that, that aren't that bad, that aren't going to cause you any yeah. problems. Yeah, yeah, But obviously yeah, yeah. The, the budgie, they've, they've got weak hearts and that, haven't they? <laughs> and, <laughs> sure, and so, so he, go on, so it's a so, so anyway, basically, he sorted it out, did whatever he did. And uh, the next shot you see is like the budgie making a noise and swinging it's right over the moon again. And the the old woman was like happy because she was she couldn't stressed. believe it. Yeah. And that does the it. priest didn't come in and go, well, you should feed that bird, <laughs> give it a bit of millet. It, it was happy. It goes right. No, see you later. No, it was a. So it's budge, I mean, budgies are. Um, my mum's got a budgie, and the the you know. The, they're fairly happy all the time, aren't they? So it's got to be something fairly yeah. odd. Right. You never see a budgie sitting down going, I feel like topping myself, to be honest. Yeah. yeah. Do you know what I mean, though? No. Do you know no. you can have, like, moody, a uh, moody dog? You can you can see a dog when it's unhappy if it's walking yeah. down the street. You can have a moody canary, can't you? And what they do is they often tell the police what you've been doing. They're known for that. Mm. Yeah. So, so um, basically... So that, for you, is proof that the supernatural exists. A bird in a cage got a little bit annoyed. <laughs> Wasn't chirping as much as it normally did. Who knows why? There could have been a little draft up its, you know, and uh, oh, like <laughs> exactly. That's anyway, a medical term. Anyway, a man just... came in and did whatever he did. Yeah. Yeah. Still Mr. Exorcist, though, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> was, it, this wasn't any bloke off the street. This was Mr. Exorcist. Yeah, yeah. So and for you, that's the proof that there is. Um... Just because, like, if it was a, a person, you go, oh, they, they're playing up for the camera. Yeah, you know, a they'd... budgie could possibly act like that, <laughs> Steve. <laughs> yeah, I see what you mean. You say you're saying a budgie would not be trying to. It wouldn't be trying to become famous. No, or trying to not get on like the telly. not like Lassie. No, sure. It was sure. basically a show off. Yeah, so, or champion the Wonder Horse. So yeah. What do you think? Um. I think... I've changed, well, I've changed my tune, Rick, I don't uh, know about you. I have, and I think we should play a record. I'd love to get Mr. Exorcist in. We've, we've proved the supernatural, we were wrong about that. Well, I just, just one other question, was there anything else in this woman's house that led her to believe that there were ghosts, or was it just the fact that, you know, Tweety, or whatever his name was, wasn't chirping? You see, this is the problem, I was watching, um, UK Style, I was watching something on that. What were you watching on that? It was, do you know, it's not changing rooms, it's like that, but cheaper. You, you, uh, quite seriously, right, you might be the most interesting man in the world. I, I'm fascinated by it. I'd like to follow you, I'd like to have a hidden camera on you, I'd, I can ask you any question. You know, it's, I'd like to have you in a cupboard in my flat. So I'm going, I just think about it, I, go, I wonder what Carl thinks of that. And I'd just throw some at you, and you'd, you know what I mean? you because that's what my dad did. <laughs> <laughs> just kept me in the cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean, though? Yeah. I, just, like, I wonder what Carl would. You're think never about stuck this. for a conversation point if Carl's around. That's no, what's genius about. He's it. always got an opinion. He's got an opinion about everything. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> I love the fact he was watching UK style without a shadow of irony. Yeah. Nothing. No, he's that's, that's, like, like, cool. no, that's what I like about him. Exactly. I, that's what's I wouldn't brilliant. like it if he was trying to be no, 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 he's not. kitsch yeah. and stuff. Like that. I, I like it because he's down the line, straightforward, no nonsense. Yeah. This is what I like. You know what I mean? He's going to be, he's going to be sort of like Jeffrey Boycott, Dickie Bird, when he's yeah. about like sixty or seventy. He's going to get on a bus and go to the um, the driver somewhere. You need an haircut. You look like a scruffy <laughs> get. Do you know what I mean? He's yeah. going to be a great old bloke that you. Genius. Need. He, do- he doesn't get chinned in the pub. Yeah. Right. People protect him. You know, because he's like seventy or something. But it, it's great. You're looking forward. You're actually in that nod. I not that, that nod went. I can't wait to be seventy. Yeah, wasn't it? Mm. I, yeah. Can I can I can I uh, make a suggestion that we just get people? They can email in just questions or comments they'd like to hear from from uh, Carl. Maybe they just want to know his opinion on the Afghanistan itu- situation. Yeah, like or you know, like last night's Coronation Street, whatever. Yeah, like they do. You know, um, uh, in the NME or, or imagine that coming up to the election, they go Billy says Labour. Oh. Yeah, Ooh, Carl. I think the Sun has White Van Man. Each oh, day they interview a guy who drives a white van, sees his opinions on various topics. Carl is very much our white man van. White yeah. man van. Yeah. So any that. any query you have, I think most of our listeners. Any are, to opinion be that you would like to hear voiced from the K man, uh, Ricky Gervais at xfm dot co dot uk, or you can phone in. I don't. I forget what the number is. And until Labradors actually are allowed on the Queen's Highway, exactly. I don't think we we'll see many blind people driving oh, I cars. Might be wrong. I'm you might be, wrong. mightn't you? <laughs> oh, we hadn't thought of that. Yeah. Oh. Yes, mm. you might be wrong. Could well be well, wrong. Well, there's a start. So, what have you been doing this week, Steve? Well, um, I'll tell you what, at the beginning of the week I was, um, incredibly annoyed by Carl. Why? Um, no, uh, well, no, because you, I remember you had a little discussion with Carl a while back saying that, um, you thought he was lazy at times. Yeah. And, you know, you had various criticisms of yeah, his, his, yeah, his work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
And I got a call from him, he said, uh, oh yeah, I should have told you, um, I had a phone call, someone said that they were trying to get hold of Steve Merchant to offer him some lucrative voiceover work. Now you know- That is money time. for old rope. It's money rope. for rope. It That's about, the, you're in there for about twenty minutes and it's thousands of pounds. If there are children listening who are still at school, they should definitely, when the careers guy says, what do you want to do? Try and get voiceover, voiceover work. work. Just become a voiceover artist. It's money for old rope. Yeah. So I can't believe my luck because yeah. you know I love money for old rope. Yeah. And um, I said, well, what was the information? He said, oh, oh, I don't know. I deleted the message. It was on his answer. And he deleted the message. I said, right, when did the message come? He said, last week. So he took a week to tell me Why? that he had deleted the message. Why? Just because it wasn't for you? I mean, I don't know how selfish that is, Carl. Is that, no. What happened is, right? I got back a holiday. Mm. I was at home. Yeah. So I called up my voicemail. Yeah. Because right, I can do that. Yeah. Remote access, right? Because I've got to know what's going on at work. Of course. Called in. It was still my day off. I was going through the messages. Yes. Heard one from some company saying we're after Steve Merchant. Yeah. We want him to do some voiceover work. Yeah. Right. Mm. I can't remember the name of it, but Thanks. I thought right. I'll, I'll remember to tell Steve a week later. It doesn't matter, does it? You still got the message, and they. they what, what, what message? Yeah, but voiceovers have to be done in the next. Couple but I didn't of days. get the message. I got all I got was there was a company I don't remember the name, and they phoned you the what voiceover. I, well, how does that help me? There are hundreds of thousands of media companies. I, I you didn't take down a number. You didn't take down a name. Nothing. I, I was more puzzled why they'd want you to voice anything. <laughs> I don't know what. I don't. Don't. Well, listen to that. Voice. You must be annoyed. You must be Do you annoyed. Wanna, I mean, talk about rubbing salt into the wound. I will listen to you. Oh God! I don't know what you. I don't know how you think. I don't know what, how your mind works. Well, I was thinking there must be a tractor sale on somewhere. <laughs> Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! I don't care if they want me to advertise, you know, <laughs> the latest designs in pirate fashion wear. I will do a voiceover because it's money for the rope. I don't care what you think of my voice. Someone was interested. They were offering me money, and you decided arbitrarily. Oh, they probably wouldn't want it. They probably made a mistake. I, they wouldn't like the way he talks anyway. I'll delete the message. No, the thing is, right? I what get that paid. Go? I get paid to sit here on a Saturday, yeah. right? Play CDs and that, help out with the show, get your decent prizes. I think I, I, I do me bit. Sure. Right? It isn't about running your voiceover work. So hang on, so Carl, let me just get this right. If someone was ever to phone me, right, trying to get in touch with you, to offer you work, you'd want me to just ignore the message. That is what you're saying to me. You'd prefer that I deleted the message, I ignored it altogether. That's what you'd want for me to do. That's what you want me to do. What? Someone's calling you for some Someone's phoned me. me. They say, oh, oh, I can't, I don't know, I, I, I'm a friend of a friend, I've got your number, Steve. Uh, I would love to use Carl Pilkington for a, 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 an well, exciting sex scene. Well, you have to call me, so has it happened? Has well, it happened? well, I'm saying in the future, if it was to occur, <laughs> if it was to occur, do you want me to just ignore it? Is that what you prefer for you to do? Uh, well, it's not like that, though. I, I did tell you, I told you the message. You didn't tell- what? You told me a week later with none of oh, the information I needed. Carl, um, that doctor called last week, that kidney's ready for that, um, little girl that you were doing that sponsored walk for. I forgot to tell you. Oh. I have it still alright. They keep it on ice, don't they? We've actually had people emailing in saying, this is the worst Rockbusters ever, because it was too easy, it was boring. Oh. Well, uh, 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 this is just, uh, don't shoot the messenger. Oh, dear. Other people saying, um, it what? really has run its course. Some people genuinely agree oh, with Ricky. Oh, Carl, this must hurt, mate. Stinging attacks on you. Um, some people just slagging you off generally, saying that oh, you, win, you whinge all the time. Looks like Steve like. was right when he, um, sort of like poo poos your ideas. So. When he, uh, when he wheezes on your so bonfire. Other, someone else, I swear to God, someone else emailed in and said, don't bother sending me the prizes. Take them to a charity shop or pawn them, give me the money, I'd rather have it. So I don't know what to say, Carl. I just wonder if it really has run its course now. Alright, well, well, we'll see what you come up with next week, well, then. <laughs> let's, see, uh, let's see what you do. Let's see what you come in with. Sure. <laughs> oh, yeah. About five to one. <laughs> I'm, I'm guessing you'll be popping in with another, another hip hop track. Yeah. Full of, uh, yeah. Full of and Jeff and well, again, no, no, I won't, I won't bring it into you, I'll do it myself at home. Because obviously that makes <laughs> oh, it easier. Oh dear. Obviously you can't cope. Oh dear. Are you actually going to be here next week or are you still going to be in Cornwall? No, you see there again, I'll be back, I'll be back in time. Oh. And in the, in the week when I go to, you know, Cornwall to see the monkey world. Yeah, you're two days past the monkey world. That still works. Yeah. <laughs> still work. What? what you're you're going to interview some of the monkeys. What? I get love some stories. that. I love that. You, you were going. Could a monkey live without bones? And so I'm going. Carl, shut the. F please, just look at the monkeys and eat your ice cream. This is what the phone message he left me Wednesday on my mobile. But I just uh, he's chatting about certain things that are going on at the moment. Uh, what new does need to know? Um, old Duncan, who mentions, is my agent. 
and, you know, you'll- you'll understand a few other things. But this is the sort of message I get from Carl, right? Windsor. Old messages. Alright. Ten past twelve. Wednesday. Um, just getting loads of f***ing people calling me all the time about sh**. Yesterday, DVDs signing for BBC London. I don't work there, but I've been dragged into that. I've got a woman on, uh, leaving a message from Talk TR going on about, do you, do you want to go and see Pop Idol again? Alright? They're just saying, uh, you and some listeners can go. So I'm sure you'll love that. I've got Jim Benner wanting you to introduce the tin buckets at the Astoria. So can, can you just like let Duncan know that I'm, I'm doing his job whilst he's sat on his ass with his thumb firmly up his ass. Can you let him know that I'm running around like a c**t here sorting shit out for you? Alright, see you later. <laughs> so, do you know what I mean? I know, but that's the kind of phone message he's leaving. But that, but, do you remember but, who he was before but, you? But he's even with? annoyed that he gets a phone call. I remember he got a phone call for you to do a voiceover and didn't yeah. pass it on. You missed a voiceover. That yeah. was thousands of pounds. No, I did. I did it, pass it on though. I told you. You I did. Said you said someone had phoned. Yeah. That's not good enough. But who's that? Well, she she didn't say, and I didn't ask. But of course she said. She didn't say. Rubbish. So you didn't take the number down. Just when she went, oh, can you tell Steve to call me? And you went, yeah. Yeah, well, I just thought you'd know her already. I should have known. It was a woman, so I should have known. He's having a go, you see. Unbelievable. I don't know how he's come back on me. You're the one who was picking on it. Yeah, exactly. I'm saying. I'm defending. Why is he having a go but at you? He because... never picks on Ricky because he knows you are his bread and butter. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, do you know what I mean? The only reason he's got Mondays off is because you're still doing this show. Yeah. Yeah. That's why he's scared of you. That's why he's like he has a go at you on the phone, but he always picks on me because he knows you know I'm a pushover. I'm a nice guy. <laughs> he's scared of you. I can't believe- I don't know how it works. Is that true? Steve, I'm always sorting you out. I look after you. Mm. I'm sort not you out you with don't, tickets. I'm not saying you don't, but I, I've out. got you today. Why well, are you picking well, on me? Well, 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 what do you mean you're sorting out tickets in lager? What's this? Right, whenever you want tickets. Yeah. yeah it's all right. I don't want to use this as like moaning time and that, because yeah. I don't like to moan. I'm busy and that, right? <laughs> like, I've, sorted, <laughs> I've sorted you out tickets for gigs. Yeah. Right? Well, somebody doesn't even turn up to. Yeah. yeah we won't even go on about that. Yeah. Right? Lager. He was sorting out the cure. He complained it was boring. Yeah. yeah. There was that big drum of lager that yeah. you had, and you said, oh, put that in your room for me. Yeah. Because I don't want to carry it home. Right? I'm lazy. So I said, all right, then I'll put it in my room. It goes missing, it gets nicked. <laughs> then you have a go at me because it got nicked. Yeah. I get you another one, you make me carry it around town for you for half an hour, then you say, oh, I can't be bothered taking it home, can you take it back to work for me? Yeah. Yeah. But interestingly, this is like a year ago, so it's, it's, obviously, it's still- Still pressing on you. Oh, hang it? on, and I forgot the one when we had an argument over fifty p. <laughs> yeah, when we went out for a coffee. Fifty p back that you owed me. Uh, that was the same day you'd given him about forty quid worth of lager. <laughs> but see, this is my problem. This was my point at the time. It's not the fifty fifty p in terms of money is not what's important. The fact that you think you don't have to give me money back because it's only fifty p. That was the point at the stake. Mm. I, it's me who makes a decision. Oh, don't worry about the fifty p. Not you. It's only fifty p. I'm not going to give it to you. Do you know what I mean? There's mm. got to be rules. Otherwise, it's chaos, Carl. Come on, mate. All right. I don't want to fall out about no, it. No, it's not right. <laughs> should we kiss and make up? Do you want that? Do you want oh, that? It's all right. Yeah. yeah. Well, should we should play a little record and come back to this because I can't believe it started with you slagging him off, Rick, and I've ended up as the monster. I know. Bit of R.E.M. Yeah. Oh dear. What do you make of the? Uh, <laughs> what do you make of the first genetically modified baby? Oh. Are you worried about do these? You, do you know what did they do? What? Let me see what it says here. It well, says, isn't it uh, just choosing, it, ju choosing the, you know, eye colour? Well, this or, is the, this is the this is the concern, isn't it? That in the future you'll be able to decide uh, whether it's a boy or a girl, what how intelligent it is, what it looks like, is it handsome, is it ugly? Obviously, no one will choose an ugly baby, and so on and so on and so on. And so, it means that you know, well, where will it lead? Where will it end, Carl? Are you concerned? I've thought about this a lot. Cause what will us three look like in the future if listen. they're being, you know, genetically modified beautiful people? What will be we be like? How will we be considered in That's society? True, yeah. Well, we've talked about this before, haven't we? About, uh, the cloning thing. Yeah. That's no, a bit weird. Yeah. But, um, I don't think it matters because at the end of the day, right, you might look like some other kid, but it's the way you've brought- that you brought up that will change your features and the way you are, you know, your personality. If you lie, you get a long nose, don't you? Well, no, but listen, right, because I remember when- wh when we- you know, I was growing up on this estate- This is gonna be good. Go on. No. No, it's not. It's just a, an example of how this doesn't work. Go on. So, so we don't need to worry sort of thing. Sure. Right? Okay. So, I'm growing up on this estate, and there was a- there was this woman about four houses down, right, who's a bit rough, <laughs> alright? Didn't fancy her. Oh, god no. Right, but she had a <laughs> baby. 
Well, tell me about her first. I'm interested in this woman. Why was she? It, it was a very. Was it like a man in a dress. I mean, I didn't grow up in a posh house or anything. And I'm sure. Not, I'm not saying that if you live in a bit of a rough house, mm. you're a bad person. What but, did she look like? But anyone can tattoos clean up. They look like they, Tony Green with a fag on. They didn't clean up much, right? Oh. Which even if you've not got a lot of money, you can still try well, and make it look nice. Yeah. Right. But she didn't, and a kid used to take a horse into the house. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> whoa, 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 oh, whoa, whoa, yeah. whoa, 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 Neddy, whoa, whoa, Neddy. What do you mean a kid used to take a horse into the house? When they get it, a right? horse? Must have nicked it from somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> must have Is there using horse in it? No. <laughs> what, is that from outside the saloon round the corner? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, was it just tied up with a bit of <laughs> Right? Um, oh, that's great. I Did Big out. Jake come <laughs> looking <laughs> for it? I, I, I don't know. <laughs> oh. <laughs> No, sorry, let me get this. This was before the lynching stopped or after. <laughs> 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 Where'd he get a um, horse from? What do you mean he must have nicked it? He's been saying, Where'd you get that from? I bought it. All right then. But we'll keep it out of the kitchen. I don't want you going Catlin rustling. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where'd he get a horse from, Carl? Just... And how long did he have it for? Until... Was he leading it or riding it? Mum, open the door! I can't stop! <laughs> I can't stop it! <laughs> open the patio door as well, I'll be- Looks like we got us a runaway! <laughs> what do you mean? I don't know, but the oh. thing is they couldn't afford to buy one because they're not cheap. So I'm just guessing. Maybe that's wrong of me. But I, I think- He you know, had a horse? Yeah, right. So That's I, why the family didn't have any money. They'd spend it on the horse. No, exactly. I don't think that's what I'm saying. I don't think they would have bought it. So anyway- Yeah, it's so wise to whisper, Carl, in case they're listening. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and they it's could not, be in the room next door. It's not buying it; it's keeping it as well. Oh, but, so I, so I was like in the car with my dad coming yeah. into the avenue, and you used to have to drive down it to turn round, and, yeah. uh, and you know, sort of go back to uh, to our house. You had the traditional method of transport, <laughs> yeah. And, uh, the horse was in the lounge, <laughs> reading a paper, just just like walking around. <laughs> 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 what? And when I when I was doing, I, I tried to earn myself some money once by flogging little flowers in in plastic cups. What? This right. is genius! <laughs> it just keeps coming. What do you mean you tried to flog little flowers? What do you mean? <laughs> wait, 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 wait! Let's play a record. Let's play a record and come back to this. Wait a minute! It's going to just wait unravel wait and unravel. It's going to go flowers. Let's play a track. It's deeper and deeper. It's like an onion, isn't it? We've created a whole world here where there's a man living with a horse, just walking around the land. But I come from the West Country. I've never heard anything like that. I just think of a big sort of like orange carpet and a rediffusion telly and this horse going, "I'm fed up in here." Exactly. This is really. I'm not taking the rubbish out again. Yeah. Um, we got on to genetically, genetically modified babies, but and then somehow Carl started telling a story about someone with a horse, and then he got on to he was trying to make money selling flowers. Just do the flowers, please. Well, hang on, I just want to recap slightly. So there was a family, and who had the horse in the family? It was because you lived on a, an estate in Manchester. The, so the, the yeah. mother, the mother was a right pig, apparently. Well, I don't know if that's you relevant. You don't need to go that far. But, but you. But well, what I'm trying to do is like make a picture for you, so you understand. What, so what a picture like? it is. Who did she look like? Um, bit of a and no disrespect to her. A bit like Pauline Quirk. <laughs> Quirky, yeah. Right? <laughs> okay. I knew you were gonna say that. Yeah. I knew it was gonna be Pauline. Did she have any tats? Did she have any tats? I never got that close to her. Okay, alright. So, and so who had the horse? Was this her son or her no, husband? No, her, her daughter. Her daughter had stolen a horse? Yeah, from I don't know where. There was a- I think it was some stables down the road or something. And they- they kept the horse in the house with them. They kept it in the house. Did but they, they didn't get have caught? it for long. No. So, and you said you were in the house one day and you saw the no, horse no, in there? No, what happened was, I was, um, they did this thing at school about raising money for charity, right? For some local charity. And they said you can do anything to, to raise money and they came out with all these ideas and I thought, that's good. What was the charity? Well, forget- well, I don't know, I thought forget the charity. Yeah, that's I'm just a, a good money making over <laughs> So- <laughs> You're a charity. So, um, <laughs> so I asked me ma'am for some, uh, cause she used to have a lot of flowers around the house. Sure. I said, can I just take some snippings off them? And, uh, I'll go and buy some plastic cups and, uh, get some soil out of the garden. Planted the, the the bits of plants in them. Yeah. Got a tray. Yeah. Had about twenty five plants on it, selling yeah. them for twenty five pence each. Excellent. Did you sell any? Yeah, so loads. So they w did you just cut? You didn't just cut them and stick them in yeah, the soil. Yeah, they want to survive. Oh. But I think people sort of thought, well, good on him for trying. But anyway, so I went round to theirs because I thought their house could do with a bit of colour and stuff. Yeah. So it's a bit rough. So as I went, the horse went. Thank God for that <laughs> breakfast. <laughs> so they've been, they've been feeding me kitty cat. <laughs> Yeah. So I got up to the door, and they opened the door, and it was one of them houses where no carpet. <laughs> yeah, a horse in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> you know, we've all been there. And, yeah. and the horse was walking around the living room. Oh. I looked quite happy and everything because I always say that about animals. That beauty right? was on. 
<laughs> well, <laughs> yeah. well, think about it, right? If you were a horse, where would you rather be? In a little wooden hut with a load of hay, or in like a house with a central you know, heating, three-piece suite, and sure. a telly and that. <laughs> That. No, but I was saying this the other day. Right? <laughs> and an Atari. Right? <laughs> I was walking through London Call the other day. 64, yeah. rubbish. Exactly. W walking through London with Suzanne, right? Yeah. And do you know how like homeless people always have dogs? And yeah. she said, oh, I hope, I hope she looks after it. And I said, they've got- that dog is happier than most dogs. Right. Because people always walk past and give it a pat on the head. Yeah. It's with its owner all the time. Yeah. yeah. It's out in the open, it's not locked up in a house. Yeah. It doesn't you know eat, I mean? but other than that- <laughs> No, it does eat though, they're always alright. So that's what I was saying, I think this horse- was- was doing alright for yeah. itself. Do you know what I mean? Well, not many horses have got their own house. Exactly. For a start, yeah. But anyway, that's- that's- what, That's what by the by. Yeah, yeah, so anyway, this family- it was a bit- what we were talking about, it was about cloning- Genetically modified kids yeah. and all that yeah. stuff, yeah. Right, now what I'm saying is, you could say, you know, right Steve, you could have a baby, right? Mm -hmm. And Ricky could see it and say, God, I want one that looks like that. Yeah. <laughs> right? It so, could happen, Rick. <laughs> so- Come on, work with him. So you take it to the doctors, and I don't know what they do, they, they inject it with something or whatever. Yep, that's how yeah. it's done. Yeah. And, uh, get a little baby, and there it is, it looks the same. Now the thing is, you separate, you both go off and do your own things. Yep. Right? Yeah. Now, you look at Steve- Stephen, this is, you look after your baby. Yeah. You treat it well, you give it good food and I'm that. a good dad. All the vitamins and stuff. Yeah. Mm. Ricky just gives it cheese. <laughs> right? So then it changes its looks, it goes a bit fat. You know, it gets tired easily, and that sort of thing. <laughs> now, when this family- <laughs> Why am I just feeding a baby cheese? Right? This- this, um, this- this- this family had a horse in the- in- you know, in their, in their house. Yeah. They had a- a little baby. And my mum went round and said, you're not gonna believe this, but it's a beautiful looking baby. Right? Yeah. And I was like, well, you know. And, uh, the weird thing is, it was a good looking kid, but as time went on, they didn't really look after it. And I'm not saying, like, abusing it, but it used to run around, it used to play out till, like, ten at night. Yeah. Uh, it used to chase cars. <laughs> right. It was a bit- <laughs> Did it have hooves? <laughs> yeah, no. No. <laughs> chase cars! Right. What sort of kid chases cars? <laughs> <laughs> oh God! No. Was it called Rover? The weird Did it catch sticks? <laughs> it's Liam, it was called, right? Right. Now, the weird thing is, it was a good-looking kid, but as time went on and all that, like not eating properly and its hair was all patchy. It's not Liam Gallagher, is it? <laughs> 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 and chasing cars on that, and it became <laughs> an ugly kid. It's definitely uh, Liam Gallagher. <laughs> and that's, uh, what, that's what I'm saying, right? You can uh, clone, you can clone all you like, but at the end of the day, it's yeah. how you brought up. Brilliant. Wow! Whoa. Wow! Wow! That was a hell of a point. Oh, God! But am I right? Uh, you're always right. I'm. I'm quite. I'm quite happy with this isolation thing. Because, <laughs> um, like I say, I wasn't joking. I don't know loads of people, and I'm happy. You know, I've got Suzanne in the house. There's always a job to do. It's been three weeks here now. I don't know how long you've had it, but. Three weeks, and I'm there's still loads of jobs to do, <laughs> loads of jobs about the house, <laughs> and I'm quite happy with that. I'm really, and I'm not. I'm, I'm today. I've done. I mean, I've been so busy, but just today, I've descaled the kettle, yeah. which needed doing. <laughs> What's descaling a uh, kettle? Do you drink much tea over there, or is not that not, not a no? We do, a we do. Bit. I've just never descaled a kettle. Well, you kind of know that your kettle needs descaling when you have a cup of tea, and you can sort of see a, a sort of a film on ah. top of the tea. That's when your kettle needs descaling. You just sort of put this liquid in it, yeah, and it gets with all the hard water that's built up and sort of gone hard and clung to the kettle. And it means that it's not <laughs> boiling the water that well. Okay. So you descale it. So that was the first job. This was about. That would have taken 10 minutes. What do you do for the rest of the 23 yeah, yeah, hours? Yeah, and how long are you going to spend no, talking no, that, about that it? No, that was job one. That was job one. That was oh. job one. Oh, yeah, job one. Then that, that got me in the mood. You've got to start off the day with a, a small job like that. Nothing that overfaces you. I knew that I had to put another coat of paint on a, a light outside. I did the first coat yesterday. So that was on my mind. I thought, I've got to do that in a bit. But I want a cup of tea first. But I saw the kettle. But this needs descaling. I'll get that done. <laughs> Whilst I was doing that, I looked at the toaster. Now the toaster. When was the last time you entered your toaster? I did it. Oh, I did it. Yes. I did it yesterday because there was all crumbs yeah. and crap everywhere. There was so well, much. Exactly. Well, it never ends. To be honest, when you empty it and you take it back, there's still crumbs in it. You can there never is. get them all out. 
It's I a agree. Job that never is actually completed. Mm. So I, I it's a never-ending toaster out into the garden. I emptied mm. it. Loads of birds are getting some crumbs, some burnt toast, and what have you. <laughs> so they're happy. Yeah. Took it back in, right? So yeah. I got that done. Okay. I then did my painting job that I told you about. Then I wanted to. I noticed on the bathroom door the handle kept it in a tile when I opened it. So I thought I can sort that out. I can glue a little bit of rubber to the wall so it's not hitting the. You know what I mean? So the handle doesn't hit the tile and. Could end up cracking the tire. Faith, are you regretting asking this question yet? No, I'm not. No, I'm into it. I, okay. I love this. Keep, keep it. going. Keep going. I cleaned the sink <laughs> in the garage. There's a, there's a sink and it had a build up of hard water on that. I got some stuff on that <sighs> to do. What else have I got to do? Oh, I, I, I got my steamer out and steamed the, the shower cubicle because there was some sort of mold build up. So all I'm saying is there's loads and loads of things that you never get round to doing, and they're not they're not massive jobs. But you've always got something else to do. But when you're stuck in the house, that's what I'm enjoying getting the house in order. Oh, just quickly. Can I ask you this quickly? Oh, sorry, I, I know you're going to let him go, go, go but just re- I'm dying to ask you this, Carl. I'm going to guess you're not a phone person. Like, you're not someone who welcomes phone calls or drop ins. And are you good at texting people back? If there's a question mark on the text, I'll answer it. <laughs> if it's just a. <laughs> If, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not into sort of just chatting because I, I would prefer a phone call. And if it's something important, I think you've got to talk to someone. If it's just you can't have sort of nothing. You chat on text. I don't think that's a. Do you want to chat in it? And then then you make the call. Right. But I don't. I don't do that many phone calls. I speak to my mum and dad every other day. That's They're good. all right. Um, but not much is going on at the minute. I mean, they were telling me that they've ordered some meat from the butchers and they're bringing it <laughs> round. And, but no one's doing anything apart from me. These gaming tackles, <laughs> empty and toast. <laughs> but my mum and dad got sick of hearing that two weeks ago. Right. So it's it's not a time for, oh, how have you been and what have you been up to? What, what starts on you? Um, mine changes. I'm on the edge. Right. Okay. He even makes that complicated. Of course. He I even am. makes twaddle complicated. <laughs> no, I'm just, I'm just. It changes depending what paper you read. Yeah. All right. In Tw- theory, twenty-third what would you... of September. So I think yeah. most of the time I'm a Virgo. I think. Oh. Well, I'll tell you. Write, write that down, uh, listeners. Twenty-third uh, of September, uh, and come round and give him the bumps. <laughs> Um, what, what I mean? Well, according to this, I mean, it. I, I mean, you've been criticising this, Rick. Sure. You've been saying that there's maybe not not anything in the zone. Yeah. Well, hang on. Let me just read the, the uh, I'm, I'm, Is this going to change my mind? Well, Am I going to eat my words? The typical Vergoan. Mm, words. Okay. The what? physical appearance of the typical Vergoan. Yeah. High forehead. That's not true. Cranium may seem too big in comparison with the face. Look at Carl. Look at Carl. But how specific is that? Has an extremely large forehead. Has a high hairline. That's mm. not true, though, is it? Maybe quite tall. What are the blokes like? Often has one foot turned in more than the other. What? Do they, they've just described Rain Man. What is that? How can I be specific? Well, that's why it sounds like Carl. <laughs> <laughs> one, one foot turned in. Yeah. Ah. Oh. <laughs> well, have they even bothered doing one for you? Because there isn't many people. Who... Hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Go on. What are you I, saying? I, I sort of think I'm fairly average looking, but I'm saying, have they wasted a page in that book for whatever you are? <laughs> <laughs> it started off me being dissing him and stuff, and you've been nice. Hang on a minute. I don't think you can be a Virgo, because it says uh, that they are normally quick, alert, and intelligent. <laughs> No, actually, I have to say, it says here, the uh, behaviour and personality traits of the Virgoan, uh, uh, is an, it, as a child, is an excellent mimic, uh, can learn many things in a short time, yeah. not really true of you, is it? What, Re- what, rarely like, questions what? authority, but frequently questions facts. Yeah. You never question facts. Yeah, you never question authority, he's scared <laughs> of authority. Yeah. Um, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, you're usually trying, very, very upset if teased. That's true. Yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Hang on a minute though. Yeah. Can't take a bit of stick, too it much pressure. If you yeah. can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. Yeah. Oh. What to teach a young Vergoan? Myths, fairy stories, make believe, daydreams, and how to use imagination should all be taught to young Vergoan. So they have plenty of magical moments to remember in their adult years oh. when they are often alone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm changing my mind. I know. This is good stuff. This well, is really good stuff. All right. Well, let's see. What What are you? Uh, well, um, I don't, don't think we should talk about that. Yeah, let's, let's have a look. It says the Vergoan is- I love some of the specifics of this. Vergoan is an employer. He's excellent as the boss of a small company. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Don't give him on a Tuesday. He's yeah, probably exactly. stamp collecting then. Yeah. 
Come he on, loves a bit of paddock. Um, okay, let me look at mine. Um, oh, that is good though, Carl, isn't it? That is you all over. I've changed your mind. It's brilliant. It's a real science. They've really put their work in with this one. Let me see. Sagittarius. Oh. Sagittarius uh, is a happy, playful little clown. Little. Greets everyone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh dear. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me see. The Sagittarius at home. Um, He's only going to read the good bits, though, isn't he? Yeah, exactly. If that's it, what what can it say? Mm. Uh, have, have, they, have they done yours in sort of small print because you've got special eyes? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that insult is, Carl. What kind of an insult is that? Well. He's up to that. Look at his face. <laughs> He's done me. Oh, oh dear. dear. You went in. There was George Best, one of your footballing heroes, was there. A that load of other good. big names. We, you sat there in prime position. You came backstage with a load of other big names. Hey, you had a lovely bit of grub. You were filming this thing for the DVD we're making. That's you. That's you, a cameraman on our DVD. And yet you think, oh, and you now you look grumpy because you had a couple of pints and you, oh, I can't believe. So it. tell us why you didn't enjoy it. Because the ceremony, what didn't you enjoy about that? Far it was interminable, wasn't it? Far too long. Wasn't it awful? Three so boring. I'm hours. Sorry, I thought you were going to say something. Really? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Three hours. Yeah. Um, I mean, I suppose for you two, at least, you know, you were gonna get something. Sure. Yeah. But, <laughs> with me, it's like, I mean, I've never graduated or anything, so. Have you not? <laughs> I'm trying to think of, of a situation. Basically, I sat there three hours knowing that I'm not gonna get anything out of the night. Yeah. Right? Now. <laughs> <laughs> No did you- sorry, me. when we invited you and you said yes, did you think you were up for an award? <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought- I thought we were gonna be sat round tables, having a nice yeah. bit of food, yeah. whilst people are going up there winning awards. Yeah. But three hours of the same thing over and over again, I mean, if a film's three hours in the cinema, yeah. you go, well it's long, but you know, I wonder how it's gonna end. Yeah. But this was just like the same <laughs> thing over and over again. Some guy going up, thanks a lot, cheers for the bit of brass. And then going down, sitting down, the same thing over and over again. Mm. I wouldn't, uh, honestly, right? I, I'd say it was one of the worst things <laughs> I've ever had to do. Cry! <laughs> <laughs> Link it no, up. I enjoyed the night afterwards when we did have a bit of lamb and the nice bit of veg and that. That was yeah. all right. And I went home and I was happy. And I got the the little freebie bag that you're talking about that we gave yeah. away. Yeah. Um, which wasn't much good stuff in it. Oh, oh all right. Christ. No, what, Suzanne, what would you have done right. on that Saturday night? Suzanne what would you have done if- or the Sunday night, rather, what would you have done had you been at home? I would have stayed in with Suzanne, right, watching telly, having a nice bit of pate on toast or something, cup of tea, watching 24, but instead, I had to buy an expensive suit so I didn't show you up, <laughs> right? <laughs> this is what I did. Yeah. And what did you spend on your suit? Well, in total, right, because, you know, the shoes and the suit and the shirt and the tie, it was about 600 quid. <laughs> that's the most expensive evening ever. <laughs> and that's, well, that's what I'm saying to you. And, and the daft thing is, it's dark in there. I don't know why you've got to wear a nice suit. You can't, you can't wear a track suit, for goodness sake. It's dark in there. Oh, oh, oh. No, just a shirt and that. It doesn't oh. make you a better person wearing a suit. No, it doesn't you know make you a I mean? better person, no. We're not uh, claiming it made you a better person. No, well, that annoyed me. Yeah. Um, I mean, it was, it was an experience, innit? That's why I went, because you think, if I didn't go, if I would have said to you when you invited me, no, Steve, I don't want to go, then I would have never known, right? Yeah. And yeah. I've, I've, uh, that, that's my sort of thing in life, right? Yeah. If yeah. something comes up, you should take it, even if you're not gonna like it, it's a bit of an experience. Right. And Do you know what he said to me? I phoned him up, because we had to meet up, yeah. and obviously he had to pose as my, uh, gay lover. He yeah. To get in, right? Yeah. He phoned me, what, you said something to me like, I bought a suit, I'm looking good. He said, I'm looking good. <laughs> People will think, how on earth did he end up with that good looking guy? <laughs> so he got into the yeah. role. That and was what he said getting, to me. He started getting into it. Such an insult. Fire record. Do you know when I left the pub in a bit of a mood, because yeah. I, I just fed up with not getting anything done? Yeah. Walking down the road, I was thinking, how can I get out of this? How can I stop having to work with them? I'm thinking, I wonder if I, if I leave, I wonder if they'll be funny and they'll go, and then my boss will be giving me stick. I'm thinking, how long, how much notice have I got to give out? How, how, and all this is going through my mind. I'm walking home and I got in, said to Suzanne, I'm sick of it. She's going, you need to do it when I get a new kitchen. <laughs> And I was like, yeah, but how big does the kitchen need to be? I was saying, do we need a big kitchen? Can we get a small one? Have we got enough for a small kitchen? Do we need so many cupboards? Can we just have wood instead of steel? All this, try to get out of doing this. Yeah. It's always, just, I always feel like, you know, cos I, I like to think that I'm not perhaps as bad as him. Yeah, no. You annoy me in different ways. Like, like what? How does he annoy you? Well, stuff, stuff that, you know, I come up with ideas, say yeah. cheapest chimps. Yeah. 
uh, Rock Busters springs yeah. to mind. Yeah. Uh, 15 like Taiwan. <laughs> 15 Taiwan. Let's just remind people what 15 Taiwan was. It was a little feature that I wanted to give a run, you know, give it a little run, see if people like it. Uh, the premise being? No, there's no premise, it's just a title. No, we were gonna get 15 sort of ornaments, you'd explain them, and then people would call up and say, <laughs> that I'm from Taiwan. <laughs> <laughs> Carl, you just explained why I didn't think that was a good idea. Yeah, By explaining the good- No, so, you know, the funny thing is, Steve, right, I was walking down Regent Street on Monday, Walk past one of these big stores, right, and they've got all famous quote quotes on the windows, right, yeah. and one of them was something like, "An absurd idea is often a great idea." Yeah. Do you know who said that? Go on. Einstein. Yes. Which made me wonder if you were his mate, would he ever have done E equals M C squared, <laughs> or would you have said, "Don't bother with that. <laughs> it's not going to work," because that's all you seem to do. Everything I come up with, yeah. you put down. Yeah. Well, that's one thing. He's negative, right? I don't know why. I don't know why he okay. is. What well, else? He messes me about. I get him concert tickets for stuff, and, yeah. and you say, oh, "I didn't bother going." Yeah. yeah, yeah, that is annoying. You come in, you know, five minutes to go with tracks that need editing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. the little bag, yeah. that bag that was free. Yeah, you got a free bag today, an yeah. XFM little rucksack thing. Yeah. yeah, you were like, "Oh, what's this? What's this rubbish?" Yeah. Ricky said, "I'll have it. They're great." You yeah. said, "No, I want it." Yeah, <laughs> well, it's so, free. I need it. Yeah. Um, I'll give that as a well, gift or something. So. So, I mean, I think on reflection, Steve is probably a little bit more annoying than me. Mm. <laughs> I, I won't go that far. <laughs> you are, you are annoying. If I had to go away for a week somewhere, yeah. if it was a quiet place- well, you are again, aren't you? That's two orders you had this week, this year, I mean. If it was a busy place, I'd probably go with you, cos people, do you know what I mean, staring at me all the time and that, if I'm walking around with Steve. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just- <laughs> Let's go back to insults briefly. Go on, you know, Goofy. Saying, <laughs> oh no, no, I, uh, see that, Goofy, that's no, not no, no, fair. No, 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 because that's that's what he said. It's in the head. I, what I, do you mean he said? No, that? Did he no, say that? no. I mean, when did you call me Goofy? No, he didn't. I he didn't. said about what's in the head. Hey, no, when it's come on, come off it. Don't what? Who's calling me Goofy? No, I'm not even Goofy. Goggle eyes, fair enough. No, yeah, but you can sort your account. I can't. What do you mean I can? How can I sort my account? I'm not even Goofy. That's not fair. You've got the proper features. What? Just needs sorting out a bit. I can't help it if, if my hair's not good. Who do you think's cooler to look at, Steve or the Chemical Brothers? Steve. Definitely, yes! You're absolutely right, Carl, and that's the first sensible thing you've said if, for a long time. If I was time. to work with Steve on, on some music, yeah. if I had the choice, I think Steve would look better on a album cover. Really? Yeah. What would you do? Would you change him at all? To, what would you do with his I'd, image? I'd put him in the distance so I would <laughs> do... I can't believe this is... This no, just so you don't look as tall, that's doing you a favour. <laughs> You know, I was on the, this is true, I was on the, uh, uh. on the tube, right, coming in to meet Gervais the other day, and I was wearing a suit and I, my mobile phone slipped out of my pocket and it landed on the seat, and I didn't realise this, and as I was about to get off, some bloke who was sat there, like an old guy, he picked up the phone, he went, Oi! Uh, Lanky, you dropped your mobile phone! <laughs> and I was like, well, I thank you for pointing out I dropped my phone, but did you have to do the lanky? But you knew who he meant. I bet you turned round straight away. <laughs> it worked. You knew he meant, Steve. Yeah, but he's done you again. But I was the only up. person stood up. It was a fairly empty train. Was it, Was there any other lanky people there? No. Well then, not glamorous then. Oh, honest to God, it really isn't. But I remember I met Michael Palin once because he had a book out at the same time as me, and we were chatting about it. And he said, "Oh, you don't like it, do you?" And I, I moaned about certain things. He went. I know, he said, I feel the same way about it, but people won't understand. So you're better off not moaning about it, because people will go, you're really lucky. You could be working, you know, in a pit or whatever. Well, and you did something quite similar to that. You ended up being in a huge suit, working in a sewage pipe for this oh, book. Oh, yeah, in one of them, yeah, <laughs> in, in, uh, yeah, in the programme. Yeah, in, uh, it was the waste episode, and it's in Mexico, where all the drains are open. So soon as you land in sort of Mexico City, that's that's one of the things that hits you first, the noise and the smell, because all the sewers are open, and uh, it's a fella's job to uh, go into the drains and unclog them of all sorts of, I mean, everything you can imagine. He goes down there and has to unblock it. If it weren't for him, the city would just be flooded with mm -hmm. gunge. Pro it's proper, you know, it's it's not just messing about. I'm I'm looking at topics that it's a, it is a big problem isn't it waste i mean uh, what what do you do with it all we're creating loads and loads how, how, how often do you empty your recycling bin all the time what and where's it all go you see you forget I about don't it don't really you know. once you've put it in that bin not my problem anymore and it was just looking at those things and the rubbish that annoys me 
you know, things, I know we need some of it, but there's certain things that annoy me, like, you know, party poppers, stuff like that, that makes a mess, and you go, what, what was that for? Why, why, why have we just made that mess? You take longer, it sort of takes longer to get the vac out and vac up than it does for that moment of pleasure of just pulling that thing. So it was looking at waste like that as well, the waste that's unnecessary. I mean, I don't, I'm not going to pretend here. When I set off on these journeys, I'm not a Paxman. I know I'm not going to solve the world's problems or anything, but one that I went, I'm looking forward to. I think the one I, I look forward to the most, and it probably did turn out to be my favourite trip, was looking at identity, mm -hmm. my identity and stuff, because it's something I've never really thought about. I don't, um, you know, you see celebrities on who do you think you are, and they find out they had a great, 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 great granddad who sort of hurt his leg once, and they start crying. And I just think, you didn't know him five minutes ago, and you're bawling your eyes out. What's wrong with you? And I, I could never understand that, because I, the only people I link myself to, really, are my mum and dad. Anyone past that, it's a bit different time, and I've never thought about my past, the family tree, you know, I don't even talk to people who are alive and are linked to me, so I don't really want to know about people from years ago. Uh, so that's that was my attitude going into it. But then the things we looked at, um, it was just interesting. Dressing up as a woman was one of them. Dressing up as a woman was in there, yeah. It was a man in um, Newport Beach in uh, that's West Coast America. And he, uh, his name's Rob. Brilliant bloke. If there's one thing that I like about all this, sometimes you meet people who you just get on with and have a nice day out, and he's into um, dressing up as as a woman, but not just like, you know, bra and knickers and that. He's, he's got a full body suit, rubber suit, so you feel, you know, you, when you feel your body, you feel in the body of a woman. And um, he got me one of them suits and put it on, and uh, it was a weird day. Do you know... <laughs> Do you know when you find yourself in a situation, you go, "This I never thought this was going to be happening in my life." I used to work as a printer, and I'm sort of I'm here now, putting on false breasts and a wig and you know a skirt, and I had a really good day. Um, Why did you have a really good I day? I don't do you know. Think? So I, honestly, I don't I don't know because I wouldn't have thought that would have been me. But I think his enthusiasm. I think that's what I like. I like meeting people who are really into something that's a little bit weird, but they don't care. It's like they love it, they're not hurting anyone, and they don't care what people think, because a lot of us just, you know, you do as you're told all the time, don't you? We're all living the same sort of life. You know, there's, there's trends, everyone's copying the same way of living, and now and again you meet these people who do something a bit different, and um, it's what makes life interesting. So I think that rubbed off from him onto me. Um, and, yeah, it was, it's, it's probably one of the best things about the job. Because I think a lot of people are sick of a lot of stuff. Yeah, it seems that way, doesn't, doesn't it? it? Everyone's it's, a bit sort of... Everybody's a bit down. We need... And actually sometimes... No, I think it is. I think it's news. Do you? I'm trying to cut news out. Right. That might be quite drastic. Do we not need news? No, well, but how much? Uh, how much right, should okay. you have? When I was growing up, it was just like 6.45 news. Yeah. But now we're bombarded by it, and I wonder right. if we're getting too much. I think you're right, because we're getting an awful lot of news and we're not getting an awful lot of analysis. No. We get constant, so constant left. information. Well, they say the more you know, the more you know you don't know. That's very true. And it gets you down. It's like, you know, like years ago with smoking, when it first came out, doctors said, you want to smoke? I don't just endorse It's good for you. Yeah. And I think in years to come, people will be saying, we all went wrong and there was too much news, we all went a bit mad with it. Too much news. So I'll cut out the news, it. watch sick cut of it. Cut out the news and it'll, be, and it'll be fine. Do you worry about things like coronavirus? Do you get sort of... Or do you, or is that too big? Is it me small things that annoy you? Yeah, it's little niggly yeah. things. I think that's, that's out of your hands a bit, isn't it? Or yeah. it's in your hands. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's why you have to wash your hands. We do. But, yeah, I try not to worry about the, the big stuff. Mm. I don't think you can. Otherwise, you'd never leave the house. No, that's very true. And, and life is hard and we all just have to get on with it, I think, as best we can. Yes, we can do. Now, look, what about Ricky Gervais? This is a quote, if people don't know it. He said, this is Ricky Gervais saying this, not me. Receive wisdom says there's a fine line between a genius and an idiot. Not true. Carol's an idiot, plain and simple. Very simple. Some people have proclaimed him a genius but they're idiots. Now, Ricky and you, 
Would you get back together again, like a like a sort of boy band? You know the the way that they do. Yeah, but is that a good is a boy band getting back together a good idea? Well, ever? take that was a good idea, don't you think? Take right. that maybe. <sighs> no, no, okay, we're going to fight. <laughs> I just think you've got to like leave things. Right. They were good. They had their time. People liked them at the time. Okay. You bring them back. It's never as good. Right. I think people like the idea of going back to something they liked when they were younger. Sure. I mean, we, we stopped doing the podcasts about... Well, Idiot Abroad was ten years ago. Was it really? Ten years ago. Wow. And people are still going on about it. I know, but that's because people loved it. Yeah, but I, 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 I wonder if it came back now, if people wouldn't like it, because, mm. you know, so things have changed, haven't no, they, they, with, have. like, sensibilities and that? No, that's true. I'd oh, probably gosh. offend everyone. There you are. I mean, yeah, you. does anyone want to see that again? I don't know. I think they might. There's me there. And there's you. Yeah, I know, I know what you mean, though. Things, things do change. And so if after that, you kind of almost retired a little bit, but then you got a bit bored. I had a go at retirement. Yeah, it didn't work. I think I did five. In fact, last time I was on here, I said yeah. to you, I've had enough. I know, I remember. Knocking it on the head. Can't you said, be doing with it. it. I'm, I'm, I'm out of here. But it's, it's hard. Is it? Everybody sort of has that dream of retirement. You know, that's what everyone's aiming at, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Don't have to work anymore. Yeah. But take that out of your life and you just... What's the point in getting up in the morning? So you get a bit bored then? Got really bored, was driving the girlfriend like up the wall, I was taking things apart that didn't need taking apart, right. letting things annoy me. Like, do you know like how you get chicken fat in between the doors in an oven? Yes. Things like that bothered me. Oh, it was like it? my main aim to like, I've got to get rid of that, <laughs> which isn't healthy. So you've, you've got to, you've, yeah, you've, you've got to have something to, to worry get about. up for. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, things, and, and things that you can do something about. What makes you happy? Like if I was to say to you, today I could do something for you that would make you happy, what would it be? <laughs> um, Steady. Get, 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 get my name right. That's no, true. No, I, I think. Um, I think. <laughs> yeah, no, you're I, right. I'll tell you no, what. I'm looking forward to getting home. At the moment, it's been a wet winter and that, and I've got a lot of algae and moss on the oh, on the that driveway. Oh, that drives you mad, doesn't it? So I'm um, I'm enjoying. I started it yesterday, and I really like that, like that thing. That's really simple process, but you feel like you're doing something. At the end, you can step back and go, I've done that. I achieved this. I've achieved that. And you feel it looks better. Yes. You know, I, yeah, I've done it. And that's so it's simple smug things feeling. like that. That's slightly sort of like, you, you feel quite smug about that. So yeah. when you tidy your knickerbocker. Other people pay to have it done. This is true. And it's like, well, I can do this. Exactly, of course you can. And uh, yeah, I think that's good for your head, isn't it? Yeah, no, I agree with you. It is, you're absolutely right. Cleaning. Cleaning. Cleaning, yeah. Cleaning is really good. Yeah. Cleaning is great. I agree with you 100%. Have you ever thought about making the jump from writing and entertainment into power? Uh, I'd like yeah, to see you maybe be the Manchester United boss. Imagine you're, you're dressed for it now. You've got that kind of sports look about you, Carl. Imagine you, boss of Manchester too United. Late, Who can go in and fix that? <laughs> I, mean, you, I think you'd give it a good old go. No, I it? feel sorry for, for Ollie. I mean, again, get annoyed. I'm a, a, a kind of a United fan. What would be your managerial style? Shouting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a bit of a, I'd be a Fergie thing. And, and to be honest, that was one of my New Year resolutions that I'm going to try and. Cause Richard who did this with, I always struggle in life at getting points across. I know we're just chatting here and hopefully what I'm saying is clear, but sometimes I've got a lot going on in my head and it's trying to come out quicker than I can work it out. Right. And when I'm trying to describe something, people sometimes just look at me like, I don't know what you're going on about. <laughs> and I get frustrated and then I have to shout. If, if like, nothing changes... I have to shout for people to understand that I'm not happy yeah. because they haven't got the words or the brain to do it in a calm but clever way. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so yeah. in football, that would be the hairdryer treatment. You'd be a hairdryer type it, it guy. It would, yeah. And I don't know if that would work in this day and age, you know, where the players who Fergie uh, was sort of managing is different from your Pogbas and your Lingars now. Maybe shouting, they'd just go home and that'd be that. They wouldn't, they wouldn't, they wouldn't listen, it, it wouldn't work. But you got the Tony Poulis type outfit on with the old with facial the cap. cap. <laughs> <That's very laughs> yeah, old, old, yeah. old school. Old school. But, um, <laughs> but yeah, the position of power thing. <laughs> the other thing with me is I can have a proper rant. I do it all the time with me, with my girlfriend. I'm like, I have a proper moan and she's brainier than me and she'll go, well, you're wrong there because X, Y and Z. And I'll go, oh yeah. 
and that'll be that. <laughs> right. Okay. So, so I can, I can feel like, you know, let's fight them on the beaches. Yes. And then someone will sort of go, you know, we can't, the tide's in. Yeah. <laughs> and I'll go, all right, yeah. Right now, Carl, come on, dear. It's the time where I'm gonna let a cork off. Do you want to film this, Steve? Yeah, the website? That'll be available on the website next week. RickyGervais.com. So see Carl getting hit. One bloke suggested we leave the metal cap on because it's get a better pitch. Mm. But we we'll take the. He's <laughs> taking. Let's get the Wait, camera ready. Get the camera ready. Ready? So if you just joined us, um, we are yeah. using some Lindauer's sparkling wine <laughs> to basically. Well, what can I say? We fire a cork at Carl's round right, ready? head. Ready? Hang, on, hang on a sec. Let me just put the headphones on. Right, film this then. Okay. He's in position. Look. Just firing right. up. Okay, Carl. Carl, come on there so we can. See you later a little bit. I want, we want to get the noise, the microphone there. Right, ready? Hold on. Good. So you're just right. doing it. Hold on. Now, it's in position. <laughs> what if it... it oh. Ready? Yep. Oh, God, it... Oh! No! <coughs> <laughs> <laughs> oh! It's like, it's like jackass. <laughs> Did it hurt? <laughs> what do you mean? Did it hurt you? I saw it just... It well, went off, it went off course, did it? Just glanced, did it? Right, Lynn Darris, you're gonna send us, um, eight more bottles, please. <laughs> yeah, so we're gonna get this right. So what did you do for New Year, incidentally? Well, I met, I cocked it up a bit. Right? <laughs> you're joking. <laughs> on, you're joking. Go. You're joking, mate. Go on. I went and, uh, booked a <laughs> You table. got the wrong day. No, <laughs> <laughs> Bo Booked a table at a restaurant that was shut. <laughs> right? What? I booked a, a table at a restaurant. And the one that I called, it wasn't the one, the call had been diverted. So <laughs> Suzanne said, call them up and see what they're serving, right? Because I forgot to do that when I booked the table, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> great anyway. So I've got, because the thing is, right, it's a restaurant in Covent Garden, but they've got one in Victoria. But when they answered and they said, no, 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 Victoria, I thought that was the person who was answering the phone. Do you know how some people say the name? Right. Right? So then when I called them up and said, what you thought serving? You thought he sounded a bit funny. Right? So... <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I'm confused, Carl, but probably not more. Well, no, it was, a, bran you would have okay, it was a branch of a, um, all right, all right, uh, he didn't right, want to give the restaurant away, so he phoned it up, there's one in Common Garden, they answered the so phone. So it's not, the restaurant's not called no, 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 no. No, no, they, they are, they, they said, no, 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 Victoria. Why can't we do <laughs> the restaurant? I don't know why. <laughs> it's scared? not libelous. Are we scared that, like, are you scared people are gonna sort of see you in there, cause it's your regular home? No, it's just that, like, you know, you got paid for stuff, haven't you? Right. I mean, it's... Okay, anyway, so you've I got- I mentioned it before New Year, but it's not- So did you go all the now, way to the restaurant to find out that it was closed? No, no, no. What happened is I called- Was that the name of the restaurant again? <laughs> <laughs> right. The restaurant's <laughs> called Christopher's. They've got one in Covent Garden, they've got one in Victoria. He right. phoned up, he went to the book, it's a lovely restaurant, I've been there often, I recommend it to him. He phones up, he says, can I have a table for new, uh, new, he said, no problem, sir. Right? And then, uh, so then I said, oh, you better call up to see if they'd, to see if they've got any haddock on the, <laughs> uh, menu. And he went, hello, and they went, hello, uh, Christopher's. Victoria went, Victoria? They went, yeah, he went, oh, no. That's it, innit? So then, I just said, no, forget it. I'm not going all the way over there. <laughs> so I cancelled it, right? So, <coughs> then I called up Suzanne and said, look, I've made an error. Uh, the yes. place we were going to is shut. Was she so, surprised again, or? So we're not going, <laughs> so she said, oh. Try some other places, and I did. They were all booked up, yeah. right? I was fed up anyway. I ate New Year. It's always like this, isn't it? So, <laughs> so uh, I said, look. You know the common factor in all these stories? <laughs> you hate Christmas, you hate birthdays, it's you hate New Year. It is you. Right? Yeah. So, I said, I'll sort something out. Yeah. So I went to Tesco. Leave it with me. Went to Tesco's, but you went to Tesco. Shut. Yeah. Got, a, got a lovely plate of condoms. Did you just stay in and play with the, her birthday? Her Christmas <laughs> <laughs> Blowing them up. Yeah. Yeah. I've done, look, looks, I've done some balloons. <laughs> well, it, it was. I think we did stay in. And I watched, uh, that thing that, you know, 100 Greatest Moments, which was annoying me. Did you see, um, there was a nudist on it? You know how I feel about them. Mm, yeah. Right? Um, did you man, see him? Man with two knobs. There was a man with two knobs on it. And, uh, a nudist who, uh, just like wanders about the house. But it said, it said, uh, and when he visits people, uh, they, I was thinking, who, who lets him visit? I go, exactly, yeah. But, but, but he must go there with trousers on and go, hello, lovely to see you. Can I just pop all these off? <laughs> well, not really, no. And I'll tell you what, what annoyed me the most, he had a white sofa. If you were a nudist, you'd get, you'd get a darker one. <laughs> right? So anyway, right, so we ended up watching that. That annoyed me. Yeah. And then, um, I was tired by about 11 and I said, oh, let's go to bed. And she said, you can't. And that annoys me, the fact that 
because it's New Year, you gotta stay up and it's like, well why? Can't we just- you should bring it forward, <laughs> so in case you want to- To quarter to ten, night. quarter to ten. <laughs> well, you say, yeah, well you stay up and it's like my eyes were dead heavy and I was like, oh, I wanna go to sleep. So just stay up and then it's midnight and you go Happy New Year and then you go to bed. Yeah. Well, not everyone, Carl. Some uh, people have a little uh, party. Uh, <laughs> um, so- So it's over with anyway. So, uh, yeah. So Sorry. Well, are you 86 years old? <laughs> 86 years. Do you ever enjoy- I can't, you never seem to have any fun, Carl. This is what disappoints me, this is what worries me. I feel like you're gonna die You're young, here, to, you're, you're here, Carl, with us two. We've got three, as I was just saying to Steve, three of the greatest comedy minds ever in one room, and Steve pointed out since the goodies. True. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean it should you, be party central. You can all that stuff, and it just seems everybody's- Bit mental at the minute. Everyone's like lost, aren't they? Everyone's. I think everybody has a a, a a certain moment of just being lost. Yeah. But sometimes I think that's all right because I think that's quite as part of the human condition that we're all to put their hands up and go. Do you know what? I'm a bit lost, and I don't really know what to do. And I don't really. It's a bit like you at the moment going. I'm dead restless. I kind of don't want to do anything, but I want to do something. But I feel like I need to do something, but I don't know what it is. Yeah, I know. So therefore, what are we doing? Are we overthinking? I don't know. Do you think you're overthinking this, Carl? Because it seems something that's quite weighing heavy on your mind at the moment. I'm... I'm... <sighs> well, because you get one go at life, don't you? And you want to make sure you're not wasting it. That's the, that's, that's the thing. You know, I don't believe, uh, like, you get another go and all that. You get this one go. And I was watching um, a video the other day on YouTube of, you know, Christopher Hitchens. Is it? Yeah. Really brainy bloke. And I, I always, sometimes, I, I, I just like listening to brainy people. I haven't got a clue what they're going on about sometimes. But I, I admire, like, the, the way they can just say what they think and it's worded perfectly. Do you know, do you know the Stephen Fry types and all that? Yeah. Love that. Wouldn't you love to like, love to be like that? Christopher Hitchett. He's 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 like that, but on this video, it's before he died, like a couple of weeks before he died. Yeah. And he was on this stage talking and he still had his brain that he had cancer and that, but his brain wasn't affected. Uh, his voice was a bit. But he was so passionate about the stuff he was talking about, and he's like right up he's close to death, and yet he's still like loving what he was doing. Yeah. So it makes you sort of watch it and go, shit, he's dying there. And look at him. He's loving every minute. And I'm pissing about here. And maybe, you know, Suzanne's right when she's, or whoever's saying stop cleaning. I, sh I can do the cleaning, but I need something else to make sure I'm, I, I don't know, I'm doing something worthwhile, I think. I haven't got kids. So it's not like I can say, well, I'm bringing up the kids and uh, I'm teaching them stuff. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I've got a cat. She can't even teach them tricks. <laughs> it's not like a dog. They just look at you, don't they? So it's like, what am I doing on the planet? What am I doing now? What can I do? And uh, she said, yeah, yeah. Anyway, we got there. And she said, but I have booked us a day out. And I was like, oh, you shit house. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I was like, this the why you're telling me now. I was talking to Carl the other night because um, I've been watching, rewatching for some reason that film Witness with Harrison Ford, where he's a film. policeman that um, has to protect a little boy who's part of an Amish community. Amish, Amish, Amish. Yeah. And I tried to explain to Carl, you, are, you look plain, John Book. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And uh, I was obviously trying to explain the Amish to Carl. Uh, he'd never heard of them. Completely stony faced. Amazing. Used. Um, now for those. Okay, you explained it to him. Have yeah. you? Okay then. Yeah. Now, I don't know what you said, but I'm assuming you got it right, right? Carl, now tell me, tell me back now, what are the Amish? Um, they're just, just people who, um, sort of live, uh, like in the olden times. So to them, they're sort of in about 1842 or something, so they're getting old papers and that. Um, they <laughs> no, haven't caught up no, to... No, 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 no. They haven't caught, they, they, don't, they don't have telly. They don't they deny, don't, they don't deny the twentieth century has happened. They just don't want to be part of it. They 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 look up and they see planes and they know what they are and they go into the town and they see it in the window of Dixon's a telly. They just they just don't want to be part of it. No, they're they're still living. They still they are still living like it's yeah yeah that's, 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 that's what I mean yeah yeah but they don't they they know they know about everything else. They just don't want to be part of it because they think that the sort of the uh, uh, 
revolution um, was a bad thing. They think it, you know that society became more and more depraved, and they wanted to go away from it, and they wanted to go back to old values, and they think they don't need TV and 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 jets and that way of life. They can they can survive in the old way because the old way was better. Missing out on live eight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, but they haven't had band aid yet. <laughs> 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 yeah. yeah, I think this is the problem that Carl had. He, he, in his mind, they were just a bit delayed. So yeah. that in his head, they were slowly moving towards the twentieth century. They wouldn't be able to watch most of these bands. All their electric guitar. They could. They, they'd be allowed to watch Tracy Chapman. Yeah, doing an acoustic set. Yeah, between yeah. the bands. Yeah, yeah. that would be all right. They'd but no, in Carl's mind, it's like if he. Although they wouldn't like Fast Car. They wouldn't <laughs> like a scene about that. They go, "What are you talking about? Pony and Trap? You got a pony and trap? <laughs> that would be all right." But, but are they still, do they still get sort of rubbish post and that saying we need your money for this or, you no, know, well get behind this charity? They live in a c isolated community. They live, they're farmers, aren't they? They're farmers. It's so. an agricultural community and they're obviously very staunchly religious. Um, and in actual fact it would suit you very well because you hate crowds, you hate groups of people, you don't like the modern world. Well, you'd love it down there, wouldn't you? He wouldn't like getting up at four o'clock to milk a cow though, would he? Well, no, but he'd get mm. used to it. Go back to bed, couldn't you? It's probably out- I mean, have they got anything to do with the- the Hare Krishna people? No. No. Nothing at all. Cos out of all- all the religions, that's- you know, I'm not a religious person, I, I don't- I don't understand You're it. only saying Hare Krishna cos you've got the head. That's the only reason oh, you think I, it'd I'm be- I'm halfway there. Yeah. But, but the thing <laughs> yeah. is, out of- out of all the- you just- what's- what, what was that? <laughs> Money just fell out of my pocket where I'm- I'm nearly laying down! <laughs> that's the danger of wearing sweatpants. <laughs> Everywhere you go, I, I don't think ever lying down in a chair. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, yeah. I'm, you know, I've never been a religious type. You know, if people no. want to do it, I let them do it and what have you. Good of you. But out of all of them, mm. the I, I want one that's not going to take over your life. I don't want one where you've got to get up three times a day and you've got to go and pray and that you've got to get up early. Forget that. It's yep. getting in the way. But <laughs> if it's something like, um, I was walking to work the other day, right, cross Oxford Street. Mm. Um, there's a little Harry Krishna fella there. And, uh, he sort of had, uh, he had a leaflet and stuff, and, uh, he said, you know, are you interested? And I said, what do you do? And, uh, <laughs> he said, well, you know, we're against getting stressed out and what have you. And, um, he gave me a plum. <laughs> they hand out food for some reason. <laughs> but, um, I sort of asked a few <laughs> questions. <laughs> That's just the imagery. Yeah. These two bold people, one yeah. of which is wearing an orange smock, Holding a plum in the middle. He hands the other one a, pl pl a plum. It's almost, it's almost like you could imagine some kind of religious painting. <laughs> yeah, all exactly, yeah, yeah. But, but yeah. Uh, you know, what, what is their sort of main thing? Cos he didn't really tell me that much. He was a, a Japanese bloke, so I didn't know what, what he was saying that, that much. Why? He well, wasn't speaking English? Not, not very well. He wasn't the best sales bloke to send out for them. <laughs> is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. But what what's that? Are they? You're saying they're nothing like. Well, I believe Harry Krishna is a is a kind of um, as an offshoot of a sort of Buddhist faith. It is. And, I think um, they are Buddhist, aren't they? Yeah, and obviously the obviously their most their, their kind of trademark, as it were, is that they have to say. I believe they have to say Harry Krishna, Harry Harry Krishna in a certain rhythm in a certain order, a certain amount of times per day. That's why you see them walking down the street saying Harry Krishna, Harry Harry Krishna, because it's actually a, a sort of religious chant which they're obliged to do. So you see, even if you go into the Harry Krishna faith, you may find yourself, you know, in Tesco or whatever, forced to say. Harry Krishna, Harry, Harry Krishna. Perhaps out, why? Out loud, out, out not loud. just thinking it. Yeah, no, no, out loud. You can put it on an iPod and You can put that on an iPod and it doesn't count. No, I think you have to actually say it. So I guess that kind of eats into your, into your social life a little bit. And then the, and there's, there's the wearing orange as well. Particularly frustrating, I imagine if you're in a, in a cinema or a library. <laughs> a little bit awkward there, you know, midway through, um, or Star you Wars live next him. door to a bloke called Harry Krishna. <laughs> yeah. Who constantly thinks you're calling him. <laughs> yeah. That, that probably. Yeah. Mm. So that's, that's in this, I mean, I don't think we've quite done the, the, uh, Harry Krishna faith, it's full service there, but, uh, so interesting to you? I mean, you, you, you got handed a plum, you've been treated well by them. Yeah, well, but he couldn't tell, I, I just wanted to know how much time it would take up, uh, what are the benefits, mm. um, you know, what can you do, what can you Well, I you think do? the benefits are they probably don't get stressed out, they've probably got that sort of, that, that zen, that, 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 that chiness about them where they, they try and, Interact and quite meditative. Yeah. Yeah. I've oh, got some nice trainers as well, don't they? With their yeah their orange. What orange are you bit. looking for then in a faith car? You say you it is. What are the benefits? I mean, obviously Catholicism. You get the communion wine and um, bread. So yeah, but I can afford that. Right. 
Um, probably, uh, just, just, I liked the Crusaders. I was forced into joining that as a kid, because a mate sort of joined it, and, uh, he sort of said, are you joining? And I, I sort of swore at him. I said, I'm not doing that, right? Yeah. He said, right, if you don't come with me, I'll, uh, I'll tell your mum that you just swore. <laughs> so I was like, oh. So, so I went, <laughs> so I went along and they used to just go on the Friday when they played, you know, Sabutio and stuff and then I went on one Sunday and it was, it was totally different. There was no Sabutio, there was no sort of, you know, uh, Table tennis. Uh, the thing where you hold a, a thing and knock things over. Skittles. Uh, Skittles. There was all that on a Friday. Went on the Sunday, it was rubbish. <laughs> they said, right, sit down in this room, they gave me a Bible. I thought, this looks too heavy, this. This is too big. I'm not interested in this, but... And, uh, I never went again. I used to hide on a Sunday when they came round. And, um... <laughs> that, that's, that's been the only Sunday... <laughs> I did that! Uh, I suddenly, why did it suddenly turn out to have to hide on a Sunday <laughs> when they're coming round? Because they wouldn't, they wouldn't leave. They wouldn't leave... Who was the it? Were they adults? It was a, yeah, sort of a... Well, he seemed like an adult to me at the time, but he was probably about 27. Like well, that, that is an adult. Yeah, but, do you know what I mean, he seemed a lot older when I was a kid. Yeah. And he came knocking and that, and he used to say to me, Mum, I'll just tell him I'm ill or something. And, uh, he used to hang around to see if, I, if I'd eventually come out to play and that. And if I did, I think they would have grabbed me and, and took me there. I love the idea that you want, that for you religion has to bring with it some kind of gift. It's like, you know, join our faith and you get an alarm clock radio. It's but, like something but like but I think religion, But I think religion does bring a gift. Usually, it's well, the, the gift of the Lord. W well, the gift of everlasting life, isn't yeah. it? And that's the problem with it, you know. A lot of people believe in it because they think. But the, with, for Carl, I'll be all right. he's f his feeling is like that should be a given. That's safe. I'm definitely going home with eternal life. But yeah. what else can I have? Is there well, an do iPod? You have to have it? a religion because I, obviously I don't have a religion. I don't miss it, and I wouldn't want one. I'm an atheist, and that, that's out of that's out of belief. That's out of logic, and we don't get into the the politics or the yeah. the morality of it. Why do you, Why do you feel you need a religion? Why don't you just get a hobby? Well, I, I didn't want one. I don't want one. I just was saying that, you know, if I was to get one, which one would I go for? <laughs> is what I'm saying. Mm. I'd like I mean? to see you, perhaps as a Jew. I think it, it, Ju Judaism would suit you well, I think. What are the hours like for that? Tough. It can be tricky. That's what I mean. I don't want anything <laughs> that's, you know... And they, they have a day where they don't eat and stuff. I couldn't be doing that. <laughs> so... Then they have days when they eat a lot too much. Yeah, but what happens if I'm not that hungry that day? <laughs> like I say, I don't like change. No. I mean, I like my Cheerios in the morning. <laughs> I don't, I don't. Well, we, we, we're not gonna do, uh, Freak of the Week here. Okay. Right? Because we've, we've done quite a bit of that in the last 20 minutes. We've right? so we'll on Freaks, you think? Yeah. Sure. We'll just shift it a little bit. Okay. Uh, I don't, like I keep saying, don't want people to be thinking we're sort of taking the mick out of anyone. <laughs> no. Right? Because we're not about that. I feel that, like I can do a little bit of it because I work with, with you, Steve. Yeah. Right? <laughs> sure. It, it gives yeah. me that right. It's like a care worker. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> well, it's like, it's like that thing of, you can't be homophobic because I've got a couple of gay mates and sure, stuff. Sure, sure. It, I think it sort of gives me that edge. Yeah. Right? So- So you're not freakophobic because you work with Steve? No, that's right, yeah. So, yeah. uh, yeah. Okay, well, well, they, think... they, by, by, by that token, I should be able to sort of slag off, you know, the mentally ill. Well, yeah. At least mentally handicapped. Hello, uh, ladies and gentlemen, XFM 104.9, I'm Ricky Gervais, obviously, Steve Mitchell. No, come on, let's get my name right from now on. That, that novelty's worn off. What is it? Is it- Steve Merchant. Oh, yeah, they- yeah. that's the wrong one, isn't it, Mitchell? The Guardian got it wrong, it's Steve Merchant. And the more I say Mitchell, the more people are thinking- Exactly, it might be Mitchell. It might be Mitchell. Oh, God, sorry, Dave. Um, <laughs> but Carl wanted to start off with the Stereophonics. Oh, loser. Cause it was a newer track. And Carl now, we've made him what he is. He was nothing when Nobody. we found him. He's right? like work experience. And now he's going, oh, we should start off with the story phones. I'm going, Trying oh, to tell you what to do, If right? I want anyone's opinion, I don't. <laughs> Basically. But he'd probably come to me, I imagine, would you? <laughs> before, I'd be the first person. Before Carl, yeah. I'd consult you, Steve. Thank so you. So, just keep it, just cause he uh, was in a, was it, pill yeah, he's making mobile music. Distro, it? I cannot wait. I'm looking forward to this. I mean, I literally can't wait. Should we do it now? Well, I'm tempted to save it cause I just want to mention to people, um, that, uh, they should be very excited. Because, uh, it's gonna be Carl's special night tomorrow. You excited, Carl? Oh, yeah. Oh, this is, yeah, um, uh, me and Steve, because we were nominated, we get a guest. For the Battle uh, Awards. Um, and it's, uh, it doesn't say guest, it actually says, um, you know, uh, partner. So I'm taking, um, my partner. And, uh, Steve's taking Carl. Yeah. But what Carl doesn't realise is, 
Uh, you will have to pretend you're his partner, otherwise you yeah. wouldn't be able to- Yeah, we'll have to hold says, hands when we the red carpet. Is this your- is this really your partner? It's not just a guest. They have That's to- That's how it is. And either we go in like that or we can't get in. You have to- you just have to be with him when you go up there. I mean, you have to- uh, d does yeah, he have to hold- You should- we should hold hands. But I think what we should do is just to make sure that there's nothing at all that, like, is gonna go wrong, we should just do a little kiss. Just like- and just or, when we get or, in front or be of seen sort of like cheek to cheek, just to show them that, yeah. you know, you're not- he's, he's Like not Elton just John his, and David He's not just getting his mates in for a free meal. You are actually partners. No, I'm not- I'm not for that. Why not? Well- Because we know we're not actually gay. No, but- but yeah, but so you- So it's not a problem. You've come out of it looking quite good because you've got a good looking fella. <laughs> but I'm- I'm meant to look like, you know, I mean, I'm not gay, but if I was, I don't think I'd go for your thing. Oh, he's done you, Steve! It's turned on you again! I cannot believe- We were trying to get in- Wait a minute, 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 wait a minute. I have got the cream of London's totty. <laughs> Phoning me up, trying to get an invite to the BAFTAs, yeah. right? We have very graciously asked you if you would like to come along. Well, that yeah. worries me even more. That you've got women calling you up. <laughs> <laughs> Carl. Carl, I can't choose between them. If I let one of them down, I'm gonna- they're gonna destroy yeah. them. Is they, yeah. they'll, they'll be- they'll be ruined, their yeah. lives will be ruined. It's better to, for me to take you and not, you know, ruin the lives of any of those poor when, women. When- when he told them he was taking yeah. you, it was like a scene from Graceland. So there was just like- There women, was weeping. They were crying. Like- It was horrible. Hundreds of them. And really? he just went- and I got he, upset. He just had to say, look, just chill out, bitches, didn't you? I did. I just said, you know, you're all my hoes, but yeah. I can't choose between you. So I'm taking Carl. So I'm taking Carl. You know he gets- he could get you a discount frocks. No, I had a letter from the people that there's a- No, no, it's good. no listen, Carl, there's an organisation that sponsors the BAFTA Awards yeah. in terms of clothes and fashion. They sent me a letter, they said your partner, they've not specified the sex, they've said your partner can come along and yeah. choose an outfit. Now I suspect- by the look of it, it is a woman's outfitters. I'm thinking we could get you a lovely trouser suit. Well, you have a it may look suit, feminine, right? But I think people will be fooled. It'd just, be, it just be a little bit roomy in the hip and that probably now think... on the shoulders. But you're a bit skinny. Why didn't you take it? Because it's a lot of an insult. And maybe just some pearls as well. <laughs> be lovely. Wouldn't you? Wouldn't well, you? Uh... I haven't got anything sorted to wear yet. See, you're slagging me off. You're likely to end up going in a tracksuit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Last week, like I just asked, last week, um, on the show we were, uh, talking about the gift that you'd arranged to, uh, for your girlfriend. Uh, now, how, lo how long have you been going out with her again? Um, I think it's about eleven years. Eleven years, uh, your life partner, he got, a uh, um, a gift when he left, um, his old job of a camera. He didn't even unwrap it, he just passed it on straight away, like, passed the parcel to his girlfriend. We were giving him some stick. Um, everyone, about ninety percent of people phoned and saying, you are a skin flint, it's awful. Yeah. How did- how did it go down? She loved it. Did you tell her? Did she, did she love it? Yeah, she, I, I think she liked it. Okay. Yeah. I mean, she she didn't really have a go on it. I was playing about with it on Christmas Day. She Brilliant. Showing her how I use it and that, and said, yeah. you know, she's she's paid for a holiday for us to go away. I said, take it on that, use it. She's loving it. Did you tell her before you gave it to her that you'd got it as a as a leaving gift for your previous job? Yeah, just before. I mean, I wasn't going to, but because of last Saturday, you sort of put a bit of pressure on sure. and stuff, and <laughs> I went off and bought her a watch. Nice. Could have thought a little extra. One of those ones with a little present. calculator on from a, uh, a Texaco. No, it's all right. It's like a little square Art Deco. The fella said it. Was. It is nice. I've seen it. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So nice. so how did you tell her when you when you came in with the big news? What that, about what, the that camera? You hadn't bought the gift. I just sort of said, "Oh, you said you wanted a camera, didn't you?" And here's one I got from work. <laughs> anyway, here's another one. <laughs> right. So I just sort of told Fudged her, it. but moved on. Quick. Brilliant. Yeah. And also, um, you Fine. you gave us the uh, devastating news last week that just before Christmas, your mum's budgie died. How was Christmas in your household? Was it? Um, little bit down. Little bit down, you know, with- with any death it's always sad, isn't it, no matter what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Particularly um, budgie. Well, I mean, how long she had it? Uh, probably lasts about eight years or something, which is pretty good, isn't it, for a budgie. Right. Yeah, I think so. Um, came unexpected, wasn't ill. Um, <laughs> right. And, uh, what she- what- I spoke to her the other day and I said, you know, how's it going? Cause on Christmas day she was down. Yeah. Been calling her off every day. And I spoke to her the other day and said, you know, how are things? And she said, uh, she said, well, the other bird that's in the cage, she's got a uh, some sort of parrot that's in the same cage as it. Right. It's been a bit down. Sure. It's missing its mate. So what she did, she kept a few feathers from the budgie that died, right? right? She got a rock, a couple of, uh, sandwich fasteners, <laughs> stuck the feathers on the rock. The other bird's happy now. Wow. Now I know that your mother explains everything. And if you ever die, we just get a tennis ball, stick it on the end of a broom, she'll be happy. And the good one, Ozzy Osbourne. I mean, the <laughs> ir sorry, but let's go back there. The irony is that that is art. That he, he, he was an artist, wasn't he? 
So. But you, you don't, okay, so you don't like Oscar Wilde, but you prefer <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne. <laughs> so yeah, go on. Ozzy Osbourne, crack him on this. Funny and educational. <laughs> I bit her head off a bat the other night. It was like eating a crunchy wrapped in a chamois leather. <laughs> Genius. <laughs> 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 oh, oh no. you're right. You're right, Carl. Yeah. I went out with Carl on Thursday night. Right. Right. It was one of the most enjoyable nights. I, 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 we just, I like went out for about what five or six pints, a little crawl, and adventures happened around Carl. Yeah. And just me sitting talking to him was just incredible. I'm thinking that a competition would be win a pint with Carl. Yes. Just, you know, be they hell just of a have gift. to go for a pint and they can ask him anything they want. Yeah. He's just, <laughs> he's just great. Look at him looking at us. What's the matter with you? It's just that before you were like, no, this is good for you. But what? now it's turned into a game. <laughs> <laughs> at your yeah. expense. Yeah. Have you only just, is that only just dawned on you? <laughs> Carl, well, I'm joking. But Steve, right, do you remember that story about th ooh, three or four years ago where there was some bloke in the army? He went away to somewhere, Vietnam or whatever. He was messing about in the woods. Um. Messing <laughs> about in the woods? Shouldn't he have been fighting? <laughs> whatever. Yeah. Right, and he, w he walked through some lake and I think he'd cut his toe or something <laughs> on, on something and some worm of some sort crawled in the, in the gash. Yeah. And um, it, it was in his body and the doctor said, we've got to get this out of your body. So what they did was, they said, right, the, the thinnest part or something of your body that things can crawl through is on the top of your head. So they wrap some Where the bacon. skull is. So they wrapped some bacon. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't! They did. Ah! That's all that right. Thing. So Everyone... he's gone in by the toe. Uh, so what we do is, I'll tell you what, that worm's probably heading straight for the head. We put a bit of bacon on it. The thinnest part of the body is the, the, the skull. Of course it's not the thinnest part of the body. It's the, where your brain case is, isn't it? It's the hard- the skull. There was- there was a reason for it. And it was like they, they, um, stuck some bacon on his head and- As ever, the vital piece of information, uh, <laughs> i.e. the reason, Carl seems to have forgotten. It, because the worm was in, in his body and they said every- you know, everyone likes the smell of bacon. Including even a worm. worm. Again. Even, a, even a Vietnamese lake worm. They, <laughs> they, 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 oh, they remember love remember bacon. Last week, remember last Strokes. Hard to explain. Like Carl, really? Yes. <laughs> Yes. So, Carl, concentrate. Here you go on. So, we'll, um, we'll, we'll leave the worm with the bacon wrapped round the head, shall we? Well, if you're ever caught in the jungle... Yeah. Always carry some... Bit of Danish. <laughs> <laughs> there must be one of them where you did fall on your head. This is the one I'm waiting for. There's gotta be one. That was explained so much. Yeah. I nearly did. Nearly broke me back. Jeez. Once. My dad said I better can't kick me out. And I said I better can. And, uh... I, <laughs> I don't remember this. You didn't tell me this one. You, you no, I better can what? I was in the garden, summer's day, and it was that era when, like, doing kung fu and all that was really popular. Sure. And I was, like, messing about in the garden, punching the tree and stuff. <laughs> and my dad said- <laughs> What a kid he must have been! My dad said, I bet you can't kick your height. Kick your height? Well, yeah. you mean kick as high as yourself? Yeah, so I must have been, like, five foot or something yeah. then. And, uh, I said, of course I can. So I bet you can't. But instead of doing it on the grass, I did it on, like, the, the concrete bit. <sighs> Kicked it. Actually did it. I went, there you go! But then, like, Get me foot down quick enough and land oh, on you, your back. Oh, you pause to, pause to say there I've done it. <laughs> yeah. As opposed to putting your foot back on the ground. And, uh, landed on my back and I, I, I'd still get back trouble now. Do you? Cause he's- Carl, <laughs> Carl, always check your balls. <laughs> Do you I check yours? Like the feel. Why don't you like the feel of your own balls? They just, I mean, you know that I don't like bodies anyway. Right. Do you know what I mean? It worries me a bit that you've got all that going on in your body, right, and your skin's keeping it all in place. <laughs> right. <laughs> Because it, it, it is going to get bad as well, isn't it? They're saying that the water's melting or whatever. The water's melting, the, yeah. The ice is melting. Yeah. And, and there's going to the be more water and less land, so in yeah. the future it's probably going to be the way we're going to be living, isn't it? Have you seen that film Waterworld? Nah, I don't fancy it. Because yeah, that, 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 that sort of predicts that, yeah. What, are they saying that the ice thing exactly. is melting? Exactly, yeah. But at the same time, um, I was thinking about this a couple of weeks ago. <laughs> if you get, I mean, I think I read that like a big chunk of ice uh, fell off one of the ice, uh, what do you call them? Caps. Ice caps. Something like, the th I think they said it's the size of the Empire State Building or something. Right. It, it snapped off and went into the water and it's melted. And they said, oh, it's bad news, you know, that, that something that size is melting. But the way I look at it, if something that size falls into the water, it's like a big ice cube and it's gonna freeze it up again. 
You, you with me? No. Not really, Carl. Go on. Right, you get a giant ice cube yeah. the size of the Empire State Building, yeah. stick it in the water, yeah. it's gonna make- uh, that- it's gonna stick back on again, isn't it? Well, no, stick uh, only on if again. it freezes up again. Yeah, well, it, it will gonna freeze up. The water's well, gonna get cold again, cos you've just put a giant ice cube in the water. Well, so when you put- <laughs> when you put an ice cube in a drink, the drink doesn't freeze, does it? No, the ice it's not. If you put one the size of an Empire State Building in your glass of Jack Daniels, <laughs> it's gonna make it freezing. <laughs> It's not going in a glass of Jack Daniels, it's going in the ocean. I know, but I'm- that, you see that I'm using me fables. Imagine a world- <laughs> Use your brain instead! Imagine the world, <laughs> imagine the sea, yeah. like the Arctic or whatever, as yeah. a glass of Jack Daniels. Okay. A big ice cube falls into it. Yeah. It freezes, it melts back on again. So it's- we're all right, I don't know why everyone's <laughs> worrying. Oh, guys, God, thank God for that, I was getting panicked. Oh, fine. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, no, you're right. Yeah, that will happen. Alright. This is Yak. Hope you're enjoying this compilation. This is David Bowie Starman. Halfway point of the compilation. Enjoy the second half. Cheers. So good Christmases, yeah, all round. Definitely for me. I had a great time, yeah. Carl? Uh sorry. <laughs> how does <laughs> nothing, it, how does it rate with to. um uh what did Suzanne get you? Um, she got me, uh, you see, you, you were having a go at me about giving her, uh, a camera, right? Which, you which know, was I given to use. you, which was second hand. Essentially second hand. It doesn't really matter that bit. But it's a present that both of us could use, right? Mm. And you were making me feel bad about that. That's why I got her a watch. Yeah. Right? Which in a way I can use because I can say what time is it. Sure. Right? <laughs> but. <laughs> Chico time, innit? But the thing is, right, she got what me a, uh. No. <laughs> she got me a, uh, a little printer. Oh, yeah, that's good, yeah. Well, what, yeah. you mean a little fella who works in a print shop? <laughs> Just a little printer to go with a computer and that. But for me, again, that's a present that, you know, we can all be using. You are so ungrateful. It's not that, it's just that, you know, when- it's good when you're a kid, isn't it? When you- Christmas is all about, like, your presents. What do you want when you're a kid? What's your best present you ever had? Um, there's a few things. I mean, one that- one that I always remember one Christmas, right? Uh, it was the year when computers first came out. Right. right. And there was one called the Sinclair Spectrum that I wanted, right? What- what year are we talking, 80 f- Must be oh. 80, 83, 84, right, yeah. yeah. And uh, anyway, I- th I think my mum and dad's got me one. It's, you know, it's under the tree in a big box, I'm thinking, yeah, that's about right. Yeah. About the size of a computer, brilliant. Anyway, Christmas Day comes, uh, you know, I couldn't sleep and all that, excited like you are as a kid. Yeah. Get up, open it, it's not the one I wanted. Right. Really? It's not the Spectrum, it was a ZX81. Okay. Right? So I thought, well, I've, I best not show that I'm disappointed in that. You know, even even as a kid you have, sort of, you know, that thing of- You lost that, now you say, oh, it's not what I wanted, Suzanne, but go yeah, on. Yeah, yeah, but, but, you know, so, uh, so I sort of, you know, pretended I liked it and that. I thought, oh, just play some games on it, I'll just get on with it, right? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I try and load sure. Even as yeah, a kid, he had the way of the world. world. I know. His parents have saved up for it. He's look at his frown lines. Look, he's frowned since he was about four. Yeah. Look right. at those lines. Right. So, yeah, but this is why. You'll understand in a minute when I tell you the end of this story. Go on. So, I load up a computer game which t used to take about ten minutes. Right? Was it on cassette? On cassette. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it cassette. sounds like a fax machine, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Right. Anyway, it wouldn't load. I was thinking, what's up with this? Is it broke? Right. And I kept trying it. And my dad sort of- he, he, my mum used to get up early to open the presents with me. My dad got up at about midday, he couldn't be bothered. Right? <laughs> anyway, he comes this down and I'm so stuffed, telling. This I is know, just, the picture uh, he paints is I so know, heartbreaking. Is that Alan Bennett or something? Yeah. Uh, uh, Dickens? Yeah, right? or some uh, of those kind of 60s back, like Kathy Come Home, sort of, <laughs> yeah, you know, really <laughs> insane <laughs> dramas. So, so anyway, so I'm there, right, get frown growing and that. Yeah. <laughs> Trying try to read this book, thinking, why isn't it working? So my dad has a look, <laughs> and he goes, oh, you're missing a bit. I said, what? He goes, you need a RAM pack, right? right? Which is a bit that you put in the back of it that gives it extra memory. Yeah. So I'm like, what do you need? You need one of them. <laughs> I'm like, what, what do you mean? It's, it's Christmas Day, right? And, and we're talking about the days when, like, Tandy wasn't open. Sure. It wasn't open for days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Tandy. Do you know what I mean? It's like now, by lunchtime, Christmas Day, everything's open again. <laughs> yeah, right? sure, yeah. Then you had to wait about two weeks. <laughs> Everyone, like, had a big holiday and everything. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, God. Oh, oh. I actually started to be sick, right, with frustration. <laughs> oh no! What? Well, How actually, you? physically How you? sick. Do you know what? Like, How are you? Well, like I say, I, I don't know. It must have been about eight or something. Oh! But that thing of like, what? Well, it's Christmas Day. And I can't play with it. And I had to wait for like two weeks, what have you? Sat over the kitchen sink, sort of going, <laughs> <laughs> stress, stressing out. 
<laughs> hated it. It was a rubbish Christmas. <laughs> wow. I love the idea of you going, <laughs> stress, isn't it? What did your dad say? He just sort of said, look, calm down, we'll get you one when the shop's open. And I was like, yeah, but it's two weeks, and it. <laughs> I have never heard anyone being. Carl, what have been some of the big news stories that have hit you this year? Oh, this is gonna be good. <laughs> well, I, I, I don't really watch the oh. news, do it? It gets me down a bit. Sure. Sometimes, you know, you're better off not knowing. I sometimes wonder about, you know, the way we've got satellites and stuff, and you know what's going on on the other side of the world. Should we know? <laughs> you know what I mean? Is it, is it, does it do us any good? Right. Knowing stuff? So, I mean, the, you've that mentioned- That is brilliant, coming from Carl. Yeah. I mean, that's an amazing quote, isn't it? I mean, it's not, we will fight them on the beaches, but, um, does it do you any good knowing stuff? <laughs> it's pretty much what sums you up. I thought your New Year's resolution was to learn one thing a no, day. No, all I'm saying is, normally, when you see people who are brainy, they mm. never look like they, they're that happy. Like who? Einstein, Hawking. They're, they all look what? a bit, like, fed up and that. They've well, got loads of knowledge. let's leave Hawking aside w with the way he looks, please. Look you're Einstein. such an idiot, Carl. You're look such an idiot. Look at Einstein, then. Well, yeah, let's, d yeah. Then look at me. I'm happy. Right? You have no reason to be, though. Anyway, And look. Einstein was happy. Oh. He was gallivanting around, he was having a laugh, he was going to parties, he was hanging out with Marilyn Monroe, he was loving it, he was inventing nuclear weapons, he was having a whale of a it was time. time. Anyway, all I'm saying He is was, you know, he, hanging out with, um, what's his name, McFly. Right. It was brilliant. So, normally I just pick up on the stories that sort of make me go, oh, that's quite interesting. Yeah. Right. Uh, two that stuck out for me in 2005. Um, blind people. Not always using dogs now. They've got horses. Well, that's ridiculous. That's not about? true. What are it, you talking about? It is true. What do you mean? They're trying it out. Um, people, you know, they've got guide dogs and that. Yes. Uh, they sort of saying, "Why stop there?" They give. Well, do you know why? You because can't get a horse dog, in the library. Exactly. What? Because dogs can go into Tesco's with you and go round to visit your auntie and sit at your feet. What do you do with a horse? No, well, it just cuts out the middleman. That, that if the horse knows where it's going. Person gets on the back, off it goes. Oh, don't talk rubbish. Where True did you story. read this? Where did you read this? I've yeah, got, I've got it printed off. I can show it to oh, you. Oh, so it's the back. internet. Of course, it was the internet. Yeah. I yeah. mean, when will you learn? But why is that such a mad idea? Because you haven't got the whole idea. I bet it is something. I bet there's a grain of truth to it, right? But there's no way that they're going to be used like guide dogs. I mean, just think. I'll look at the news story during the next song, and we'll we'll we'll. Get what to else? The of it. What else? Well, there must be another news story that's got that. Yeah, there's another one. Go on. Uh, chickens and that. Go on. Um, a fella had a problem with a chicken, wasn't laying enough eggs and that. He got an axe, put it next to its little house that he was living in, panicked it a bit, laid loads of eggs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, is that a major news story? No, it's, it's not major, but it's interesting, isn't it? What? what? Well, Frightening just... a chicken into laying an egg? Yeah. And they're, so, they're sort of the two things that- That's the only two news stories that's of the amazing. year that caught your attention. I mean, that's about plus monkey news, obviously, every week, you- well, you keep up to date with monkey but news. But what do you think about when, when you hear about that chicken? What, what? I don't think anything of it because it came from you, so you probably got something wrong. Or it was a little fluff piece in a tabloid that just someone, they, they had a slow news day that day. They're, they're, you know, there no, was- Rick, am I right in saying that Carl himself made the news this year? Because wasn't it right that, um, a friend of your girlfriend's had read about him, apparently you were slagging oh, off yeah. Cornwall somewhere? Yeah, my, uh, my uh, girlfriend's used to live in Cornwall and you were the front, uh, sort of story on, um, something like the Western something or other edition, slagging off Cornwall. What are you on about? What have you no, been up to? What have you said? What have you said about Cornwall? I haven't said anything. I like Cornwall. Yeah, but well, you must have said something or they wouldn't have a- they mentioned Carl Pilkington. You've been slagging off, apparently. I love Cornwall. I love going there. Um, what have you- have you ever said anything about it negatively? What was that thing- oh, didn't you slag someone off at uh, Mevagissi? You went into a pub in Mevagissi? Yeah, and he was airy. That was that- that's that one fella. There was a- a <laughs> sort of- I, w I went in there and they're really friendly and everything in Cornwall. Yeah. And if you're listening like Don't that. Don't creep. No, but I like it. I, if I yeah. wanted to retire on that early, that's where I'd go and live. I wouldn't now. But I went there, right, in this little place called Mo Mervagissi, and went into a pub, and the woman behind the bar was all friendly and going, uh, it was around Christmas time, and she said, oh, what we normally do is like have a uh, fancy dress and stuff. She said, yeah, I'll show you some pictures, right? And she was going through, and there was a picture of someone there, and I said, God, what, you know, what's he come as? Look at him, he's well airy. And she said, oh, he, he just works behind the bar, he wasn't dressed as anything. <laughs> and he came out round the corner, airy fella. <laughs> <laughs> but, but there's no way that made the paper. <laughs> Have you said anything else negative about it? When was no, the last time you were in Cornwall? It was- we, we- we took someone for a wedding present, we took someone on holiday there. Yeah. A week. Um, 
who was a fella on the beach who, um, he worked in one of them huts, you know, how they sell deck chairs and stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I think that's a pretty nice job, especially in the summer, isn't it? The sun's out, you sat there, all you've got to do is talk to people, say, what do you want, two deck chairs, there you go, no problem, see you later. But this fella, right, I kept, uh, I, I went in there, I uh, got the chairs, took them back, he was being really moody, he said, uh, uh, so you got a lot of sand on him. <laughs> I said, well, there's loads of it out there. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a surprise that he's stuck on- and, and he had a bit of a moan at me. And I, I don't know if I've ever mentioned that, sort of- Well, maybe openly. he recognised you. But- but uh, that isn't a diss, that's- that's one person, isn't it? If you're yeah. from Cornwall and you've got any reason to but dislike Carl- But there's not many people live in Cornwall, it's a very small community. I mean, no wonder they don't want to be part of us, with people like you slagging them off. I love Cornwall, I've got nothing So do really I, I think it's, Cornwall's beautiful. Mm. You're an idiot. Uh -huh. Don't- 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 anyone in Cornwall do not judge- the rest of the nation by Carl Pilkington, it's not fair. I sometimes wonder if- imagine if he's the one that archaeologists dig up in a million years time- yeah. and find some of his notes, and they- they, <laughs> yeah. they measure the head, and everything, and then some of the ramblings that he did, do you know Or what if I mean? an alien comes down, it would just be him that they'd bump into- That it? would be uh, just our luck, wouldn't I it? I tell you what though, talking of like, education and that, Go I know on. I'm not- I know I'm sort of not the bright, brightest bloke knocking about on that, right? But I treat myself the other day to a new, um, mobile, right? right? And, uh, you know, going through it, getting used to it, getting used to how to send text and all that. And do you know the predictive text? Yeah. So if you send a text, yeah. you type it in, yeah. and that sort of guesses what you're gonna write yeah. out, yeah. Yeah. right? And it's new, so it doesn't really know me yet, <laughs> right? And I was sending a text to someone to say something like, I ain't got a clue or something, right? Row ain't, right, A-I-N-T, looked up to, at the screen to make sure that he'd written it right, that had written up biotechnology. <laughs> what? What? That, that had predicted that I was going to use the word biotechnology. <laughs> I am never going to use that word. <laughs> ever. <laughs> what? Well, I ain't got a clue. No, ain't. A I N T. Yeah. I wrote that just A I N T on the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Locked that, up. I love the fact that you've got a cleverer phone than you. Well, I, I mean, I don't know whether we need to cheapen the show by discussing it, but. I asked for a particular track, uh, Carl is the producer, and he failed to get it for me. He's failed to get it for me. He's failed to bring it up from the record library. Completely failed in his mission. He needed to get two records and he failed to get one of them. A 50% error rate there. Yeah, but like I said, I looked in the system, he told me what album it's on, I brought that album up. I'm busy. But, okay, so fine. Fine, you're absolutely fine then, that's no problem. You know, it, once again, it, that's, a, that's a great excuse, Carl, brilliant. The show has been ruined, it's been partially ruined, but you've got a bit of an excuse. All right. I didn't make a big deal out of it when mm. you said, oh, and whilst you're down there, get us a new 50 cent single. I never, I never said, while you're down there, get the new 50 cent single. I asked you if 50 cent single was lying around. Yeah. If, it, if it hadn't been here, I wouldn't have worried. So I get it, yeah, I did that for you. Right. Then I come up, you say, has it got swearing in it? Well, right. I don't know, it's five to one, Steve. You're the producer! I've been you're the around. producer, it's the brand new single, I thought it had been lying around in the XFM office anyway. But I don't, I don't have time to sit around listening to music. Sure, well, yeah. Right? I know that you have, now you've got an iPod that can hold 7,500 songs, I don't know when you're gonna get round to loading all them on, but I haven't got the time. Sure. Busy, busy. Yeah. Fine, right. okay, no, no, that's, that's a perfect excuse, Carl, well done, mate. Right. I just hope that I never have to depend on you in a real emergency. To a certain extent. I'm just thinking, if I was to meet Steve in a restaurant, Yeah. Right, I'd-, I'd, I'd Nothing I'd, untoward going on, we're just hanging out. We're no, just having a chat, just yeah, having sure. a normal night out. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Who's paying? Cause I mean, <laughs> is it expensive Go Dutch, go Dutch, go Dutch, <laughs> I mean. Right, so- I, I I say to you, I'll I'll see you at eight, right? In yeah. this in this restaurant, I turn up at the door. It's a bit of a posh place, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so he's uh, Steve Merchant in, yeah. And the waiter sort of goes, I I, I don't know, what does he look like, right? And uh, where's he from? Just a f little French fella. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And uh, what does he look like? So I'd, the th thing I'd pick up on first, tall, tall lad, tall, yeah. And then he goes, oh, well, you know, we got lots of tall people in, right? Yeah. And I go, big eyes? <laughs> big eyes? Yeah. And then he'd go, yeah, he's over there. I'll be honest with you. I mean, you can have dinner and you can buy me dinner. I'm not sure you're going to get anywhere with me. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, what he hasn't said is, well, um, he gets frustrated because we have to go from restaurant to restaurant for something I can eat. But the reason we've only got about three restaurants to choose from are that, because he doesn't want to spend more than a fiver at lunchtime. At lunchtime? Mm. If I was going out of an evening, you'd spend a decent amount of wallop. But mm. lunchtime, Would why you? am I spend- you'd be happy to spend twenty quid! On lunch! Imagine that every single day. 
There's no one out there who's eating lunch, 20 quid a day on lunch. It's crazy. You don't need that much food at lunchtime, because we- I know what happens. You go in there, you have some kind of, you know, tiger in curry for lunch, you're asleep by 1.30, we're trying to work, we're trying to write TV shows, and you're dozing off like one of those giant anacondas that's just eating a sheep, <laughs> and it's slowly digesting it. It takes like three weeks. He doesn't- he- Carl, he does not like the spare- he- he- he'll go- he'll walk a mile out of his way to get a sandwich for- Having an argument over that 50p that time. <laughs> I don't want to no, back up again, here's the situation, Carl. Go I on. lent you 50p, and you decided you weren't going to pay me back. It should be to my discretion if I say, "Don't worry about it, Carl." You should offer me the 50p. Go, there's that 50p I owe you, and I'll go. Don't worry about it, Carl. But you didn't even do that. Uh, it's the way that you were like. I said, "Where's my 50p?" You went, "Oh, you don't need that." That's not your decision I either. Didn't, I didn't say that. I said, I, I, "I don't think I've got it at the moment, or whatever." Rubbish. He's going through my pockets and that. Rubbish. 50p. Ridiculous. Mm. You've just given him a keg of beer for free, haven't you? Well, let's let's not go over it again. Right. So, so three girls there, yeah. charmed by me, they loved it. Yeah. Um, Zane Lowe, XFM mm. DJ and MTV presenter, probably one of the coolest blokes alive. He came yeah. up, gave us massive respect. <laughs> he said, I'm loving your set. He actually used those words, right? <laughs> there were people coming up, they couldn't believe their luck. It was yeah. roaring. We'd stick on a track, people yeah. would cheer as it came on, right? Yeah. My particular favourite, Carl, I think you'll agree, my particular triumvirate, NL Cool J, Mama Said Knock You Out, leading yeah. straight into House of Pain, Jump Around, then straight into that current Elvis track that's been re-released, remixed by Junkie XL, I played the original, which I'd already played on XFM before, I'm already there, cutting edge. Yeah. Right? Three, and, what, three old tracks, you mean? Three old tracks. In a row? Yep. And, yes. um, well, I think the words that would best sum it up are, <laughs> I kicked ass. Great, Rick. All right. Well, I'm going to be kicking some ass today because I'm, I'm going to be shamelessly self-indulgent, mm. and uh, we've only got two shows to go. So I'm playing some of the most beauteous tunes in the world. And I was just telling Carl, lined up a Simon and Garfunkel track, "Only Living Boy in New York." He went, "Why is he the only living boy in New York?" I went, "What?" He went, "What does that mean then?" I went, "I don't know." He went, well, "What's it about?" I said, "I, I don't I don't care." I said, "It's a lovely sound." No, but what's it? I said, "I don't go into that." Do it. I said, he went, I like, I like a story. I said, like, oh, I said, Killing of Georgie. No trickery. <laughs> killing of Georgie. I think oh. we should play that at the last- It's good. I heard it the other day on Radio 2. It's it was really. cracking. It yeah. sounds like, well. It's really good. Tell them what it's about again. It's about, um, a little girl, uh, gay fella. <laughs> a little what? A, a little gay fella? Yeah. Right. Who, um, I mean, I haven't heard it for a bit, so it's all off memory, this. But, yeah. um, yeah. gay bloke, uh, is he from Scotland? I have no idea. But he's from somewhere where gays aren't liked. Okay. Right? No, 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 no. No, well, he is. Georgie of. Boy was gay, I guess, nothing more than the kindest guy I ever knew, right? Now, all he, all he did was, right, his father said, how can my son not be straight? Kicked him out, right? Goes to America. Yeah, 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 but you can handle yeah. all that. You can handle your dad not getting on with you if other people around you are into the same scene. Yeah. But he, right. he was like, he was left on his own, he didn't know what to do. Yeah. He was getting stressed out. Yeah. So he goes. And he, this I was before, know. like this was before. I mean, this is what? When did this record come out? Seventy seven. Seventy seven. Yeah, something like that. Right, right, right. And um, he's doing punk. Right. Oh, yeah. I see. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so he, you know, the village people had come along and made gay cool. Yeah. That had already happened. Yeah. But it wasn't respected. But he was watching the telly or something, and he saw that New York had loads of them over there, and they're all having a good time. Sure. No, sorry. At no point in the song. Does Rod Stewart say little little gay Georgie was watching telly and saw loads of gays in New York? At no point in that song. No, but this is what I like about that song. You sort of picture what's going on. You make it up. Yeah. Okay. So so the little gay fella was watching telly and there was a there was a, presumably a, the uh, the and now from New York the gay show. Yeah. Or whatever, because it was a big scene over there, wasn't he, in the seventies? Yeah. Okay. Right. Go on. So he uh, he goes over there. And, uh, he's having a great time and that. He's meeting, Went to New York Town, meeting, very quickly settled down, soon became the toast of the Great White Way. Yeah, they loved him. All down. the old Queens blew a fuse. Yeah. Yeah. And then, I don't know, he was, he was out late one night. Yeah. And he, he's walking home. Yeah. And, uh, gets attacked, gets killed. Yeah. And he's lying in they the They didn't intend to take his life, they just pushed their, uh, like a little too far that night. Yeah, you see? So. Yeah. But what's good there? Is it, is it good that he had a bit of a good life? And w was able to be himself. Yeah. Or should he have stayed in Scotland? He didn't come from Scotland. Again, I, I really. Well, I think. Can, is there any way we can get this song before the end of the show and play it? Because I've I've heard it recently. A lot of people listening will have never heard this song. They won't have any can idea. Can I can about. I say what you said when we were talking about that song once before? Is it bad? It might it might be because we were talking about you know Georgie Boy getting and he you know got it. I don't know. What? It's when you said, well, 
No, it's a fact. I don't think if well, I... Well, he mean, said, so it's a fucking George, he gets out, he gets out, he dies, right? He goes, well, they do go out late. <laughs> I know. Few, gay people I go know out a few late. gay people and they start to party late on. That's yeah. why in Soho, right? Yeah. Girlfriend got in a cab, right? Suzanne was in a cab, and the cab driver was taking her to an early start, right? She works at the BBC. Yeah. Early start, four in the morning. It was going down. It was mental in so at four in the morning. Yeah. They were all still like start starting the night out. How yeah. do you know Where's, they? How do you know they're gay? It's so well, isn't it? Fair enough. Okay. Play a track. I love this to be able to try and this is, uh, Yeah, we will. This is uh, Simon and Garfunkel, the only living boy in New York. It's it's lovely. Only living boy in New York. Do you like that? It's got a nice feel to it. Simon and Garfunkel. Yeah. Lovely. Uh, what do you make of Olympic ski hero Alan Baxter testing positive for drugs? What did he do? Well, he won a gold medal in the Olympics, and for he what? he was a ski he was a skier, right? And he won gold medal, and uh, they've just tested him positive for uh, some kind of illegal drug. But what? I mean, if he did, why take drugs to ski? <laughs> Why? Because all you do yeah. is balance. But imagine it'd be amazing if you were stoned, like going down a hill. Yeah, it's not like you yeah, have it's to. Not, it's not going to help you. Is no, it? it's, it's just like... gravity that's doing all the work, isn't it? With skiing. Yeah, but it's often to do with your uh, <laughs> athleticism, isn't it? It's no, but it'd be like saying, and we've just found out the people on the toboggan were on crack. It's not. It's not going to help them. <laughs> yeah, exactly. My brother. My brother went into the army, right? Because um, because he couldn't get a normal job, and my dad said, you know, if you don't get a job by such a date, that's it, son. You're going in the army. And, um, oh. so when, when was the Falklands? Was it about eight? Eighty-one, right? And he joined back in like eighty-one or something. And uh, he, he, I don't know, he was an older shot or something. Oh yeah. And uh, he wrote back to me, mum, saying, uh, you know, a bad time to join, bad time in this. So she wrote. <laughs> what bad time to join? That's so sweet, Carl, isn't it? That's like, dear dad. Yeah, well done. Um, <laughs> don't know if you've noticed. Yeah. Uh, I was on the doll, that, that's for sure. Uh, thank you for joining uh, a month before the Belgrano. Anyway, uh, go on. my mum called up, spoke to the sergeant and said, can you leave him out of this one? Can you leave him out of this one? What, he, the Falkland War? He's only just joined and she called him Chuck, which he got done for. Like, she, she's one of them, it's, I think it's a northern thing, like saying, how are you, Chuck? Yeah. And she called the sergeant Chuck and he, he, he the sergeant said to her, like, my brother, uh, your mum, you know, she's called up and asked if you can not go, which, uh, of course, you know, I mean, it, it, we'll see how it goes. But can what? You tell what do you mean? It, what? No, he ended up being a mechanic in there and he got kicked out for um, going for a packet of fags in a tank. <laughs> <laughs> what? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. Do you mean he nipped down the shops yeah. in a tank? Yeah. I don't okay. believe that, Carl. You've Honest that to God. Up. That and he went off with the sergeant's wife. So that didn't help, and he ended up getting kicked out. Sorry, you. No, but me, Mrs. Matthews, me, me head teacher. Oh, sure. let's not lay into Matthews again. Oh, not getting not, not Matty Matthews, said, not I'd not never, Grimble Matty Matthews. I'd we used never to call be a high flyer. D d if she could see you now, that what did she say? She, you'll never be a high She's, flyer. She said that to me, mum and dad, on, really? on a parents' evening. <laughs> what did you, and that was after I'd played the drums in Little Donkey. <laughs> I clearly didn't know what she was talking about. Do you, would you... Carl, this is a quick question to you. Would you ever sort of find yourself in a situation where you might confuse a woman's breasts with mountains? <laughs> is that a concern for you, do you think? No. Not, not a problem for you? Well, not if they're, not if they're small and humble, I would. <laughs> That's what I'm hoping. That's what, fingers crossed. If they were small <laughs> and humble, then I'd, I'd pretty much not confuse them with mountains. Thank God, but I mean, if they were large and, and sort of pendulous... And with, like, like, quite rocky with snow on top... <laughs> exactly. Then I'd go, hold on, love. Wait a minute. Hold on, love. I was into this, but now exactly. it, it, I feel like I'm alone. Carl, do you know what we're talking about? Who's, who has who has done that? I'll Who's give you a clue. One more time. See, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. <laughs> Shakira. It's a it's lyric that taking the nation by with. storm. It's quite a nice song. It's got another. Uh, it's very much like. It sounds a bit like uh, Men at Work down under. Yeah, it's got the pan pipes. Is this uh, what's its kid? Who? Um. Julio Inglesius. No, it's Shakira. <laughs> Consequently, uh, the word Shakira there <laughs> being mentioned. I haven't heard of him. Okay. She's a big Latin star, apparently, big Latin American star. Uh. And uh, anyway, just sing it again for us. See, sí, my breasts are small and humble, so you don't confuse them with mountains. <laughs> Which is a concern, it was always a concern. Definitely. She, uh, she, the number of times she's woken up and there's been a fat bloke with a beard and a little, a little Sherpa, she goes, what are you doing? And they go, we're just 
trying oh. to climb this map. Look again! Oh, sorry, love. Oh, it's your tits. I didn't realise. Oh, tits. We thought we were in... I can't K2. believe it. I can't... What can we camp in? You can't camp on my tits for the night. No! Well, why are you climbing them? Well, I Because they were confused. there. Well, they're small and humble. Are you mental? Look <laughs> at <laughs> Carl. I love that look of Carl. Carl is looking back and forth. You know when, it, when you sort of... Uh, uh, you go t -t -t to a cat and it looks back and forth between two people? That's very much like Carl's looking at us now. Or when, like, a child sees a midget or something in the street. <laughs> They're just transfixed, aren't they? It's like, you know, accidents happen. Go when, on then. When things like that happen, right, you know, you've been told not to mention it. Yeah. And you're like a little kid. Yeah. And, and once things are in your head, yeah. it's difficult not to mention it. I mean, when, uh, when I was a kid, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. me, uh, <laughs> my mum's sister, Hazel, right. was, was seeing another bloke. Um, it's weird, because she's a lesbian now. That's really weird. <laughs> that must have been an interesting Christmas. But anyway, <laughs> but anyway, she's seen this bloke and he looked like Ken Dodd, apparently. He right? looked like Ken Dodd. He looked like Ken Dodd. So people said, "Don't mention it because it gets it gets on his nerves when you when you like meet him and you go, oh god, you look like Ken Dodd." So I said, "All right, his name is Will or whatever." And uh, I was introduced to him. First thing I said, "Nice to meet you, Ken." <laughs> <laughs> people are dying all the time. Um, you know, there's only so many places you can die. So I suppose it's going to happen now and again, isn't it? Anyway, how's it going? Uh, lockdown's still sort of on, isn't it? When you can nip out. A bit of a wonder, but it's not normal yet, is it? So that's why I thought I'd still play you a couple of tunes. And have a quick chat. Not doing Rockbusters today. Um, having a break from that. But uh, I've been getting a lot of messages on Facebook. Suddenly got like a load of messages coming in at the same time about one topic, and when that happens, you sort of go, "This, this, this is it." Like Richard Branson, that's what he says. He says he gets loads of posts, loads of phone calls, and he hasn't got time to go through them all, so he waits until the message gets to him or something. It's like if it's important, you'll eventually find out. Anyway, I can't, I can't look at every message you get on Facebook. But suddenly, there was the same message from loads of different people. So I thought, right, this this must be important. What is it? And I clicked on it, and it was a bit of monkey news. Um, I don't know if you've seen it. I'll play it here so you can see it. It's this. This little monkey comes round the corner on a motorbike. He grabs the kid, runs off. And everybody was like going, this is terrible. What is going on? There's a monkey kidnapping a kid. But I don't know if I can turn the audio up so you can hear it. But if you hear it when it first comes round the corner, to me that sounds like a siren. And I'm wondering, I don't know where this is, it's sort of Asia or something like that. I'm wondering if this is how they're dealing with the lockdown. Like I say, if you play it back from the beginning, right? You're hearing a siren there. That bike's got some sort of siren on it, like... And that bike is a proper little motorbike, that. A monkey-sized motorbike. So I'm wondering whether in Asia, to deal with the amount of people ignoring lockdown, they've got monkeys doing the, doing the rounds and making sure people stay in. And I think that's what's gone on here. He's come tearing around that corner there, down this alleyway, and he's found this family who should be at home, should be behind doors, and they're not, they're fanning about in an alleyway. And the way he's, ang I mean, the, the way he comes tearing down, it's like he's caught these before. He's annoyed with them, he's livid. I mean, he's, he's probably gone for the kid, because he knows that if he texts the kid, the adults will follow. Um, the way he just, like, gets off his bike again, like, how many times have I told you? I mean, a little motorbike's a, a, a giveaway. That's a monkey-sized moped that, that it's been issued with. Little monkey law enforcers. I suppose it's good because you're not going to argue with it because it can't speak English or wherever this is. So it's just going to go in and try and do the job, shift the people. And I think that's what's uh, I think that's, that's what's gone on here. Um, but you see, I see things like that and I think, hang on, is that starting to creep in here as well? Because all this talk about loads of PPE kit, it's like they, they've got loads of it now. There's like a mask, a face mask, a thing they wear on their head, a thing all over the body. And it makes you wonder... If uh, in our hospitals we've got little, you know, little monkeys walking about the wards helping out, and you've no idea because they've got that much PPE on, 
you, you can't see the little chimp sat under there. Do you know what I mean? But, I mean, help's help. And uh, I suppose, uh, you know, when times are bad, everyone's got to, um, everyone's got a chimp in, you could say. Anyway, monkey news. There you go. Okay, Carl. This is a, 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 a logical um, a, a conundrum. Um, to a certain extent, there's a little bit of lateral thinking because, uh, but there is only one right answer. Um, now, the pressure here isn't to get this right because I don't know anyone who's ever got this right. The pressure is, one, are, are asking sensible questions, okay. and when I've told you the answer, to then understand it because I've still, when I've explained this to people, I've laid out for them, they still can't quite get the concept. Um, okay, so there's two doors, Carl. Yeah. One leads to heaven. Right. One leads to hell. Yeah. Okay, they're identical. You can't tell them apart. Okay, fifty-fifty. Right. Obviously, you want to go to heaven, I assume. Right. Okay. There's two guards, identical guards, guarding each door. Okay. Right. The one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. You have to ask one question to find out which which is which, and then go through the door you want. What question do you ask? I've only got one. Yeah. And what? One to to both? No. One to either of them. You don't know which one's which, though. So what question do you ask? Why can't I ask, like, both of them one? Because it's because not the, the rules. Because the rules are you can only ask one. There aren't actually two doors labelled heaven and hell, Carl. That's it's a leap of imagination here. And I've, I've, I've definitely got to answer, I've got to ask them a question, I can't just sort of have a feel of the door to see <laughs> if there's any heat or anything. <laughs> <laughs> they're identical. You stand a few yards away, you cannot tell from the outside of these doors which is which, they're identical, the guards are identical, but the one guarding hell always tells a lie, and the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. What question do you ask? I can't look through the keyhole or anything. There's no keyhole. near them. Um, Let's imagine there's a small rope that prevents you from getting anywhere near, rather like outside a nightclub. Yeah. What do you ask? What do you ask? What question do you ask? Come on, you've only got one. Quick, this is it. So, they stood there. Yeah. They both look the same. They're both smiling. Yeah. But one of them's not really smiling, really. He's trying to make me make a mistake, isn't he? Well, he's just gonna lie when you ask him a question, if you ask him. So what's the point in asking a question? Do I know one of them's gonna lie? Yeah. Well, you want, the one guarding hell always tells a lie. The one guarding heaven always tells the truth. These, these things you know. But would they be neighbours like this? Would they be that <laughs> close? <laughs> Why? <have> I... <laughs> <sighs> I mean, we're not sure if these two guys get I'll on. I'll give I mean... you a clue. I'll give you a clue. They know who they are, and they know that the one guarding hell always tells a lie, and the one guarding heaven always tells the truth. So I know that. No, they know it as well. It doesn't really come down to this, Carl. This isn't what's going to happen when you die. But when is this useful then? Because it's a logic. Well, I'll tell you the answer. No, 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 I want to see if he can get it. He's almost there. Uh. No, he's not almost there. What am I thinking? But there's, there's no shame in not getting it. It's there's no shame one, in yeah. not getting it. It's a really hard one to get. The, what, what, I mean, the shame is the ridiculous questions you asked. Um, and now I'm going to tell you the answer. No, hang on, right, so you go up and yeah. you go, um, you Right, go. hang on, well, look, let's, let's imagine that, let's imagine Ricky and I are those two guys, okay? Right? But we have to, um, uh, uh, well, me and, me and Steve would decide which doors we're guarding, okay? Right. Uh, I'm, uh, look, look away, Carl. Okay. Right, then. So we've decided. Okay, one of us is guarding hell and one of us is guarding heaven. Which question are you going to ask and who are you going to ask it to? Right. Um, I'll just say to you, Steve. I'll go. Uh, uh, got some. Uh, got some post for God here. <laughs> <laughs> that's not a question. That's a statement. Right. You've got some post for God here. No, that's not a question. Yeah, but maybe All the right, question's uh, coming. I got. You got some post for God here. Yeah. Uh. And it needs to be signed. It's, it's not a, a question. Still not a question. No, let so him finish. Is, is God in? Because I need him to sign for this post. Is he in? Well, I can answer that as well if you want. Go on. He, he's, yeah, he's in. He's behind my door. Do you want to answer it? Well, yes. Do you, want, do you want to get him? Just uh, 
Well, you've only got one question. So you are, you're asking Steve, is God in? What's the answer? Yes. You ask me. Yes. Look, lads, I'm just trying to do a job here. <laughs> um, <laughs> what am I gonna do with this? Well, give it to me and I'll give it to God because he's behind my door. Steve? Yeah, give it to me and I'll take it into God because he's behind my door. You're an idiot. It doesn't help. That doesn't help. Like, let me tell you the answer. You ask either one of us, you say, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? Then whatever they say is the door they're guarding. Because if you happen to ask the one guarding hell, right, so I'm guarding hell by the way, I'm the devil, Steve's God, okay? So you ask me what, what Steve would say if you asked him what door he was guarding, and I'm gonna lie. I know he'd say heaven, because he'd tell the truth, but I'm lying, so I'd say, he'd say hell. So you know I'm guarding hell. If you ask Steve what door I was guarding, he'd tell the truth, right? So he'd say, he'd say heaven, because he'd know I'd lie. So he's guarding heaven. So the, the, uh, the question is, if I was to ask the other one what door he was guarding, what would he say? And whatever the person answers is the door they're guarding. Steve, what door are you are you looking after? Well, heaven. Yeah. Why should I believe you? Because you don't know. No, that doesn't work. Because you asked me the same and I'd say heaven as well. Right, so who do I believe? This is where you use your gut feeling though, isn't it? This is what lies. <laughs> As opposed to the pure logic that Ricky's just used. I just think, because there's a lot of <laughs> questions in life where you don't know the answer and you go, do you know what, I don't like the look of him. <laughs> so... They're I, identical. Yeah, but they're still identical twins. You always get a little snidey one. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I've the, the thing is about uh, the world and Carl is that he's the same shape as the world, and that's why I like him, because that's all you need there, a little round... I can't help but think the uh, pot calling the kettle black there, Rick. What? <laughs> my body's round, my head is sort of fat and square. <laughs> so how dare you? Uh, just quickly before we uh, move on to the final bit of uh, the sermon, we, um, just thinking back to some of the other highlights of the year, one of mine, Rick, I'm sure one of yours, Live 8. Live 8 was great fun. So not only was it a great day, but obviously uh, it, raised its, it made its message uh, very much uh, clear and open to the world. Thought Did you enjoy uh, Live 8, Carl? Uh, yeah, it was alright. It was, you know, quite a good, good thing. I mean, mm. has, it, has it sorted the problems out, or...? Well, it's more about raising awareness, isn't it, and bringing that to the world's attention. I'm aware of it, so yeah, it's sort of <laughs> done the job on that. <laughs> yeah. I, I read something about, um... Unbelievable. Do you know, um, but, you know, because Live 8 was all about money and stuff, wasn't it, giving money? And no, it you? wasn't really. Well... It was about awareness, but it was about, um, the, the, the G8... Dropping um, the debt. ...cancelling the debt to the, I think, the 20th poorest nations or something, which I think... Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, then, then I was reading up on that, and there was something about, do you know Bill Gates? Yeah. Who did uh, the computer stuff, didn't he? Yeah, I think yeah. He's the uh, wealth Microsoft, wealthiest, yeah. wealthiest man in the world. Or Absolutely, something, the he? first. I think the first hundred billionaire. Wow, was he? That is a lot of money because they they worked out. Um, uh, they put to him that um, with his labour, what what his labour's worth, he would have to drop over six thousand dollars to be bothered to pick it up. Wow. And they asked him and he said, well of course I'd pick it up, you know, because yeah. it doesn't work like that. But yes, he's he's that rich. But he could just pay someone to do it as well, can he? Okay, get on with it, Carl. You do, again, you've missed the point. <laughs> no, no, I mean, you, no, again, you've missed the point. But, but all I'm saying- Sorry, right? Gracie, in wherever you are, Carl's an idiot and I stand by it. Uh, Bill Gates- And don't rip foxes to pieces. He's got that much money, right, he's saying that he could give everyone in the world, right, six quid, mm -hmm. everybody, right, Am I, just what I was thinking and what I wanted to say to you, see, see what you think, right? Do you think it's fair that everybody gets six quid? Right, why? What's your point? What do you mean? You should mean the poor should get more? Well, well, no, not really. What I mean is, say like if you live in Africa, right? Yeah. You can get a lot more for, say, a quid there than you can in London. <laughs> so what I'm saying is rather than six quid each, yeah. maybe give people in London a tenner each in Africa or whatever, give them out. Three quid, three fifty. So you're saying, give the poorest people less, so they can get as much for their money in their Argos. Yeah, basically. You're, you're saying, if you were to redistribute wealth, 
you'd give the poor people slightly less than the rich people because they've got a higher standard of living. <laughs> Gracie, once again, can I come back to you on this? Do you know now why I call her idiot? Oh, you know what I like about Gracie? She told the truth and she put her name. It's Grace, yeah. actually. She put her name down. Some people, I mean, just say you're a prat and they believe they each other. They just you across the street. <laughs> yeah, oh, fat yeah, man. Yeah, you're yeah, not funny. Yeah. But, you know, I, was, I mean, I rest my case. Carl. You're an idiot. I can't help it if, if my hair's not good. I noticed the other day when Carl <laughs> was sitting on your knee having his picture taken. Yeah. It's a long story, right? <laughs> yeah. He's got a completely spherical head. It's slightly too small. I'm not being funny because, I mean, you know, you know, I'm not perfect. <laughs> 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 but he's got a completely spherical little head. He looks a little bit like a baby hamburger. You know hamburger off um, uh, McDonald's? Sure. He looks like a little baby hamburger. And it's sort of quite put upon. It's S Suzanne thinks a lot like that thing in that. Hulix <laughs> advert. You know when the woman pulls the head off that? <laughs> that little plasticine yeah, morph type and then they make a new ad for it. And it's like a little ad. <laughs> <laughs> really? And that's your girlfriend saying it. I know. Who do you think's cooler to look at, Steve or the Chemical Brothers? Steve. Definitely, yes! You're absolutely right, Carl, and that's the first sensible thing you've said if, for a long time. If I was time. to work with Steve on, on some music, yeah. if I had the choice, I think Steve would look better on a album cover. Really? Yeah. What would you do? Would you change him at all? To, what would you do with his I'd, image? I'd put him in the distance so I would <laughs> I can't believe this is. This no, is just happening. so you don't look as tall. That's doing you a favour. <laughs> you know, right? Have you have you done you've done a business degree or anything? Have you? You did commerce. Yeah. What, where did you do that? What did you do that? At school, I'd, I'd learn how to fill out a cheque, <laughs> pay a bill, and uh, I think I, I had a trip round Kellogg's. <laughs> <laughs> did you? Uh, <laughs> you worked at a supermarket called Cordon Bleu. Yeah. Cordon that Bleu! That's brilliant. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? It's rubbish. Oh. Got sacked. You had to what, what did you get sacked for? Messing about in a, um, the, back in the, in the car park round the back. Yeah. Right, there was, there was a grid, and, uh, all the concrete had gone funny, so when it rained, you got, like, a big lake. Oh, yeah. Right? And I got in, do you know those big metal trolleys you get to, like, put all the food in while she's- Oh, out? yeah. And yeah. I got in one of them, and pushed myself out into this lake. Of cement? No, I, water. it was full oh, of was water, water right, it'd been right, raining. Right, right. And I got stuck in the middle, right? And the boss was like, where's, where's Carl? He's meant to be doing, you know, facing up the beans. And I was like... <laughs> and he was so, stranded in a leak. So someone said, oh, he, like, I saw him messing about out the back. He came out and saw me stuck in the middle of this. <laughs> 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 a lake in, like a, in a trolley. And he said, get back in. I said, Would you say, no, I'm, I'm, I'm said, filming sharks. I said, I'm, I'm, it's too deep. I read one the other day, actually, which was very interesting. It was one that uh, the famous film director Orson Welles said. Oh, yeah. Which he said, uh, apparently there was a, a, a bear going across uh, a lake, wading through the lake, and a scorpion said, um, well, let me go on your back, will you? Come on, just let me go on your back, we'll go across, it'd be brilliant. He goes, well, no, you'll just sting me. He goes, don't be stupid, if I sting you, you'll die, and we'll both drown. And he goes, oh, fair enough. Who, who was doing the stinging? The scorpion. The scorpion. Right, okay. Yeah. And the bear's wading through the water. Yeah. So mm -hmm. the scorpion jumps on the back, and they wade through the water, and halfway across, the scorpion stings the bear. And the bear goes, well, we're both going to die now. He goes, yeah, it's my nature. I thought he was going to say, I can swim. <laughs> 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 uh, oh, you're the best. What's, what's the one about, um... Do, does that mean anything to you? It's my nature, i.e., you know, that's, in that's my nature. That's the way it is. That's, that's what I do, yeah. I'm a scorpion. Yeah. One of my favourite ones... These, these don't mean anything to you, do they? I mean, what the I'm saying is you're not impressed by them. They're all right. What about this? What about this one? Don't we are. Here's what. Here's what. <laughs> yeah. The only thing you can do is fall in love, Carl. But was that with Carl last night? Obviously, party animal. You know, he's hanging out with some of my friends. You enjoyed yourself, didn't you, Carl? That's all right. But uh, you were a bit worried about uh, Jennifer Lopez, weren't you? Yeah. What was the concern? Um, I don't really know what's going on in the pop world. Um, you you're joking? No. Go on. And um, I was there in the toilets, right? And I heard it playing out on the speaker, and I heard the DJ go, uh, "There you go. That's." Uh, Left Eye Lopez there. That's not... And I thought, it's Jennifer Lopez. No, it's the and little she one. An, she had some sort of eye injury. <laughs> <laughs> that was you thought he was breaking the news of yeah. Jennifer Lopez losing an eye by calling her Left Eye Lopez. Yeah. Yeah. That's genius. Don't worry, we put him to... We put, we, we put him right, it's okay. Deers. I try and educate whenever I can. What's that one? I said that deer is already... Yeah, deer is... Yeah. I said, you know, like sheep or, or fish. So you can say fishes. And, uh... And uh, we laugh like I said. Um, do you know the um, plural of uh, mongoose? Because a lot of people think it would be mongoose. It's not. It's mongooses. Do you know what Carl said? Plural of mongoose. Mongoose. Yes. Plural of it's, mongoose. It's worth a competition. No, it's not. No. No. Go on. Carl, what did you think the plural of mongoose was? Mongs. <laughs>
Uh, finally, what do you make of uh, Halle Berry becoming the first black woman to win the oh, Best Actress Oscar? Did you see her speech? Got on my nerves. Did it? I mean, you know, it is good that she won. You know, it's nice for anyone to win an award. Yeah. But she did go on a bit, and you know, I've I've been in that same sort of position. What? <laughs> Claiming an Oscar? <laughs> well, I got um. It, what they used to do at school is uh, <laughs> okay. If you did a full month without being off, you got a gold certificate. <laughs> okay. And I did a month once without having a day off. And sure. I went up, and I didn't. I didn't do it. Make a fuss. <laughs> you didn't start crying. <laughs> Can't play a record, mate. Well done, though. Good Were you the there. first kid in your school to do that? I don't think anyone else got the certificate. It was only because I was never in. They tried to encourage me. To <laughs> it was <in>. just <laughs> for you. you. They mounted an entire the ceremony the just to encourage you. <laughs> Henry it was so good because every was single element as well was sponsored by someone. Yeah. And I was looking at the menu, I've got the programme here, and the menu, right, the pudding is sponsored by Electrolux. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if you've ever had a pudding sponsored by yeah. Electrolux. I was sponsored by Zanussi. When, uh, when everyone was doing the prayers, did you, did you look at them with their eyes shut? <laughs> like, like you did at school? <laughs> what do you mean? Well, what, when you had Did you look at someone with your eyes shut? No, like, you'd do that, you'd do your, um, your hands together. Yeah. Yep. And you sort of look at people with their eyes shut and think that's like what they look like when they're sleeping. <laughs> Play record. Can you ever do that? I've always been a fan of a, a song with a good story, and that's, that's up there for me. Um, if you don't know it, it's a story about a bloke who, um, he must be married with his girlfriend or whatever. Goes off to war, comes back, and his uh, his legs are all done in. The relationship goes a bit downhill. She starts leaving him at home. She's going out getting rat assed every night. He's fed up, and he wants to. Um, I think by the end of it, he wants to do her in. He's had enough. Um, just a good example, really, of uh, of how things can change. At some point, their relationship was all rosy, and then it's uh, it all changes. I mean, we're all being tested at the minute, aren't we, really? With this uh, virus thing going around. Stuck at home with your partner. Um, I've been all right. We've had the odd day. Me and Suzanne had an argument the other day about who had the biggest head. I don't want to go into full details, but... Uh, of who had the bigger head, but it got to the point of getting out a tape measure and measuring the circumference, and um, it just all happened because they ordered a cap that stated that one size fits all, and it 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 fucking doesn't. I just wish they'd sort that out because now I've got to fan it about and send it back. One size fits all. Noise me. But then again, I suppose. That's what life's about, innit? Getting annoyed, being happy, being worried. Well, that's a lot, innit? Being scared. Um, that's living. I do like a good moan. And I do like a worry, in a way, for a little bit. It's a bit of a pastime, keeps your brain active. I always remember um, a few years back... I used to think about death a lot. You know, we all sort of come into the world in the same way, don't we? But the way you go out, you don't know. You don't know what your um, exit strategy is uh, is going to be. And I'd, uh, I'd let that worry me. What's going to happen? Is it just going to be in my sleep? Or is it going to be something horrible? Um, it would mainly happen when I could hear a clock ticking. It was a little reminder that time was just, you know, ticking away, and that's my life. And, uh, yeah, it used to bother me. And then I read a story that made me change my mind, and it was about a bloke, and he, um... He died in his bed when a cow fell through the roof, through the ceiling, landed on him and, and you know, squashed him dead. And um, for a bit, I was like, oh, God, that's really bad. That's, that's probably going to be me, that. 
have something horrible like that. And but the more I thought about it, the more I thought it's not it's not actually that bad. It's not like um you know an illness that drags on and on, and you're getting weaker and you're just miserable and you're sat there just you know waking up every day thinking oh I'm still here. How long is this going to go on? It just happened quick. And uh, and even even to the point of even if he heard that cow coming through the ceiling. I don't think he would have had any any worry because I bet I bet his brain was telling him he was still asleep and it was a dream. Because why would a cow be coming through the ceiling? So it sort of made me realise that it's the people who are left behind who um, is more upsetting for, isn't it? I mean, it's the wife, isn't it, who has to deal with the with the upset of losing her husband, and um, and on top of that, she's got like a, a hole in a roof that she's got to sort out. She's got to get a tile around. She's got to have the, the sort of loft rebuilt, get a, get a plasterer in to sort out the ceiling. There's a lot of hassle there. And even before all that, getting a cow out of the bedroom, because that would have been wandering around, wouldn't it? And that's that's not an easy task, shifting one of them, especially if it was upstairs. If it was upstairs in the bedroom, they don't go downstairs, do they, um, cows? There's something about the legs. I think they can go upstairs, but they can't walk down. So all that hassle, he's, he's no idea he's gone by this point. She's got all this shit to deal with, and that's... Um, it was after reading that story that I realised that, you know, it's pointless worrying about when and where you're going to die, because you, you'll never know. But all I did was, I moved the worry. I've talked before about the worry hole, and you've got a, a space in your head that you've got to fill with worry. So I went from worrying about how I was going to die and where I was going to die, um, to just worrying that Suzanne will die before me, which I wouldn't want. Because at the end of the day, death is is more of a ball like for the people who are left behind, which uh, will definitely be the case for Suzanne because she's got to try and find a coffin that will fit my big fat head in it. So that will serve her right for taking the piss. A little bit of karma, right? Um, I wanted to talk about UFOs today, and I haven't. I've sort of ping ponged around a bit there. Maybe do it next time. This is a little bit linked to how I started thinking about it. I saw it on some BBC documentary the other night, and it's Curtis Mayfield, and they were saying how uh, he was doing a gig in America, and the the lighting rig fell on him, and um, he he was paralysed from the neck down. There you go, you see, you never know. Good song, this, though. Superfly. See you later. Um, So this isn't cruel, this programme, is it? Oh, I don't think so. Picking on me. It's not, is it? It's weird because a few people have said, "Oh, you're picking on me." It's, it depends how you look at things. Isn't sure. It? Yeah, but you do do you like it. We, I mean, we could look at it like it's a laugh. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. it's not but a problem for us. You know, we like you. You know, you're, you're our favourite. Yeah. I, I'm going to say thing in the world, but I don't mean that. You know, in a derogatory way. No, no it's, I'm cool with it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Listen, uh, are you uh, disappointed by the nation that uh, a third of us are apparently unaware of Saint George's Day, twenty third? Is St. George's Day the one with the snakes that we've talked about? No, that's... Are you, are you one of that third, do you think? <laughs> <laughs> St. George is the patron of England who, uh, killed the dragon. Yeah, I mean, there's too many of these days, isn't there? That's the problem. If mm. you make it a bit more special, mm. like Christmas, so you buy t- presents and that for each other, then people will remember it. But there's so many of these days, with mm. Easter and Pancake Tuesday and all that. <laughs> So, <laughs> it's not surprising. I think as time goes on, we'll find that a lot of these days will just disappear because, you know, people are busy. There'll be new ones, won't there? Uh, I don't know. People There'll are be like busy. Gareth Gates Day in 50 years' time. It's just weird. Carl, uh, when you were, um, uh, a little Pilkington, right, what, what was, if you had hair, what would it be like? What do you mean? Well, what? you obviously had hair then, back then. What was the, uh, style? Um, it was like, uh, sort of... I had I had quite sort of uh, <laughs> fine, uh, sort of straight hair. Yeah. Right. Um, hairdresser once said to me, "You've got hair of a Chinaman." <laughs> <laughs> he was a wise man, wasn't he? <laughs> what do you think that meant then? Oh, 
he just said <laughs> he, he just said you got the same hair as as a Chinese man has. Very straight, <laughs> quite fine. Um, <laughs> why, is, why is he telling you? I just imagine this part going, the arse did well, didn't it, sir? <laughs> do, 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 do. Like, something like that? You got that you have the hair of a Chinaman. <laughs> I'm sorry, nothing. <laughs> You're not the spy. No, I'm not. Thank you. <laughs> Good night. Oh, yeah, you're not like Yeah, <laughs> lovely. You have the feet of a fish. I'm sorry, nothing. <laughs> it's not you. Okay, next. You have the hair of a Chinaman. It was, what, it was one of those barbers, um, it was a cheap one, just on a, on a railway bridge. I don't believe that. Go on. On a railway bridge? <laughs> That's why it was cheap. It was very low rent, so he could charge. That wasn't the barber. Bit. That was a man with some scissors. <laughs> yeah. Did you have to go? Oh, I have to move you there, sir. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay, back in the chair, sir. <laughs> well, I mentioned them on one of those things you always see in old films where you've got to, you have to pump it up, up and down, down again, yeah, like a seesaw. Yeah, that's, that's not as good as that. It was just a normal chair, little wooden hut, and <laughs> it did have to stop when a train came past because it used to. <laughs> well, because he had to change the signal. <laughs> Just making a few extra bucks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Oh, I love That's that. That's Manchester for you. Oh, God. Well, hang on a minute. Why meteors are likely to destroy Earth in the next hundred years? You're wasting your time. Okay. In this In this trade secrets book, yep. listen to this for a tip. Make a necklace from electrical wire. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good idea. But don't plug it in. What? <laughs> <laughs> holidays. Holidays. Well, you want to put holidays in room 101? People. You know, sort of annoying on holiday. Oh, yeah. Do you know when you go away? Oh, yeah. It sort of touched on this before. Is it, is this gonna be the Scouse guy? Yeah. Go on. Oh, it's so long now. I mean, it was holiday when we went to Tunisia. <laughs> and the Scouse have pissed you off. Surprise, surprise. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But the annoying thing was, you know, when you go on, on, uh, it was a cheap holiday and, like, the lesson here is, you know, if you want a good holiday, you gotta, like, spend some money. Yeah. And we didn't on this one. We spent about... I don't know, 400 quid for two of us for like a month or something ridiculous. And we got there and, you know, you, you get to the hotel and you go, we have made a mistake. <laughs> you know, it's a ropey hotel. Um, you know, you can tell like the blinds and stuff as you walk in, they're all dirty and stuff. You think, well, let's make the most of it. You know, let's not, let's not get down about it. It's, it's a holiday. It's sure. for a rest. <laughs> and you try and make the most of it. And we had to meet, you know, like you have one of those things where, you get to your destination and the rep says, right, you know, go and unpack your bags and that, go and sort yourself out in the room and, uh, tomorrow morning we'll meet up at ten o'clock and I'll go through, you know, the, the best sort of place to go for camel rides and, uh, you know, the best <coughs> deals I can get you. That sort of thing. Can anyone here walk like an Egyptian? <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so, she says, uh, right, tomorrow morning meet ten o'clock in the discotheque. So, we get up and we have breakfast and it wasn't a good breakfast, uh, the kitchen was, like, bit, bit horrible, the food wasn't good, and it was run by, sort of, midgets. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean it was run? Not there's anything wrong with that. It was little fellas running around and the annoying thing was one of them sort of started to fancy my girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> How did he manifest his, his affection for No, you're not saying there's anything wrong with midgets, though, are you? Just no, saying no, it was no, strange that there was Yeah, but even midgets shouldn't be cutting in on, on car <laughs> No, I know, I know, no. But it's also that thing of, the, you know, they've got little fingers, and- I and it's oh sort God, of- ruined. I'm so sorry. No, 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 I'm not- it's- it is a bit of a phobia of mine. Okay. Do you know what I mean? They are nice people and that. Sure. Um, oh God. but the annoying thing is- So what was he doing then? How did he- I, I don't understand how he was chatting up your girlfriend. Was he crawling under the table so you couldn't see? He just kept- <laughs> whispering, <laughs> whispering to her from underneath there. <laughs> Stop it! Just, you know. Wait, I don't want to get a complaint on our last show. Oh, There's not many midgets oh, listening. What's gonna happen? Can oh. we just finish this and start up again in a couple of months? Oh, yeah. So if you want to more, know more about the midget theme <laughs> restaurants, <laughs> then <laughs> just, just we'll talk you in, we'll talk you in three months. Yeah. It's just, oh. uh, it's just- No, that's nice. fair enough, actually. Oh, no, yeah, no, right sorry about this. Your producer's Listen, head um, uh, we'll see you in about a really, um, it's been a pleasure, truly, and thank you for I've everyone that wrote I've got you a letters. Presents. Have you really? Hey, I've got you both a present. Right. Oh. I've got Ricky, um, do you know how, like, we've done fables and yeah. stuff? Yeah. Right? Yeah. This is like Mr. Ben. Oh. This is brilliant. Yeah. Right? And it's like little fables that Mr. Ben goes on. Oh, fantastic. So I want <laughs> you to t learn something from that for when you come back. Okay, brilliant. That's I, lovely, Carl. I'll tell you one of the stories I read this morning. It's brilliant. In fact, when you've done with it, yeah. give it me. Yeah. Because I, I haven't finished reading that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. And um, for Steve, <laughs> a little, uh, chat, oh. chat up lines. A little book of chat up lines. That's fantastic. That's great, Carl. Thank um, well, we'll, we'll see you, um, in three months, but Carol Eman and Carl cherish Carl Pilkington. He sits in a little room by himself, so keep him in touch, and we'll see you in, um, August. I'm, uh, we're gonna leave you with some of the, 
Um, we all, we all love. This is, uh, There is a Light That Never Goes Out by The Smiths. Very apt, I think. Goodbye. <laughs> See you later. What do you, uh, Carla, you, would you like to be American? No, not at all. Really? Got me nerves. When I was in, um... <laughs> Got me nerves! When the whole American. nation there reduced. <laughs> when I was in Barbados at Christmas. Oh, name drop Right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's loads of them there, cos that, that's... Was that when you were doing a bit of extra sort of waiting? <laughs> that, you, were, you, were, you were sort of clean, your girlfriend was cleaning rooms, wasn't went she? There, went there for Christmas and um, um, there's loads of them there because that, that's like really close to America. That's like <laughs> uh, Blackpool is to Manchester type. It's thing, exactly right? like that. Yeah. So it's, 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 that's the analogy a lot of Americans use. So, but I think they call it the tropical Blackpool. <laughs> <don't they>? But <laughs> they were going on. That's only all the brochures, I'm sure. Yeah. Right? yeah. And serious now, but yeah, we were going serious. on about the uh, September 11th thing. Yeah. But they call it. The, um, of course, uh, this is American. Of course, um. Brilliant. The, uh, the 9 11. The 9 11. That's what they call really? it. Really? Oh, that's awful. That is terrible. It's like people who say 24 7. Yeah. Well, I'm Americans working my say ass that. off 24 7. Well, Americans that say yeah. that. Well, they're allowed, though. Oh, Americans are. It's, yeah. it's, I'm talking about an English person who might say it. Yeah. <laughs> Fool. <laughs> 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 yeah, no, that's terrible. Yeah. Do that yeah. American accent again? Yeah, of course, uh, the, uh, the 911. Where, yeah. where are you from? <laughs> what, what? Uh, can we we, we part of America, is that? <laughs> yep. that's, that's how they sounded in Barbados. Sure, sure, sure. Right. Sure. But can Carl, you do any other impression? But Carl doesn't, I, I very much doubt that Carl likes newfangled countries like America. Yeah. He doesn't like London. No, true. So he's, he's not gonna <laughs> Have like... Have you been to America? Yeah. Did you enjoy it? Went to Florida. No, they got me again. Got any news? Um, yeah. Went, went for some food. Yeah. Um, and it was the last few days, I didn't take much money with me, and we were in Florida, and we were hungry, and we sure. went for some steak, <laughs> and we had our dinner and that, and it's, I think it's their equivalent to the Angus Steakhouse. Yeah. Right. And, um, sat down, had, had the steak, and that's huge, big portions. But anyway, we didn't have much money left, and we had, like, another two days left, so we didn't leave, we didn't have much money for a tip. Do you know how over there they expect it? Yeah, a big tip, yeah. So, um, we left what we could, and I don't know what it was. It might have only been the equivalent to 60 pence. Yeah. But he didn't have to do that much. We didn't have loads of courses because we didn't have much money. So he brought us, like, the main course, and I don't know, a sure, couple, sure, couple sure, of sure, Diet sure. Cokes. And, um, anyway, left them the, the, the 60p. Yeah. On the way out, and he comes running over. Excuse me, sir, you can have this back. Because it wasn't enough. I mean... Yeah. It's outrageous. What did you say? I said, all right, then. Yeah. I mean, I th well, I needed it. I mean, I, I thought yeah. it was nice to leave them something, but obviously it wasn't enough, so got us a couple of more. Is it good coats. fun with you on holiday? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, do you enjoy yourself? Yeah. Do people go with you on holiday? I get bored after about four days. You surprise me. <laughs> and then what what, what um, do you expect out of a holiday car? What do you, what do you, what do you go sort for? Of soak up some of the culture. Yeah. <laughs> you liar. <laughs> you liar. What, what did you learn about Barbados <laughs> while you were there? <laughs> a lot of crabs on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> ah! I just imagined him sitting there with his knotted oh, hanky on his head. No, sure. It's, uh, it takes too much. Look at that. Listen to him crinchling his little. Crinchling? <laughs> Crinch, you're not crinchling. You're not you crinchling your Jaffa cakes, are you? He wasn't going out on air. No one knew. I bet you're one of those people in cinemas that think you're being really quiet eating a bag of crisps. Aren't ya? Do you go to cinemas? Mm, I haven't been for a bit, actually. What Tell do you do, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> Carl! What's an entertaining evening for you? Yeah. What would you do to occupy your time? Uh, like... <laughs> your hobbies, for instance. <laughs> might, might get a video out from prime time. Right, what, 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 would you enjoy that or would it just be a chore for you? No, <laughs> no, I think things like that. You really hate doing that. That's, that's when you really switch off and you forget all your problems and stuff. Why well, you haven't got any you problems? You haven't got any problems, Carl. You, you haven't don't know that. I put on a face when I'm with you. <laughs> <laughs> you wear a mask. <laughs> Are you crying inside? This Carl? is you being the happiest you can be. You're like a clown, aren't you? Oh, Do you it's... think I'm like a hard, miserable man? Because there was somebody else. I don't think you're hard. The other day, <laughs> and like I said to him, I can't watch the Elephant Man because it <laughs> upsets me. <laughs> You're the best! You don't know you're doing it. You're no, but the best. Can you watch it? Um, well. I always, when it gets to that bit where they're carrying him through the village and, and messing about with his head. 
<laughs> well, do you know, my, this is true. My dad watched that once, and we were watching it. My mum and my sister and that were all quite moved by it, we're almost oh. in tears, thinking it was a wonderful example of man's inhumanity to man and yeah, all that thing. Yeah. And my dad just went, "Wouldn't he make an amazing novelty rucksack?" <laughs> And it cheapens the film for me, and, and I've never had this sort of Steve was thinking, he's not that ugly. <laughs> Blimey, here we go, we were laughing at <laughs> Carl! Can we focus on one person at a time, Rick, please? <laughs> Let's destroy him first. Oh, God. Tell him what you said to me when that record was playing about the Jaffa Cakes. He, he bought some Jaffa Cakes, which was lovely, he went across the road and he handed out the Jaffa Cakes, and then I went, oh, thanks very much. And then what did you say? I just remember learning at school. <laughs> um, I'm not, like, making fun of, of the illness, because it's not funny. But, um, they cure cancer. Jaffa cakes cure a cancer. Not, not like fully. Right. <laughs> they just go some way to helping. Yeah. Do you know? Um. It'll, it'll sort of help. If if you've got it, you can't say right. Get me a load of jaffa cakes. Right. But I think it sort of puts a bit of a stop to it if you haven't got it. Do you know what I mean? It's like having vitamin tablets. Is this medically proven? Should we get Doctor Fox down here to confirm that? <laughs> I, yeah, I sure. can't. I actually can't cope. You're just play a record. DJ Shadow. With, uh, this time, I'm gonna try things my way. And the story is that the, um, the vocal of that was just found in, in some building. On, uh, like a bit of old tape. And no one knows much about it. I think all they know is that the, um, some fella called Joe. I think the name Joe was written on the tape. But other than that, they don't know anything about it. Bit of a mystery. Which I thought was a nice way to sort of chat about another mystery. The mystery of UFOs. I've sort of been watching quite a bit of footage on the internet of uh, UFOs recently. I think it's just a, a good escape, innit? You know, everything's a bit sort of shit at the minute, innit? No matter where you're living, no matter what country you're in, everything just seems a little bit shitty. Um, so sort of looking at otherworldly stuff is uh, is just a, a good escape. And there's loads of footage out there. Some of it you kind of go, oh, that looks good. Some of it is, is a joke. I mean, there was one that I clicked on. That was a, a bloke that was, it was clearly off his tits because he was filming something out of his bedroom window. He was going, there's a bright light. Oh, look, I can't believe it. I'm being visited. There's a bright light. And it was, it was clearly a street light. Um, so there's a lot of lot of knobheads like that. But now and again, you get some footage or hear an interview or something that you go, well, this confirms it for me. Um, like, you know, there's other stuff out there. And it was, um, it was a bit of a chat that Joe Rogan was having. You know, the Joe Rogan podcast, he was chatting to some commander who um, was flying about in a, like a, you know, a fighter jet. And um, and he was whizzing about, enjoying himself. Um, turns his head and sees this UFO just floating about above the water. And he was like, what's that? And now this fella's seen loads of stuff. If there was new technology out there that we don't know about, he probably would know about it. But he saw this thing and he was like, I, I don't know what that is. And he started ping-ponging about all over the shop. Um, he said it was shaped like a tic-tac. And it moved about like nothing he's ever seen move about before. It was like going left, right, up, down, fa and at high speed as well. It just didn't make sense to him. Right? Um, they got some radar footage of it. I'll just show you that. This was it here. It was like moving along at high speed and it was just turning at the same time. Which is a bit odd. But um, who knows what it was. But I've had a, a theory for a while. <coughs> Octopus. If you look at them, they look a bit alienish, don't they? This UFO was floating above the sea. So there's a connection there already. Um, all the arms, which you know would probably come in handy if you if you're flying about something that that commander saw. I imagine that's got a lot of joysticks, a lot of buttons to press. You need a lot of arms. So there's that. And I saw this video ages ago, 
yeah, I'll show you this mimic octopus. All right. Now the skill that it's got is like. Um, let me just show you this. All right. So this diver here, there he is in the water, just swimming along, minding his own business, doing a bit of filming. Not much to see really. And he just sees this little bit of seaweed, thinks nothing of it. There's a little fish, little black and white fish. Oh, that's nice. There's not much else here. I'll, I'll just film that black and white fish there, moving about. And there, oh, good Jesus, what is that? An alien. That is an alien there. Um, let's just rewind it again. It goes from that, just looking like a blob of moss, to that. That is amazing, and off it shoots, look. Going back to Planet Zonk. And think about it, it makes sense, doesn't it? If you were an alien, where would you land? You wouldn't bother landing on land, on Earth. Because it's, it's not going to be left empty for long, is it? Is it you're going to find a little plot, you'll go, this is alright. And before you know it, bulldozers will turn up and you know build a new Starbucks or something. So, they're better off going into the sea. And there's more of it. The, the Earth's 70% water. So if you're going to sort of base yourself anywhere, you're better off in the water. Especially at the minute, it seems like one of the safest places now, doesn't it? I don't think the, uh, I don't think they get the virus underwater. And I'll tell you another thing that makes me think that, I, that I'm right here. If you Google big, big octopus, what comes up is the Pacific octopus. Right, where was where was this uh, Tic Tac UFO spotted? Over the Pacific. Makes you think, doesn't it? Could be wrong, or could be right. Which uh, sets us up nicely for this next song. Bit of Public Image Limited. Rise. I'll leave you with that. I said, Carl, do you want to be an extra for a laugh, just to the just for the just for the Pilky fans out there? And he went, no. I went, oh, go on. He went, no. no. I said, it's pork chop catering, pork chop. He went, all right, how long will it take? I went, 20 minutes. He went, all right. So, got him a car. He came down. He had pork chops, didn't you? Yeah. Good, wasn't it? Yeah. And, um, I said to the makeup people, I said, make him look as gimp as possible. So, they put on this awful sort of curly wig, gave him a moustache. He looked amazing. But he was comfortable with it because he was sort of hiding behind it. And then just before we shot it, we whipped his wig off. <laughs> and it was like we'd woken up a baby bird and thrown him out the nest. <laughs> he was really it, it It's actually on one of the, the outtakes and it's him. I'm, I'm crying with laughter because he's looking around, everyone's looking at him, and he said, this is like a nightmare. And so we thought it was funnier with his little bald head and the moustache. And it, it worked, didn't it? But mm. what's interesting <laughs> about that, Carl, is you were comfortable hiding behind a bit of a mask. Being, yeah. Uh, you, yeah. you were comfortable watching yourself as a cartoon on the Ricky yeah. show. Maybe you should do some acting. Maybe you should pop on a Nambas because then that's <laughs> like, we've dressed up your genitals as a completely different set of genitals. And so it's not your genitals in a way. What do you think of that, Carl? Yeah, that's a good but point. <laughs> good point. Um, five live. Um, the thing is, I can't remember words. <laughs> Right. So, like, Ricky got me to do an advert for one of his stand-up things. How long was it? 30 seconds. Mm. I can't remember. I'm not got To be an actor, you've got to have a good memory. If it was that thing where they just go make it up, yeah, I right. can do that. You can't remember 30 seconds. Well, that's what I do. It. Honestly, no, it's really hard. my film roles. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I just make some on the day. Is that all right? I, I couldn't- I can't do that. It's a tricky bit of, uh, Just- uh, for, just for, Carl, what do you say to those people, um, who say, because of your, um, mental disability, uh, that I am bullying you and, exp uh, and exploiting you. What do you say to those Carl, people? Got an interesting question. Go. Mm. It's been asked a lot, but no one's stepping in, are they? <laughs> <laughs> no one's helping, are they? It's gone on for ten years. They say what goes around comes around. When's it coming round then? When's something going to happen to him? When's something going to squeeze his head? <laughs> what you're saying is, if people are accusing him of bullying, why aren't they actually Ooh, rather just about it? What are they doing about it? Oh, this is bullying. All right. Well, what, you, what are you watching it for then? It's ridiculous. Of course, you're not bullying. We're friends. You know, it did. All these people would rather whinge about. They've all got the conspiracy theories. But what are we meant to do? Um, I had some exciting news this week, Carl. 
you'll be pleased oh. to find out. Um, I, I, I'm worried that you might get a little bit jealous because it's obviously going to impact on your world quite strongly. Because I know you think you like things to be quite, the, quite, sa you know, samey. You like the status quo to be maintained. You like the fact that in the past, you know, we've had some crosswords. You know, because you've, I remember, what did you think of me when I first walked in? When I first came in on the yeah, first well, day of XFM? I don't know why you're making a big deal. Do you want to bring because it? Do you I, want I'm just being honest, though. I'm just well, being honest about a lot of people who see you for the first time sort of go, well, he's a bit weird. <laughs> Ooh, ooh, I know that Steve that you brought it up, and then you're again. But I'm you're, sure that wasn't what you said before. No, did he, he said before. Yeah, well, he's well, I, a bit weird. Yeah, well, I, he looked at you, and uh, I knew I could see by the look of his face. You know when uh, when you know your your kid, and your kid's sort of scared of something, and they go, "Why is your kid?" Goes, "Oh, he doesn't like pigeons or spiders." Right. It was like that when I saw Carl, and I brought you in, and I went, "What do you think of that, Carl?" I could see the look on his face that he d he was disturbed. Sure. And then, as he said. You get used to it, don't you? Yeah, you get used to it. And you, and you have changed a little bit. Your hair's a bit smarter now and you've got some nicer glasses and that, I think. <laughs> or I might just get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa! Don't bring it up, Steve! Don't well, look at me like that! So you say that you think some other people in the office thought the same? Do you know that for sure? Carl. Did you discuss it? Carl. Yeah, I think, I think they do, yeah. Okay, leave it there then. But not just in the office, as, as you walk through <laughs> the building. <laughs> oh, it's, it's worse than you ever thought! It's best if, if you leave it. Well, we're not gonna leave it. We're gonna get you on the poster. Yeah. I mainly have to see myself on videotape this morning. That's oh, I, I showed him, um, um, I, you know, uh, the animal show I did, the show. Yes. I'm doing a video and I did behind the scenes footage and I've got a, uh, you've seen it, haven't you? I feel a little bit of Carl on there, isn't there? Yeah, it's yeah, great. Yeah. It's lovely. He can't believe it. He said, is it playing slow? <laughs> He's so slow and I come into the office going, all right. It, that's how you I'm talk. I'm head as well. I look like I'm looking into a spoon. <laughs> I'm not happy with it. <laughs> I just think that if we're willing to, 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 uh, <laughs> if Ricky's willing to use his celebrity profile for the sake of the show, yeah. I'm willing to look like a, you know, let's say a fairly handsome kind of cool customer. I think at least, the very least, Carl, is that you appear on there as well. Yeah. You could dress are up you smart. Are you worried that you'll look the worst out of all three of us? Uh, who am I standing next to? I'm next to Steve. <laughs> I'm, pr I'm fairly confident. Yeah. I don't know why it's so predictable. You pull the string because you know what it is. It's <laughs> you pull the string. <laughs> but yeah, I don't know what we we're talking about there. So we've got the film thing. Going. <laughs> I don't know what we were talking the about. Film. What were you talking about earlier about glasses as well and Steve taking his glasses off? What was that? What are you saying that in front of him now for? Was it? Oh, was it an insult? It wasn't really an insult. Oh, what were you up to? No, what was it? I genuinely don't remember. I I genuinely don't remember. I just, right, Steve, I'm not, I'm not having a go, right? Um, just saying our people, um, it's a bit weird that you've got glasses because you've got a good pair of eyes on you, right? <laughs> that, that isn't an insult. What were you talking about though? What was it, why did it you- It was the fact that people who wear glasses always look a bit weird without them on. It's, it's like, you know, they, they were, they should, have, they should wear glasses. I, okay, why did we get round to this? What was we talking about? What were we talking about? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. I don't know what that was. It sounds like an insult, even it wasn't no, intended as well. it wasn't. It, it sounds wasn't. like an insult, Carl. <laughs> it does, yeah. No, it wasn't. I but should listen. be able to punch you every time you insult me, though. No, but I'm not right, having I'm a doing go. it. I'm gonna give you a dead arm. Look, Steve, it it's like you. you even if it wasn't, you intended it to be one. Well, what you... <gasps> oh, that was real. Play record. Yeah. Yeah, but it's that's mad. Every time you insult me from that's now. mad. I'll... Could you eat a knob at night now? I wish I never said that, honestly. <laughs> it's the one thing that I ate. What was it that David Baddiel said that time? Um, when you, you were saying, um, we, we were having dinner and, uh, we were, Carl was around and David Baddiel was around and Carl was going off and nothing. He's just on the radio, he said nothing. And David Baddiel went, no, you did that song, Knob at Night. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that's how I still feel. I don't feel like I've achieved anything that I'm really, really proud of. Well, his mum phoned him up and said, saw you on telly the other night. She thought he was in the office. It was just a bald bloke fixing my computer. <laughs> He's going, no, it was you. He's going, it wasn't me. I'd know if I was in the office or not. Yeah. Mm. Um, that is the sort of job I would imagine you would be doing, though. You'd be fixing, fixing something, stuff. wouldn't you? I'm probably be quite happy work. with it. Sorting some problem out in the lavatories. Sort of quite a manual job, I reckon. Yeah. Maybe a courier. That you come in, helmets on. Yeah, but it's a perfectly round. He yeah. wears a pink helmet, and they don't see the difference when he takes it yeah. off. <laughs> Fair though, I've had a go at you. <laughs> yeah, you 
Yeah, but also I'd like to point out I don't. It's Ricky who, who insults him. I don't call him. I don't call you names. I mean, I might sort of stand behind him and sort of cheer him on, you like do. the worst you kind do. of bully's mate. You know what? <laughs> I'm going to show you how good I am. I'm not even going to. No, he's. A, he, if you I'm listen back on the old radio shows, he's yeah. always having a go. At he me. has a go. At, he said when he first met Steve, he said it was a shock. He said that first thing. He said, "Oh, that's a shock." So what do you mean? He said. Well, I've never seen anything like it before. He's telling him to his face. Then he's putting on air that Steve's weird looking. Okay? So he started it. But, like, in the same way that you've sent me on these trips to make me stronger, mm. I think me saying that has done himself up a bit. Yes. Oh. No, he's, he's, he's. Oh, look at you. Yeah. So, in a way, you, yeah. you've made me a better person. He went right? from a weird little goggle eyed freak to sort of Clint Eastwood. Yeah. God, I suppose I have in a way. Hang Thanks, on, mate. Hang well, on, hang on. What was that picture from that used to be on the notice board in the kitchen at XFM? <laughs> that was your favourite, wasn't it? It's the weirdest picture of you. <laughs> it was from The Guardian. And you know when they, they, they used the wide-angle lens to get everything in? You were on the edge of it, so your head was really distorted. It looked like someone had picked up Stephen Hawking by the legs and whacked him against a wall. <laughs> it was right? really weird. Yeah. Yeah, I and he loved it. About. He really? used to go past to go and look at Steve. Hey, listen, we were both in the uh, Heat magazine Weird Crush. Uh, yeah. How did you get he on? He won. He came number did one. Did he win? He won. It, yeah. I didn't even win, you see, so I got handed to Carl. Yeah. I no, lost that's better, to... though. Who did I lose out to? No, he. Him. So he's no, weird. It wasn't no, the same. It was no, it was yeah. different years. Oh, was it? Wow. Yeah. <laughs> have, I, have I ever lost it with you? Pretty perfect, haven't I? I'm pretty perfect. <laughs> No, I don't. I'm I don't think I'd I'm sort I'm of go good look, with good-looking, nice with names. Or I'll sort of go, you fucking knob. I don't think you can use that on ITN. But it's more that for me. I don't pick well, they can. animals. They make a special exception for me. They allow. <laughs> yeah. They allow someone to call me a fucking knob. How about when? It's the only thing they said. It's remember? actually handed down on parchment. Thou yeah. shalt not say <laughs> not, fucking I'm knob. Not censor <laughs> unless it's unless it's against Ricky Gervais. The fucking knob. When have I lost it with you and sort of? Got annoyed and yeah, you you something. Yeah, um, when, oh, you wanted me to call off the poster campaign when I made that poster campaign. I said around the world, and um, uh, there was everyone yeah, putting up yeah, posters yeah. of uh, um, Carl Pilkington, um, world's roundest head. Yeah. And you asked me to stop it. Yeah. That's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. You thought it was demeaning. I've got a, a Twitter thing. I'm not using that though. I just want you to know that that one is the official one because there's other knobheads who are pretending to be me and it does me heading. So you're not talking to me on Twitter because I don't do it. So that's that's the official one, right? That'll be uh, like at Carl Pilkington, and I've I've got a Facebook page that I don't, I don't go on it that much. If you're in Australia and you've got any questions, put them on the Facebook thing, and I'll um, I'll probably stay up late one night and answer a load. So that's in your time. Anyway, I've got some questions um, that have come through, and these are the sort of things that I get. Um, Kevin LaRock uh, says, have you ever been to Canada? No, I haven't. Um, James Duran. Oh, yeah. Is there any plans for Carl to visit Australia in the near, in the near future? Uh, no. That's why I'm doing these videos. It's, it's too far to go. It's probably easier to sort of go to the moon in a way. It's easier on the body because there's no sort of jet lag there. When you get there, you can stay up. You can stay in your own time frame, can't you? Go to Australia, it's like 12 hours difference. So I'd rather go to the moon than to Australia. That's, that's mental. Jason Cox says, hello, my wife and I are watching your show, Moon in a Life. Cheers. Uh, everyone's always nice on Facebook. Uh, Jason Cox, he just says that him and his wife are enjoying watching the Moan in a Life new program. Cheers. Um, Mary Stanley, all right, Carl, it's Wednesday. Tell me what you're working on right now. I'm not working on anything. I just want to have some time off. Uh, I've been travelling about. I've got a bad back. It's my L5S1. Sort of gone and worn out a bit. So I'm not doing. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm well bored at the moment. Again, that's part of. The reason I've sort of agreed to do these videos, I haven't got much going on. About three days ago, you're not going to believe this, I was sat there trying to make the cat yawn. You know how they say yawning's sort of contagious? Uh, I wondered whether it was in the sort of the cat kingdom. I just sat in front of the cat yawning. After about 40 minutes, it yawned. I don't know if I've caused that or it's just bored. But that's the sort of life I'm having at the moment. Um, I'm not up to much at all. Simon Bately. Quick question, would you rather eat shit-flavoured chocolate or chocolate-flavoured shit? 
Good one. Uh, probably, probably um, chocolate flavoured shit, isn't it? And if it tastes nice, then it's not that bad, is it? It's like most food, isn't it? A lot of food, a lot of treats. I, I like full of shit, but they taste nice, that's why we eat them. So that's what I'd have. Hello, Carl, do you speak Portuguese? No. Um, have you tried a pomegranate? I mean, Jesus, these, these are the reasons why I don't go on Facebook and Twitter a lot. These are the sort of questions I'm getting. Um, I have tried a pomegranate, it's a lot of messing about. It's the one you eat with a needle, isn't it? I, I haven't got time, really. well, I have got time, I was trying to make a cat yawn the other day. But I, I don't want to use my time eating a fruit that you have to use a needle to eat the pips with. You know, if you're meant to have five fruits a day, you're going to suck up a full day eating fruit if you have to piss about with a needle every time you have a bit of fruit. So I have had one, but I don't like them. I prefer grapes. Um, just wondering if you've seen the Human Dolls programme on Channel 4. It's mental. Yeah, I did see it, yeah. Right, so that's that. Um, oh, you know, um, um, rubbish. That's rubbish, Carl. Those boys. You, you, I'm ashamed to give them away. Carl, you know our mate Johnny. He's a Doctor Who fan. Yeah. Do you remember? Um, he bought um uh, the Doctor Who magazine, um, and uh, he went um to the toilet, and Steve got post it notes and put geek on every page, and Johnny opened it on the tube. <laughs> Right, and it had geek and everything. And Johnny bought in the the new Doctor Who magazine, I think this week's or this month's, right? And they've they've um they've done the perfect Doctor Who fan, right, what the geek is right, and it looks exactly like Steve. Alright, don't have a go, really. It does. And, he went, and I I I'm gonna try and put it on the website. It's amazing. It's got your hair, glasses, it stands like you, it's sort of dressed like you, and it's only and it's it's hilarious. And he's he's he was I mean, I'm insulting you now. It's it sounds like an insult, but if you'd see it you'd laugh like, play well, Rockbusters, right? Yeah. Right, here we go. Just a little um, bit annoyed. Just, uh, three clues. Uh, <laughs> we lost all the energy in this show, haven't well, we? Well, I'm just, I can't get over that insult. I'm just a little... No, we did, though. It, it just came out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere. It came out of nowhere. I wasn't expecting an insult. No, and, uh, but I think there was a sense of camaraderie on this. No, like, just email in, in ricky.gervais at xfm.co.uk. I'm just annoyed. I can't, I can't do this in I'm just, I'm just reading out the clues. Should we put this, let's put this one in for the Sony Award. Let's put this show in for the Sony Award. Play a song, Carl, because I need to discuss things with you. There's too much going on in the world, isn't there? And this, you know, you're talking about EU stuff and all. I'm, I'm just like, am I missing something? I'm sure if I was tested, I'd, someone would say, yeah, you've got... Because everyone's got something wrong with them now, haven't they? I'm sure there'd be some initials for something that's wrong with me. But, um, yeah, I try. That's all, that's all you can do. Sound pretty normal. That sounds like a fairly normal reaction yeah, to those yeah. kind of things, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, it's amazing how intelligent some people are, though. Like, I watch University Challenge and stuff, and I just think, how are they doing that? Where, where have they kept all that stuff? All that knowledge. There's no way, I mean, they say we're all boy, sort of born with the same brain that's capable, but I don't, I don't think we are, are we? I don't know. Mine I, can't keep all that <laughs> stuff in it. I don't, I don't, honestly, it amazes me. University Challenge is like a league of its own, though, isn't it? I mean, you know, there's stuff there that, yeah. I think they should be the ones who are answering about the EU. I think, you know, at least they'll <laughs> understand it. Get them in a room, the winners, and just say, right, are we in or out? What, what, what should we do? There's, there's too many food programmes on the telly anyway, isn't there? You can't, that's, I think, probably could blame that for all the obesity at the minute. You can't turn the telly on without seeing a cake. <laughs> um, so, and I you, just thought, you Did you lose you intelligence as well? I did, yeah. That, is that true, that story about the ape? Yeah, that was, um, it was meant to be an episode just all about intelligence. I, I wanted to work out, you know, because uh, I'm, not, I'm not the brightest, I'm not the daftest. I don't think, you know, I know I did a programme called Idiot Abroad, but I don't, don't class myself as an idiot. I'd say I'm sort of probably ab above the middle line of, you know, I'm above average. <laughs> I'm not going to big myself up, but above average. So I just wanted to look at intelligence. Um, and one of the stories that we were going to do was having a game of Pac-Man with an ape in, uh, I think he was in Japan. And um, yeah, about a week before we were meant to set off, after two weeks, I think, um, got a call saying the apes pulled out. And I was like, that's the only thing I was interested in, sort of taking on this challenge. And he pulled out, so I said, oh, let's forget that. So we ended up changing the intelligence app to the art episode, which surprised uh, the producers and that, because I, I said I'd like to do one on art. And they were like, what, what do you know about art? And I'm sort of like, well, everyone's got a view on art. I think everyone likes some sort of art. You know, you don't have to be all airy-fairy about it and 
oh, what I'm getting there from the colours is this, that, and the other. You just go, I like that. Um, everything has an effect on you, doesn't it? Build it? I like looking at buildings, me. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of what I like about London is looking at buildings. I don't really want to go in them and stuff, but just different styles. So, yeah, they, they said, all right, then, do that. So I uh, got involved in a lot of different art and, you know, tried my hand at it. Uh, and then, obviously, wrote about it in the book. Alright, this is Yak, youtube.com slash Yak. Please feel free to check out all my other compilations. Got six of them. Cheers. I'm not going to sit. 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 I